Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was the emperor of the Western Elemental Empire. Here is short summary, based off Chrism 2011's version, but will be entirely different. Trust me, Naruto is kicked out of Konoha for bringing back Sasuke. Now banished, Naruto must find a place where someone like him can flourish. What better place than past the Western Wall? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was another wonderful day in Konoha. The sun was shining, all the birds were singing, and the bees were buzzing. It was another day of the usual normal routines where the last loyal Uchiha of Konoha secretly looked at picture of boys to masturbate his tiny to in order to handle his morning wood ritual. The Hyuga clan members were all stuffing their asses with fate-loving ego-sized sticks like they do every morning with one of its female members being known for her shyness being the exception, and woke from her dream of a blonde boy named Uzumaki Naruto now up to face another day. Speaking of Uzumaki Naruto, Kami I hate this ing headache said one eleven-year-old Naruto from within his apartment while on his bed while grumbling about the fox screwing with him. Yes. That's right. Naruto knew about the fox. Kind of hard not to after the two met when the boy was five years old after some jerk tried to kill him for the one hundredth time in the last two months with a lead pipe. Of course, while unconscious from the attack, it gave Kayubi temporary control of the boy, and the fox took that opportunity to take his own pound of flesh from the stupid human or rather half the man's body before leaving what was left to be eaten by hungry animals. After that happened, Kayubi took the boy's body home, and sat it right on the bed before retreating back into the mindscape of the child to explain a few things. The boy's parents, to the events leading to the ceiling, and the real villain responsible for the fox's attack years ago on the leaf. In truth, Kayubi thought Naruto took it pretty well considering the kid was so young, and having this dumped on him. All Kayubi had to pay was hearing the kid let out an angry pain filled yell at the injustice done to him that caused his ears to bleed for over an hour. Since then, Naruto had been trained in secret by Kayubi in a few things, and had taught the boy to keep it a secret just in case some people in Konoha learn of it. Not that what Kayubi taught the boy was harmful, but rather a means to survive in Konoha, and not take so much of their shit. Kayubi taught Naruto how to read, right, and math for when buying things at stores that Naruto sensed would treat him fairly. That was more of a gift on Kayubi's part in sensing these things, but still a valuable one nonetheless, and it served Naruto well. Another thing Kayubi did was purge the signs of malnutrition from Naruto's body using his chakra with what little could be given due to the seal limiting the amount, but what was given was enough to do the job, and Naruto not eating ramen constantly under the fox's advice helped too. Relax kit. You know it's just me tinkering with your eyes a bit. Calm down. Besides, what I've been doing will give you a needed edge in surviving Konoha, and can be used in interrogating enemies via hypnotic suggestions, commands while forcing their will into submission when in your presence. Though personally, I would prefer it used on the hot s this village has to offer, and make them your s, said Kayubi letting out a perverted giggle making Naruto sigh before shaking his head and letting out his own little perverted giggle. Did we mention that the fox was a pervert? Well he is one and he passed that on to Naruto along with his ways of knowing women. First thing was all women, according to Kayubi's point of view, were all crazy s in some shape, or form. There were the loud crazy s, the silent crazy s, and then there were the kind of s who were hypocritical. To men no matter what the male gender does, if a man lies to a woman, then they're considered s bags, and if a man tells the truth then they are still considered s bags. Just honest s bags, second thing was to beware of feminist women, who hate men, and want to break every testicle on every man in a 20 mile radius of them. Personally, Kayubi had nothing against equality, but if a woman kicks a guy in his sperm makers just because the guy is a guy, then she's going to get a hit of her own in retaliation either to her face, or get one mean titty twister with a nice clamp on the while it was still twisted for good measure. It's bad enough I'm well endowed for my age thanks to you but getting a bloodline like that isn't something I'm looking forward to explaining in front of the old man, and then coming up with a reasonable lie to get him off my back, thought Naruto, 
as he blamed Kyubi for being well hung at such a young age after purging the malnutrition from his body, and the occasional healing done with the excess chakra slipping into his limbs to strengthen them further. Oh please, we both know you would have been well endowed even without me sealed inside your body. I just sped up the process. Besides, you should be glad to have such a thing between your legs now, and know how to use it after learning from my years of experience in pleasing the female gender, said Kayubi giggling perversely again. Like any girl much less a woman in Konoha would want me for such a thing, thought Naruto, as he went to his bathroom, did his morning ritual of cleanliness, and then got dressed for a day of learning at the academy. Well, if you could call what they taught at the academy a form of learning. They mostly taught history some minor academy taijutsu, and basic ninjutsu that would need honing by parents wanting their children to be the next Hitaki Kakashi. Naruto didn't have such people to guide him, except Kayubi. Not according to that Hayuga girl I saw the other day secretly using her eyes on you and then get a mean nose bleed seconds later. But then again, I could be wrong, and that dear boy is where your new bloodline is going to come in thought Kayubi with a grin on his face knowing when push came to shove his vessel would do what needed to be done regarding these up, unsatisfied in bed, and crazy s within Konoha. Unaware of Kayubi's line of thought, Naruto headed via rooftop to the academy, and prepared for another boring day at the academy. Later that day, well that was a complete waste of time, said Naruto to himself since it was nothing new to learning what he didn't already know and once more the teachers were trying to sabotage him. All in all nothing new. Shame you can't bring any kind of evidence to the Hokage about this. He'd be able to help you then. For what little help he's provided anyway, said Kayubi knowing the old man had been able to give Naruto little to nothing in terms of a decent life being the fox's vessel. And don't get him started on overhearing the argument on what to do with Naruto once they learned of his status. All that kill the demon. Turn him into a weapon, and so on was really getting old for the fox. Seriously. Why couldn't they just leave him, and Naruto alone to do whatever they want? Oh yeah, Kayubi was a demon, and humans can't stand demons despite humans being considered far worse at times. Hypocritical bastards. How's the bloodline coming along anyway? Thought Naruto deciding to speak within his mind knowing to do otherwise in public would turn heads his way more than necessary. Almost done. You may feel a small stinging sensation right about. Dot now said Kayubi before completing his task and connected his masterpiece to the boy's biological data. Naruto winced in pain at the sudden rush of nerve receptors in his eyes caused him to not see straight, which at the time could not be worse, as he bumped into the one person in Konoha, who had a life almost as shitty, and was currently having her happy time ended by the Kayubi vessel. Her name of Mitarashi Anko, who was the former failed student of the traitor Orochimaru, and was part of the INT department while being the second most feared interrogator in the leaf. At the moment of Naruto's wincing, he had bumped into Anko currently eating some dango from a bag she bought at half prices thanks to the very rare coupon she acquired from Ibiki, who gave it to her for some overtime she did, and now that bag of dango along with the one in hand that was her favorite flavor was now on the ground. Before a bunch of stray dogs got to them. No, yelled Anko in a dramatic fashion. Ow. What hit me? Damn it Kayubi. The pain in my eyes won't let me see straight, said Naruto to himself before seeing Anko going from dramatically sad to angry psycho in 2.5 seconds. Kit, you better run, said Kayubi seeing that look promising pain. Why? Can't I use my bloodline you so painfully gave me? Thought Naruto finding the pain lessening. Not yet. You need about 10 minutes before it can be triggered and from the looks of things, this lady is not going to give you those 10 minutes, said Kayubi now wishing he had waited until Naruto had gone to the safety of his home before doing this. Oh. Crap. Thought Naruto before hightailing it out of there with Anko hot on his heels with Kanai out trying to spill some of his blood for what she considered to be the ultimate sin in her eyes. Get back here Gaki. I'm going to kick your ass so badly your future children will look deformed and that is if I let you have children when I'm done with you, said Anko, as she was pissed off and had it not been for her crazy state of mind she would actually be impressed the boy had done so well to dodge her kanai. Damn. I need to get somewhere out of the public eye so I can use my bloodline on her when I'm able to awaken it, thought Naruto, as he made his way to an empty training ground, dodging Anko's projectiles, and trying to make it to the forest. He would have do had Anko's last one caught the sleeve on his right shoulder that stuck him to the tree with another doing the same when trying to remove it. 
That was followed by several more well-thrown kanai hitting sleeves of his shirt at the elbows. Got you Gaki. Damn that was one hell of a chase. Been a while since someone led me on one of these. Still, don't think because I'm impressed that I'm going to show you mercy when I humiliate you, and get my revenge for the loss of my precious Dango, said Anko grinning joyfully at getting her revenge. Kayubi. What's the ETA to the bloodline kicking in? Thought Naruto seeing Anko now approaching him. Less than a minute. Stall her, said Kayubi counting down the remaining time. Wait. Stop. I didn't mean to bump into you on purpose. It was an accident. A sudden pain hit my eyes and I couldn't see clearly, said Naruto seeing Anko look at him with a raised eyebrow. Really? You were going to expect me to believe that? said Anko with her hands on her hips. What? You've never heard of bumping into someone being an accident. What possible reason could I have for doing it on purpose? None, said Naruto seeing Anko think about it for a second. I suppose you have a valid point. Bumping into me is the last thing people do when I'm around and with Dango in my hands, said Anko with Naruto letting out a sigh of relief at his words reaching her. That's good, thought Naruto before Anko's face became devious again. But that won't get you off the hook with me kid, said Anko seeing Naruto's disbelief in her words. What? Even though me spilling the Dango was accidental, said Naruto not believing this woman was going to hurt him for something he didn't mean to do. If it makes you feel any better, after I beat the stuffing out of you, I will knock you out before I strip you, and hang you by your hands in the village square for all to see, said Anko like it was simple before reaching for him. ETA on the bloodline fox, thought Naruto knowing it was now or never with this thing. 5 seconds. When it happens, channel chakra to your eyes, and when you feel the change say, submission I, while making contact with hers, said Kayubi counting down the last 5 seconds going by slowly. Any last words before you have to change your name, appearance, and overall identity in the leaf little man, said Anko sadistically before putting her hand on his crotch and feeling how big it was while trying to intimidate her prey to wet himself in fear of losing the thing between his legs. Done. Do it now, said Kayubi knowing the time to use the eyes. Yes I do. Submission I, said Naruto, as he did what Kayubi told him to do, and felt his eyes change while staring directly at Anko. Anko for her part was too shocked to see the eyes Naruto had changed from blue to purple with a sparkling light dancing around the pupil and couldn't look away from them. She felt the rational mind being quieted, as Anko fell to her knees, and was at Naruto's mercy. What is going on? Why does it feel like I've just got string attached to my body and I've turned into this kid's puppet? Thought Anko, as she saw Naruto looking back at her with cautious eyes, and found herself unable to look away from his eyes. Can't believe it worked. Thank you fox. Now on to business. What it your name, rank, and current status of being a shinobi? Said Naruto wanting to have a name to his psycho of an attacker. Midarashi Anko. Leaf shinobi rank special junin. Current status is working for the INT while being second in leading it next to Ibiki, said Anko while mentally wondering what was coming over her to tell him so much info right off the bat. So I outran a special junin for nearly 10 minutes. Not bad. Tell me Anko-chan, were you really going to do all you said you were to my body, and even after learning it was an accident, said Naruto narrowing his eyes at her and unknowingly increasing the power behind his eyes. Not all of it. I was going to hurt you a little before knocking you unconscious, but then I was going to return you home, and steal a pair of your underwear to hang in the village square, said Anko seeing Naruto getting angrier. I see. Well Anko-chan, I'll have you know what happened was an accident and I did feel badly about bumping into you earlier. I was hoping that once it was explained to you that it was in fact an accident, you would forgive me, and we let ourselves go our very much separate ways. Perhaps you should have now that you're within my power, said Naruto feeling angrier and somewhat different right now towards this woman while hearing the Kayubi's words from past lessons about women running through his head. Oops. I forgot to mention to the kit about the side effect of using the eyes would bring about a perverted nature aimed towards the opposite. Oh well, he'll learn it soon enough, thought Kayubi, as he could feel the various emotions running through his vessel's mind right now, and the fox had to admit the woman in front of the boy had dressed rather erotically. Listen to my voice Anko-chan, as my words are now law to you, and will be obeyed as if I was the Hokage of the leaf. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. Do you understand? said Naruto firmly seeing the woman's glazed eyes get even glazier at his words. Yes Naruto-sama, 
said Anko nodding while the rational part of her mind was trying to break free with little success. Good. Now as I was saying, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, and from this day forward you are my. My. You will address me as Naruto-sama, Naruto-kun, or master when we are alone. Anything I ask you to do will be done without question with any kind of questioning brining about punishment, unless the command I give warrants one to further help please me, and nothing less than your best efforts to please me will suffice. If I need to alter your mindset regarding our private life, I will use my bloodline to do so, and you will accept it, said Naruto in a commanding tone with Anko nodding dumbly again. Yes Naruto-sama, said Anko simply. Good. Now for a more deeply imprinted command. Anko-chan, when I deactivate my bloodline, you will free me from this tree, and apologize for being a total to me before ing my feet. You will then pick me up and take me back to my place for some much needed food and rest with you sleeping in my bed for the night. You won't complain, you won't protest, you won't report anything we do that goes on within my apartment to the Hokage. Got it? said Naruto seeing Anko nod a little faster at the hypnotic command. Yes Naruto-sama, said Anko waiting with her hand on her lap like a student awaiting the commands of her teacher. Begin said Naruto before deactivating his bloodline and seeing Anko shake her head in confusion. Ow my head. What the just happened? I remember losing my dango, then chasing some blonde gaki, and now I. I. said Anko, as she shook her head from the headache she felt, and then looked at Naruto's pinned form. Now you have me pinned here on an accident Anko-chan. A simple misunderstanding, said Naruto putting on the sad innocent look that would further influence Anko's hypnotic induced commands. Oh Kami. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, said Anko, as she felt this went against her nature, but yet couldn't stop herself from apologizing anyway, and freed Naruto from his pinned down position. It's all right Anko-chan. I'd be the same way if it was ramen. Can you take me home? I am tired from all the running around we did earlier, said Naruto while inwardly smirking and Kayubi rolling around in his cage laughing his tails off. The only thing that could make the fox's day any better would be if Uchiha Madara got incurable rectal cancer. Akatsuki HQ, Madara felt his ass clench for a second and shivered. Something wrong? said Pain seeing Madara shake his head no. No number I just had this sudden feeling of dread. Excuse me while I see a doctor about a personal matter, said Madara before leaving to have his ass examined. Back in Konoha Naruto's apartment. Got to hand it to you Kit. First time using your brand spanking new bloodline and already you got yourself a nice to bang, said Kayubi while Naruto ate the prepared meal of steak, mashed potatoes, and glass of milk prepared for him by Anko currently with the small exception of the tiny apron that barely hid her sacred treasure. Yeah. And she can cook a good meal. I think I'll keep her around, thought Naruto, as he turned to see Anko looking a bit nervous, and still possessing side of guilt for all of the chasing him around Konoha. Is everything to your liking Naruto-sama, said Anko, as her hypnotic programming had kicked in the moment she had carried him into the apartment, and set him down on his bed. Hell, Anko didn't even realize she had called him Naruto-sama outside of the hypnotic state his eyes put her in, and immediately obeyed his commands on the preset she was doing all of this to make it up to him. So what if she was practically in a kid's home several years her junior, cooking him dinner, and not caring she was going to sleep in the same bed with the blonde? She was just being friendly. Helpful even. There was nothing really bad about the boy's commands to do these things for him. Right, right. Yes it was Anko-chan. Everything was perfect. That's the best meal I've had in a long time, said Naruto finishing up his meal before walking over to his couch unbuckled his, and letting it fall to his ankles while sitting on the piece of furniture with a sigh of happiness showing on his face. Anko soon came into the living area with a blush on her face as she sat down next to him, eyeing his bulge in his boxers, and had to admit to herself the boy was endowed down there. She figured it was because of the fox sealed inside of him on account of the way a female shinobi would have huge s indicating the amount of chakra her body possessed. Like Senju Tsunade, word was, Tsunade had been flat as a board when roughly around Naruto's age, but after a lot of training to build up her chakra reserves she had s that were considered the biggest in all of the elemental countries. Sag free too since having them. Not bad when considering the woman's age at this point where they should be showing tall tale signs of wrinkling, dropping, and all that old hag stuff like Kaharu's aged body was doing now. I'm sorry about chasing you earlier Naruto-sama, 
said Anko bowing like a submissive servant would her master. I know you are Anko Chan. The meal you cooked for me proved that much. Though I need a little more convincing and I know how you can prove yourself again, said Naruto calmly, but the devious smirk on his face told otherwise, and Anko couldn't help the shiver running up her spine. H. How is that Naruto-sama? said Anko feeling nervous about asking him a question for reasons she didn't know. Simple. First, get one of your pink toy you keep in your stashed in your trench coat, and then come back here with it. Now, said Naruto clapping his hands twice like a sultan would command his servant with Anko jumping off the couch quickly to get the item he wished for. Here it is Naruto-sama. It's clean I promise, said Anko moments later with the vibrator toy she kept for those days when the itch needed to be scratch using her own means i'm sure it is now put it in that nice little gleaming with of yours and don't hold back the moaning since i basically live in this apartment complex all alone because i'm the kayubi's jailer cry out like the i know you are said naruto seeing anko doing as he commanded and putting the vibrator in her while letting out moans of pleasure like she had when doing it to herself done naruto sama said Anko calmly despite the fact she had the vibrator within her body placed there at the boy's command. Hand me the remote to it, said Naruto seeing Anko stiffen slightly, but obeyed when he glared at her, and the imprinted command to obey the blonde at all times reinforced itself. Yes Naruto-sama, sorry for the pause Naruto-sama, it's just that I don't let anyone else to this, but me e e e e said Anko as she felt incredible pleasure shoot through her when Naruto cranked up the level near high right away, and she fell to her knees in front of the blonde. I know Anko-chan, but still you hesitated, and I have to punish you for that hesitation since you're supposed to trust me, remember? Said Naruto giving her that commanding look her hypnotic state saw and according to Kayubi in his head would help make her submissive to his commands. I understand Naruto-sama, said Anko as she moaned further when he increased the level on the switch, and beckoned her face closer between his legs. No you don't Anko-chan. This is not your punishment. In fact, tomorrow will be when I punish you, and it will be all day just to make sure you understand, said Naruto, as he grabbed the back of Anko's head, and moved it around his boxers. Anko blushed, as her face could feel his behind the boxers Naruto wore, and was right when she told herself he was well endowed. When he stopped, Naruto removed her face from his shorts, and then took her hand with his before placing them around where his erection. You want me to pleasure you Naruto-sama, said Anko knowing better than to ask the question, but it was the only way to get the command, even if he hinted at it, and made her feel his need behind the fabric. Why thank you Anko-chan? Please do, said Naruto, as he saw Anko use the hole in his boxers to grab his erection, and bring it out for her to see in all its glory. It's very big for your age Naruto-sama, said Anko, as she couldn't help, but feel excited about doing this, and wondered why that was the case. In the back of her mind, Anko told herself this was wrong, but any form of voicing it fell on mentally deaf ears, and she continued to do as commanded by Naruto to pleasure him. All the more to shoot out of you my, said Naruto, as he moaned in pure pleasure at Anko's tonguing his shaft all over, and felt her hand massaging his balls. Anko for her part didn't care what he called her, as she was doing what he commanded, and had experience from doing missions requiring the use of to get close to an enemy in order to assassinate them. Of course such deep cover missions were very rare and the shinobi chosen were a handful while being selected for their status of being single. Even then, the Hokage had to inquire to if the shinobi going on such a mission was going to get married, or in a relationship with the opposite. So when Anko began to give Naruto the best blowjob he could ever ask for, the special Junin had no problem using the experience from the class that taught this at the time in the academy, and on missions to get him off. Her slurping, ing, and moaning mixed with his own echoed throughout the room with Naruto loving every second of her work. Oh yeah Kit, she's a real keeper, though if I remember correctly about your village laws, you're going to have to keep this a secret from the Hokage until you graduate and your current grades won't make that happen. You'll have to try for next year and you need a teacher, who won't screw you over, and do the job right to make that even happen, said Kayubi knowing that Naruto was only half listening. Though considering what the boy was feeling right now, half listening was better than not listening, and the fox could always tell him this later. Yeah, definitely later, Anko-chan, I'm going to. 
Drink it all down or else, said Naruto before holding her head in place and came into Anko's with the woman drinking it all down though with some difficulty due to never receiving so much from anyone prior to now. I mean what kid Naruto's age can release so much sperm? Oh yeah, someone like Naruto could, and just did all down Anko's into her throat. Obeying him, Anko did before he released the back of her skull, and felt some leftover shoot out of his onto her face before she quickly edited up in the belief that the last shot he hit her face with counted. Seeing Naruto smile in approval, her guess was correct before she quickly cleaned him off, and put his back in his boxers before removing his from his ankles. Shall I carry you to bed now Naruto-sama? You have a busy day ahead of you and a growing boy needs his rests, said Anko seeing Naruto shake his head no. Not yet, sit next to me and relax, said Naruto, as he saw her obey, and rest her head on his shoulders while one of his hands played with one of her s. It's unfair they mistreat you Naruto-sama. They did the same to me when I was younger and still do now on occasion, said Anko moaning slightly under his touch while holding him and was surprised to feel a potent amount of muscle on his body. She actually expected him to be malnourished given his current hated filled status within Konoha. I know Anko-chan, which is why I have a proposition for you, and would benefit us in keeping things we do here a continued secret, said Naruto while pinching her and giving it a hard quick twist that made Anko's breathing hitch suddenly. And what is that Naruto-sama? said Anko, as she felt the vibrator go up another level, and moaned more while feeling an orgasm approaching. Simple, I'm in need of a teacher, who will help me with my shinobi training, and push myself to the front of the class academically. You help me with this and I will use my abilities in the distant future to help get your revenge on the one who hurt you years ago, said Naruto, as he saw the curse seal on her shoulder, and heard Kayubi tell him that foul thing would need to be purged from her body. His name is Orochimaru, he's one of the Sanim, said Anko feeling Naruto's anger grow and being aimed at her bastard pedophile of a former teacher. Rice Country Orochimaru sneezed thinking someone was talking about him before Kabuto came in with the daily report. Anything else Orochimaru-sama, said Kabuto, yes, time to play the submissive and ruthless master again with my Kusanagi, said Orochimaru grinning at the now pale-faced Kabuto. How else was Kabuto expected to keep his fast healing rate up? By training like Shinobi should, not on Orochimaru's watch. Back in Konoha, so that means you're going to help me train, right Anko-chan? said Naruto seeing Anko nod while sweating slightly at the pleasurable sensation running through her body. Why yes Naruto-sama, said Anko gasping when he used both hands to attack her s and came hard from a double twist. Good girl, now, I'm going to get ready for bed, and while I'm doing that you can clean this up before meeting me in bed. I want to use those lovely s of yours as pillows, said Naruto in her cheek before getting off the chair and turning off the vibrator. Do I keep my toy in tonight too? said Anko seeing Naruto pause for a second. Nah, clean the toy too and put it away, said Naruto seeing Anko nod before heading to the bathroom while the woman herself slumped back exhausted. Please Kami don't let him be grabby when sleeping, thought Anko before setting out to do her assigned task. High above in heaven, no dice Anko-chan, don't worry though since he'll be a gentle grabber, said Kami as she watched the boy, and wished she could help him further. But no, she had to follow her own damn laws, and her sister Yami was having that time of the century so there was no point getting in an argument that could bring about the apocalypse. Still, it didn't mean she could help him along in some other way, and decided to make those around Naruto suffer like they tried to do to him. Looking down at the leaf, Kami smiled deviously at a sleeping Hitaki Kakashi, who had neglected his duties to Naruto and with a wave of her hand turned the book he had been reading earlier into one where the men didn't sleep with hot women. They got violated by horny gay men, snickering at her handy work in changing all of the man's books into such nasty things, Kami looked at one Hayuga Hanada, and seeing the naughty dreams the girl was having about the young blonde Uzumaki. Kami was surprised at first, but then again the girl had matured rather quickly for her age, which was the nature of the Hayuga clan she was in and raised to be more mature in order to get stronger. Tweaking the dream slightly, Kami saw Hanada's face turning a shade darker than usual, and smiled knowing the girl was going to need new sheets tomorrow. Perhaps it was cruel, but if it kept the girl on the course to being with Naruto no matter what, then all the more naughty dreams to Hanada, 
and nothing less until the time was right for the two to get together. After that, Kami focused on a few more people in Konoha, smiling mischievously at the village, and decided to exercise her one cosmic right to do things in a pranking fashion. It had been a while since she had and Kami wasn't about to stop until she got it all out of her system. And if Yami or the Shinigami complained, well then she'd just have to them up too like she did the last 1000 years ago. Of course the last time that happened she accidentally brought around instability and the creation of the ten-tailed beasts it would have to be a quick subtle ass kicking. Subtle meaning one or two countries sinking into the ocean and maybe, at least one being consumed by the lava from a nearby volcano. The Sandane sighed while sitting at his desk, Anko sitting across from him, and asking him for a request he didn't want to grant. It was bad enough having to deal with the huge mountain of paperwork on his desk currently laughing, mocking, and saying he would never finish. Never, where was that medication again? No, not there, damn it, here, no, maybe over here, this is so infuriating, oh wait here it is. Of course the meds only kept the voices of the evil paperwork at bay for so long, but he could hold it off until this meeting with Anko was over, and catch a breather. It was bad enough with Kakashi screaming like a little girl earlier this morning and then coming into the room demanding a full-scale investigation into who had replaced all of his treasured Ika Ika paradise with horrible evil ass violating Yaoi Orochimaru would love to have. The very picturing of what was contained in such evil books existing sent chills up his spine, but all the Sandame could do was tell Kakashi to burn the books, and buy new ones suited to his preferences. But that was then, this was now, and Anko's trench coat was barely holding back the sight of her s. No damn it, focus, focus on the meeting and not her. You want me to grant you adoption and training privileges to Naruto. Did I hear you correctly? Said the Sandame seeing Anko nod while fidgeting her hips every couple of seconds and it was becoming a bit, distracting. Why couldn't he be a young stud again? No Hiruzen, focus, focus, your wife's ghost is watching you. Or did he need to up the medication again? Or was it a side effect of the medication? Screw it, he'll talk to his doctor later. Yeah, the gaki bumped into me yesterday when I had Dango in my arms and lost it after we collided. Chased the kid all over for nearly 10 minutes before catching him. Of course when I did, he explained it was an accident, and looking back on it I agreed so I didn't kick the crap out of him. But I was impressed by his evading abilities, plus stamina to last so long, and asked him about his status at the academy. It was after we talked about that I felt I should come see you today, said Anko seeing the Sandame nod while moving her hip slightly, which in foreign territory would distract men during negotiations, be the warm putty female hands like the old man did there for a second. Dirty old perverted man, so he impressed you, but adopting, and training him. The boy may graduate this year or next depending how things go now. It seems kind of sudden for you to adopt a child that will soon be a shinobi and adult in the eyes of the village, said the Sandame trying to not look at her hips again when they moved left to sweet right. Damn it here is in focus, that's where you're wrong Hokage-sama. The boy's education is being stunted by the academy teachers. Several times the boy is kicked out of the class for no reason at all, being told if he tells you they'll make things worse, and they apparently give him difficult tests to figure out from what I've been told by the gaki. Naruto hasn't gone to you about this because he knows without proof. Dot it's their word against his and considering the Gaki's status. I don't think the kid has a hope in hell. If I were to spy on the situation in the classroom to verify one case regarding his story and report back to you then it would give me standing to train him properly, said Anko seeing the Sandame sigh again and looked troubled. Okay, investigate the boy's accusations and only after I hear from you will I decide on letting you train the boy said the Sandame seeing the woman smile. And what about adopting him? said Anko seeing the Sandame slump in his chair. Anko, it's not so simple. I would love to have someone adopt Naruto, but I can't do it, and we both know why. The councils will never allow it. If I can give you the means to train him, I'll let you move him in with you, and make it an unofficial adoption, said the Sandame seeing Anko sigh now while shifting her hips more making the old man tense at the area he was now staring at. Fine, it's better than nothing I suppose. But we both know the Sandame Hokage in his prime would have those two councils wrapped around his finger and not the other way around, said Anko getting up from her chair and leaving the room with the Hokage letting out a tired sigh of relief. Thank Kami she left, 
Good thing I held firm in front of my wife's ghost. Now to deal with you evil paperwork. I've survived countless battles in the Shinobi Wars and I will survive you too. Said the Sandane before letting out an evil genius laugh while his Anbu guards guarding the door's sweat dropped while wondering if the old man had finally lost it. Chances are given his age, he most likely was. Konoha Shinobi Academy. And you're kicking me out why exactly? Said Naruto seeing the prick of a teach push him out. Because I said so, I'm the teacher. Teachers make the rules, and one of my rules is no demons allowed in my classroom, said the academy teacher before shutting the door. Asshole, said Naruto, but in truth he didn't care since what the guy was teaching was something the blonde knew, and didn't need this jerk trying to mess him up. Quite the onyugaki, said Anko having seen that little talk between the two. You're one to talk Anko-chan said Naruto seeing the woman blush for a second and once more fidget with the certain item he had put between her legs earlier that morning to be her punishment in having it on with every step spiking pleasure every so often. Yeah well, you have that effect on people, and it's not necessarily a good thing at time, said Anko, as she played off what he meant to be something else, and not what it was. So did your business with the Hokage get settled, said Naruto not giving anything away of their secret relationship. Approved one after seeing proof, but I got shot down with the other, and we both know why, said Anko seeing Naruto frown at that and she couldn't blame the kid. Well I got some free time until the next class. Want to hang out, said Naruto pointing with his thumb to the class he just got kicked out of. Sure, but I think it's only fair the rest of that class gets out early too. Give me a few minutes said Anko walking into the classroom and after shutting the door there were screams from those inside along with that of someone getting the crap kicked out of them. When the door opened next, Anko came out cheery with a smile on her face before she announced that class was dismissed, as the kids ran out mixed with terror and happiness over what just happened going through their heads. They had no idea someone's arms and legs could be bent such a way. Nice, so, should we just leave him there or call for medical assistance? said Naruto seeing Anko's handy work before she shut the door. Leave him. Besides, I'm pretty sure the kids from the class will let someone know since they can't keep their s shut, said Anko smirking at Naruto with the two walking off to get something to eat. Sure enough, the kids from the class told a teacher what happened, who then told some medic nins, and then the medic nins then took the disabled teacher to the hospital. Like the students in the class, who witnessed the events, the medic nins, and the doctors at the hospital had no idea someone's limbs could be twisted in such a fashion. Still, it gave Anko and Naruto a chance to have a meeting with the Hokage about what led up to the events of the instructor's early retirement. So Naruto's accusations have foundation to them, said the Sandame in a matter-of-fact tone. I'd say they do, and if there is one instructor already screwing the kids' education over, then there is a good chance there are more and they're doing it under your nose since you are kind of stuck doing paperwork, said Anko seeing the Sandame eye the dreaded stack of papers and then the brief glare at the pile like it was talking to him. You will never defeat us. We'll get bigger and bigger. Your pitiful predecessors and late successor could not best us and neither will you. You will never win, said the imaginary voice of the paperwork to the Sandame. Ignore its voice. It wants you to speak out loud against it so people will think you're crazy. You're not. You are sane, you are wise, and you don't need adult diapers since you have complete control of over such things. Thought the Sandame to himself. So what are you going to do about this old man? Said Naruto bringing the Sandame's line of thought away from the brink of temporary insanity. Well, given the situation Naruto, I think Anko's right about your education being stunted by the academy instructors and since they are doing it in a way that covers up their vile actions it makes any proof of such sabotage difficult to prove. However, I think we can come to an alternative arrangement that will benefit us all, and allow you to graduate next year since the damage done is too extensive right now, said the Sandame seeing Anko's, you're damn right, look, which made him feel all the more guiltier, and knew the kid was in need of something in terms of education. What kind of arrangement, said Naruto playing the, suspicious yet eager, childlike look on his face. Anko here will train you in the shinobi arts and help you learn what you need in order to graduate next year, said the Sandame seeing Naruto's, surprise, before the boy jumped around with joy. That's awesome, wait, won't people be a little, upset, 
said Naruto now playing the part of the concerned child for those around him, bit. Normally they would be if they knew, but this will be done in secret, and you will move in with Anko at her place. It's actually in the central tower located within the Forest of Death, which is used on occasion for the Chunin exams when hosted here, but other than that Anko lives there alone, and gives you plenty of privacy needed to train with her, said the Sandane while hoping Anko didn't go to crazy with her training of the boy and screw up his sanity. Then I accept, said Naruto shaking Anko's hand with the woman smirking to put on a show for the Sandane that she was going to make the boy's training ruthless. While inside she was mentally whimpering at everything that would be really going on in the privacy of her or rather their home. Very well, I just hope you can handle Anko's training regiment Naruto. She's a lot like you in terms of being full of energy and making people lose their sanity, said the third Hokage seeing Naruto grin happily while dreading for the boy's mental state. You know me old man, I live dangerously, said Naruto seeing the Hokage chuckle a bit before dismissing them both. You have no idea Naruto, you have no idea, now, to take care of you once and for all, said the Sandame before going back to his paperwork and its mocking of him in never defeating it. Forest of Death the Central Tower. Here it is, my home away from Konoha. Free of the bigots, idiots, and perverts that piss me off to no end. Said Anko showing Naruto around with her hands in the air and a smile on her face. Not bad, it's a palace here compared to my apartment. And no one else comes here. Ever. Said Naruto taking something out of his pocket while staring at Anko in front of him. Nope, everyone knows this is my home. Well technically now it's ours. Yep, it's just you and me ee -ee -ee, said Anko, as she felt the vibrator in her increase, and the sudden jolt of pleasure sent her to the ground on her knees. Good, now carry me upstairs to the bedroom where you sleep, said Naruto, as he saw Anko trying to hold back the pleasurable sensation running through her and picked the boy up. Why yes and Naruto Sam triple A, said Anko as she felt the level on the vibrator go up again thanks to Naruto, and the boy had begun groping her ass just for the fun of it. Slow steps now Anko-chan. Wouldn't want you to trip and drop me, said Naruto with a cheeky grin on his face and it made Anko fight the urge to just drop him down the flight of steps. She would have too had it not been for the hypnotic programming Naruto had embedded into her mind. Why yes Naruto s sama a, said Anko, as she took slowly delicate, and tortuous steps up to the high level of the tower where her bedroom was located. If the blonde Gaki ever needed references to get into the INT department when he became a shinobi, Enko was sure Naruto got one hell of a reference on his resume, and lots of positive remarks. Yep, positive remarks with Tick S if she had to and if she was head of the INT department when applying. Hell, she'd give him the position, and let the blonde go nuts with the place. You were one cruel perverted kid, you know that right, said Kayubi, as he realized this bloodline he'd given Naruto was having a profound and perverse effect on the boy. I had a good teacher fox. A good perverted teacher, thought Naruto while the fox started to cry. I'm so proud of you. I think I feel a tears coming to my eyes, said the Kayubi before using one of his tails to make sure and saw that he was. By the time Anko, had gotten to the high levels she was about ready climax right then, and there at the pleasure Naruto had been hitting her with. It was almost unbearable, as she needed to hurry before she came, and collapsed with him in her arms. Acting quickly, Anko kicked down the door to her bedroom, and put Naruto the queen-size bed before he twisted her hard causing the powerful orgasm that made her once again fall to her knees. Very impressive Anko-chan, I think this whole training together in secret will indeed be mutually beneficial said Naruto grinning perversely at Anko breathing heavily with her face on the edge of the bed. Yes master, said Anko, as she felt Naruto gently picking up her head, and ing her forehead before petting it. Who is my favorite girl? said Naruto seeing Anko's eyes glaze for a second. I am master, said Anko, as she felt her mind become foggy, and suppressed even while the rational side screaming at her to pound this perverted fox child into the next millennia as a eunuch. Smart girl. I knew I chose wisely for using my bloodline on you, the first of several. Said Naruto, as he saw Anko look at him now curiously, and the surprise on her face told she didn't expect others to be, turned, like she was. Of course, I need to or else people will catch on. Don't worry, 
I won't turn you away once I have others on my side. I just need others we know, we can trust, and work with them to make Konoha great. I still want to be Hokage, but I can't do that alone, and while your contribution to my shinobi training will be a remarkable step forward I will need help from other people. Other women, think of them as your future sisters to my harem, said Naruto seeing Anko looking hesitant at the idea and knew it was because of her own programming. I I don't know Naruto-sama, said Anko before she saw Naruto's eyes change. Submission I, Anko-chan can you hear me? said Naruto sternly with Anko's eyes blazing over again like they did the first time. Yes Naruto-sama, said Anko simply. Good, I need to update your programming so listen well. I need your help in recruiting other girls to my harem. I am the last of my clan, which means I fall under the CRA, but it's a secret so we can't come right out and say it because that would bring out fan girls. Only strong girls deserve to be with me like you which is why we need to be on the lookout for such people, and let me turn them to our side. Understand, said Naruto seeing Anko nodding like it was the simplest thing in the world. Yes Naruto-sama, said Anko simply. Good, now when I turn off my bloodline, you will feel refreshed, happy, and we will plan out my shinobi training schedule for tomorrow to continue into my graduation, said Naruto seeing Anko just nod before he turned off his bloodline and Anko was free of the hypnotic trance. I feel suddenly refreshed, said Anko before looking up at Naruto, who smiled down at her, and she hugged him while saying thank you even though she didn't know why she was saying it. You are welcome Anko-chan. Now clean yourself up. Come sit here on the bed, and we will plan out my training regiment, said Naruto patting her cheek and she nodded before ing him on the cheek moments prior to getting refreshed up with a shower. The two spent the rest of the day planning out his training schedule, which would consist of Naruto learning physical training involving push-ups, sit-ups, and running with heavy weights. Then there was chakra control, followed by taijutsu training, kunai throwing, and survival training revolving around at least a week of staying the forest of death. That bit of his training would involve Naruto with just the clothes on his back plus one kunai and his instincts. It was going to be one cruel regiment of training, but in the end Naruto knew it was worth it, and there were fringe benefits with Anko that made it all the more appealing. Of course Kyubi had suggested in restraining himself from going, all the way, with Anko, at least until he graduated, and then have Anko give him one hell of the graduation present. Of course, it wasn't easy showing such restraint, as he had this wise scantily clad, mostly special Junin around him, and it was hard to resist the urge to ploy her like his instincts demanded at times. Something Naruto could possibly blame Kyubi for this due to their connection to each other and the of course the oral wasn't helping either. It wasn't like Naruto didn't give as well as receive, which he did since the need to please Anko, and the other women he would turn with his submission eye was a must. Naruto was turning into a demonically influenced pervert, but he was going to be a loving demonically influenced pervert, and that was all there was to it. You did good today Gaki. Let's go into Konoha to celebrate, said Anko as they headed into the leaf, and stopped at Naruto's favorite ramen stand. Ramen time, I've missed it so much, said Naruto hugging the corner of the building while crying tears of joy. Well you earned it after all you've done these last few weeks so I felt you should splurge yourself on something you like, said Anko, as she sat down with Naruto, and saw the ramen girl Ayame come out to take their orders of two bowls of miso ramen with a side of dango. Hey Ayame-chan, how's your old man? I don't see him back there. He didn't break his hip or something, right? Said Naruto seeing Ayame giggle since it was just the way he was when talking about people. Father's taking a few days vacation and left me in charge. It's just you, me, and your girlfriend making three, said Ayame making Naruto glaring with a red face with Anko smirking. Well I don't know about girlfriend. Friends with benefits maybe said Anko teasing to keep up the public eye while Ayame turned cherry red in the face. Hey Ayame, do you need help in the back? I could help you make Anko's meal since you're short-handed today. Said Naruto getting in, ah that's so sweet, from Ayame while motioning for him to join her on the other side. She missed Naruto looking back at Anko with the wink and didn't hear the perverted giggle coming out of the special Junins when they went into the back for the supplies. Okay Naruto-kun. Grab one of these and one of these while get some of the things on the higher shelf, said Ayame, as she pointed to the things around his height, 
and she went to get things that were around her own. Ow, Ayame-chan, said Naruto making the ramen girl rush to his aid in the belief he had hurt himself. What is it Naruto-kun, said Ayame, as she saw him on the ground, holding his knee, and whimpering in pain. I think I hurt my knee, said Naruto so Ayame could come closer and kneeling down. Let me see, said Ayame, as she got closer, and saw no injury to Naruto's knee before looking at him with a curious frown. By the time she saw his eyes change, it was too late, and Ayame had fallen in Naruto's trap. Submission I, said Naruto capturing Ayame in his dojutsu. What's happening? Why do I feel like a part of my mind getting sleepy? Thought Ayame, as she felt her mind get hazy, and saw Naruto standing up so he was now face to face. Ayame-chan, can you hear me? Said Naruto seeing Ayame nod her head like Anko would when under his power. Yes Naruto-kun, said Ayame dumbly with glazed over eyes. Good, now listen very carefully, when I deactivate my optical bloodline, everything I say while it's active will stay within your mind unless I decide to change it, and you will obey whatever you are told. Understand, said Naruto seeing Ayame nod again. Yes Naruto-kun, said Ayame again. From now on, you are going to be considered one of my special girls in my life, and do things with me in private that no one can know about. As for being one of the special girls in my life means you have to listen to everything I tell you in private, which will involve dirty perverted things, and you won't protest. In fact, you will like everything we do, and find it to be pleasurable even if it involves another woman. Do you understand Ayame-chan? Said Naruto seeing the glazed eyes absorbing all this information. Yes Naruto-kun, I'm one of your special girls, said Ayame dumbly with a hint of drool falling down the side of her face he quickly wiped away with a handkerchief. That's right, and as a rule regarding my special girls like you, they have to do special things, perverted thing for me when I ask, and without complaint. Do you understand, said Naruto knowing Ayame would and saw her nod. Good, when I deactivate my bloodline, you will act as if nothing happened, we'll get the ingredients for the ramen and will let me eat you out while in front of your secret harem sister Anko-chan, said Naruto knowing that Ayame knew Anko was one of the special girls in his harem. Yes Naruto-kun, I understand, said Ayame before Naruto deactivated his bloodline and returned to normal. Are you all right Ayame-chan, said Naruto to play the part of the innocent child, dot for now. Oh my yes, I must have spaced out, your friend Anko must be waiting impatiently for us, said Ayame with a bit of worry knowing Anko had a reputation when it came to losing her patience. She'll understand, you are making her dango after all, said Naruto, as he got the much needed ingredients, and went back out with Ayame. You finally came back, I was beginning to think the Gaki was being secretly molested by you Ayame-chan, said Anko seeing Naruto wink behind Ayame while the ramen girl blushed heavily. No. It just took longer for me to find the ingredients for your ramen and dango, said Ayame, as she went to work in making the ramen, and dango with Naruto practically inhaling the ramen within seconds. That was a good lunch. Now for something extra, thought Naruto, as he snuck behind the counter, and Ayame before lifting up her skirt before pulling down her panties. Ayame for her part was blushing red, as she wanted to instinctively yell out in surprise, slap Naruto in the face call him a pervert, and other things that would make a lot of noise for people to hear. However, the words Naruto hypnotically implanted into the woman about this kept that from happening, and all Ayame could do was enjoy the sensation of the blonde's tongue working its magic on her. What's the matter Ayame-chan? You look bothered. Has today been exhausting? Said Anko seeing the look on Ayame's face, as their shared master was going to town on her like he had on the special Junin plenty of times already. Anko could say this about the perverted fox and that it taught Naruto well on how to use his tongue on a woman. Oh oh you can know me Anko chan. E every d day is a and e exhausting day and I've been Betty e er. Said Ayame, as she felt Naruto hit his mark, and had the ramen girl ming into his before patting her rear gently after he finished. Good side dish, hope you don't mind that I take this as a souvenir Ayame chan, said Naruto, as he had acquired in taking her panties and pulled her skirt back down before causally walking back around the counter to where Anko was waiting after she paid for their meal. I it's on the house, 
said Ayame having never experienced that in her life and felt the need to be generous in her own way. Bagged another one, right Kit? My lessons to you about the ways of oral pleasure are paying off, said Kayubi, who was clearly pleased with the boy progress in being a good lover, and would get even better with enough time. You dirty perverted boy, said Anko, as she saw him tuck the panties away before anyone could spot him doing it, and saw the blonde smirking. Oh don't be like that Anko-chan. You're just jealous because I don't do it to you. It's not my fault you don't wear panties around me, said Naruto in a whispered voice, but still devilish all the same, and it made Anko blush a bit. Actually it is your fault Baka. You told me not to wear them when in private, said Anko barely able to keep her whisper on that whispery level. Oh I'm a Baka now. For that, I'm spanking you 100 times when we get back, and you're going to apologize after each hit on your Y ass said Naruto making the woman let out a tiny whimper mentally cursed herself for that. Akatsuki HQ, everything all right, said Pain seeing Madara walk into the dark scary room with the other members of the Akatsuki that they currently had waiting for him. I have bad news, I went to see a doctor not that long ago and it turns out that, that I have incurable rectal cancer, said Madara with all the members looking at him with wide eyes filled with surprise. So you have cancer, said Pain calmly. Yes, said Madara sadly embracing that news himself. And it's in your ass, said Kisame simply. Yes, in my ass, said Madara again with depression. And there is nothing you can do about it. Your Sharingan eyes do not stop it from one day killing you despite them granting immortality. Said Conan seeing Madara shake his head no. There was silence now filling the room, each member of the Akatsuki looking at each other, and then at Madara with his words filling their heads. Uchiha Madara had cancer in his ass and it was incurable no matter what he did. That being said, the group around Madara did the only thing they felt like doing, and that was to simply, laugh. That's right, they laughed their asses off, rolling around laughing at Madara's misfortune, and thus pissing the oldest Uchiha in existence off. You, yelled Madara before stomping away like an angry child. I, I can't believe that, Madara has. Dot has rectal cancer said Payne laughing on the floor with the others. Yeah, that, that really s, but it's, dot it's really funny all, dot the same, and I, I can't help wonder if, if it's genetic, said Kisame with Itachi freezing in the middle of his laughter at the sheer horror of the situation that could be the case and wished to get tested. Hopefully with Itachi's luck, it will have skipped his generation, but if it did, then there was only one other Uchiha that could be hit by this. Back in Konoha. Sasuke's ass all of a suddenly end to a level of ness that even he didn't think was possible, and wondered if this was a bad sign of sorts regarding his ass. Was it fangirls, or was it something else? A dark premonition about Itachi perhaps? Sasuke didn't know, but it was bad for him, and his ass if the feeling around it was any indication. Hearing the fangirl squeals of his name, Sasuke sighed at the long-time ritual of dodging fangirls, and keeping himself being molested one day at a time. All the while, the Uchiha wondered why there weren't any boys around his age willing to experiment, and swing his way. Maybe that Neji kid a year ahead of him. He's always being broody and whatnot. Perhaps they could experiment together and could help finally end the rivalry between the two clans. With Naruto. If one were to suddenly barge in on bedroom Naruto was in at the central tower located within the forest of death, they would see him on the bed, then Anko on his lap, her ass in the air, and the blonde spanking it with his hand. Repeatedly, Anko crying out with each slap, apologizing for calling him a baka, and basically cementing his claim to being her master to the end of time. Again a strange sight to see if you were to barge in on them if you didn't know about their relationship in being together. 98. Point nine nine. Dot and finally, point one zero zero. With one extra for good measure, said Naruto giving Anko her last spank to her ass and was aware of something about halfway through the spanking of the woman's rear. She had gotten wet, Anko got off on being spanked and her ass were leaking onto his boxers right at the moment. Thank you for punishing me master. I deserved it, said Anko with her face currently matching the shade of red her ass was now from embarrassment. Good to hear Anko-chan, but you're is leaking over my boxers, and it needs to be cleaned. It clean after I move to lie back against the pillows, 
said Naruto moving to sit in the middle of the large bed with the stain Anko had placed there from his actions moments ago being seeable to the special Junin's eyes. Yes master, said Anko, as she crawled in between his legs, and began in the spot where her had been, and looked up at Naruto seeing the happy smile on his face. Of course she also saw the slowly growing budge in his boxers so seeing his smile only seemed to reinforce what Anko already knew. After you clean my boxers, I want a blowjob, and all the swallowed, said Naruto feeling the wet traces of her tongue teasing his behind the boxers and making it stir like it had while eating a yame out. It took a while to make it go down given what he did, but Naruto had long since learned to keep his, soldier, from causing, insubordination, and Kayubi had basically healed any kind of discomfort his body would go through from not getting release. According to the fox, such healing was a countermeasure to any woman, who captured him, and tried to break him using the, blue balling, method of UAL torture. I still can't believe I'm doing this to him. Kami only knows what will happen when he's legally an adult, thought Anko, as she finished her first task, and then pulled down the blonde's boxers down to his ankles to reveal his hardness standing proud before her very eyes before proceeding with the second task of the evening. Oh yeah, I love how you do this Anko-chan. You'll have to teach Ayame this when we eventually have her over for delivering ramen and giving a nice tip, said Naruto, as he closed his eyes, and enjoyed Anko's slurping ing noises while pleasing him. Yes Naruto-sama, said Anko before ing on his balls and ing up his shaft. Also, I was thinking about the one major problem I've been having at the academy, and I think I have an idea. Well, Kayubi has an idea, but I need to hear your opinion on it, and if you can help me Anko-chan, said Naruto since his teacher seemed to stick it to him when involving this particular problem. And what problem is that Naruto-sama? said Anko while moving her hands up his s and appendage so the pleasure wouldn't stop though she did the head on occasion. I need to, to learn a, ah, a better, version of the, dot the C clone jutsu, because O of M my C chakra control W won't be enough, even if I, I train to, C control it, oh damn Anko, you are going to make by doing that, said Naruto before grabbing her head and forced her more of it into the woman's. Walk KFJKDFJFDKSK, said Anko, but found herself being controlled by Naruto, and heard him groan before ming into her that she swallowed like she had in the past with him. What was that Anko-chan? said Naruto grinning a fox-like grin while Anko had just finished swallowing his and glared slightly. I said, there are a few versions of the clone jutsu you could learn, but given the amount of chakra you, and that it will increase several times over by next year I think the shadow clone jutsu would be perfect, said Anko, as she knew with the kid's reserves, the jutsu would barely drain him, and accelerate his training several times over, and make the blonde a force to be reckoned with. That and the he had with any girl he was with would be unimaginable. Do you know it, said Naruto seeing Anko shake her head no. No, I don't. Few Junin do since it's in the forbidden scroll of sealing and given your current position in the leaf. Dot the only one capable of teaching you it is the Hokage, said Anko knowing only the Hokage at this point was Naruto's only hope of learning that high level clone jutsu. If that's the case, then we will just have to speak to the Hokage tomorrow, and have him teach it to both of us since it will be good for training, said Naruto thoughtfully on the matter while feeling Anko's tongue in his clean. By this time next year, you'll get rookie of the year, and show everyone what you can do, said Anko knowing with all he could learn by next year's term at the academy, then combined with shadow clones picking up more slack, and his ability to absorb things like a sponge would make the boy a formidable shinobi to be scared of. Damn right, and when I graduate, I'll become an adult, and that means we're going to do a little celebrating with Ayame-chan when that happens, said Naruto before letting out a perverted giggle with Anko knowing exactly what he meant. Old enough to kill, old enough to drink, smoke, gamble, and any woman he could get his hands on. Something tells me I'm going to be sore when that happens, thought Anko while not knowing whether to be pleased by or terrified by that fact. Sure enough, the idea of using the shadow clone jutsu for Naruto, and Anko too had paid off tremendously for training. The Sandame had been reluctant at first considering it was a forbidden jutsu, which if discovered was taught to Naruto could cause some kind of backlash for him, and decided the cover story was Anko was taught the jutsu with the blonde seeing the special Junin do it during her own private training. 
When the final year at the academy started, Naruto used shadow clones to train while he was actually in class, and it paid off big time with those Baka teachers that still tried to screw him over. They didn't kick him out of the classes so much after what happened to the last instructor, but they did try to have him take the tests while making sure he had little to no knowledge from them on how to answer questions properly, and were shocked to see his answers were dead on. They tried to alter the papers, but the boy's handwriting was unique in its own way, and any kind of altering would be noticed if brought to the Hokage. While pretending to learn at the academy, Naruto decided to secretly watch his fellow classmates knowing from Anko that one day he would be on a team with two of them, and would have to trust they would watch his back. Though that was unlikely given how most of them were Uchiha fangirls, who would never see beyond the academy in terms of being a shinobi, and there was also the possibility the minds of the student who did pass were poisoned by their parents in thinking he was a demon they should kill when the opportunity presented itself. Judging from who was in the class he was in, the various children, who would be heirs to their respectful clans would pass, and they were a bit weird in Naruto's mind, not far from the blonde was Nara Shikamaru was lazy, who wasn't doing much except sleeping, which wasn't surprising since all Nara males were lazy, and had were all at a very young age, whipped, by the female half of the clan. All of whom were not Naris by blood, but rather married into the clan because they were the kind of women, who liked weak-willed men, and liked to hit them with frying pans while the Nara men seemed to like being hit. Maybe it was a fetish kind of thing. Naruto didn't know and neither did the Kayubi for that matter since he had been sealed away for over a century. Though neither really cared at this point and moved on to the next kid in the class he'd have to possibly partner with. Akamichi Choji was eating chips under the table in secret due to his clan being FAA. Dot big bone due to their ability to expand themselves and required they have a lot of mass to make it happen. Naruto had nothing against Choji at all so if his parents didn't hate him for having Kayubi and passing that hate down to him then the two would get along just fine. Next was Haruno Sakura who Kayubi had referred to as, Banshee screaming with no rack to grope, and told Naruto to do his best in class so there was no chance in all of hell in being paired with her. Kayubi wasn't even sure Sakura was a girl at all, as she hit too much like a guy when fighting other Uchiha fangirls, and wondered if she was in fact a he just without either of the testicles somehow not descending. Next to Sakura was her former best friend turned rival for Uchiha Sasuke was Yamanaka Ino, who for one did look like a girl, but was a bit skinny for Naruto's taste, if he did turn her in the future, made sure she ate a lot more than she was now. With the right amount of eating, mixed with training in the shinobi arts, Naruto knew Ino would have a great body, and that thought made perverse thoughts dance in his head. A few rows back, Aburame Shino was silent except for the occasional buzzing from his insects his clan was known to be have control over, and was currently doing the whole, living statue, routine like usual. Never moving unless he had to, never speaking unless he had to speak to someone, and doing just about everything while doing nothing that caused people to be freaked the hell out. He was Naruto's kind of friend. Next to Shino was one Inazuka Kiba, who was talking to his dog Akamaru in secret, and could overhear some perverse talk from the boy. It was clear whoever the boy's father was had quite the perverted streak, but from what rumors Naruto had secretly heard about the man, the Inazuka matriarch who was Kiba's mother had scared the man away, and he had not been heard from since his departure. Naruto knew if Kiba's mother overheard her son speaking the way was now, she would no doubt skin him alive, and feed his remains to her more vicious dogs. A row down from Kiba was one Hayuga Hanada, who in Naruto's mind was one special girl, who was timid when it came to being around others, but Kayubi had told the blonde that she had looked his way one more than one occasion, and blushed seconds later. For Naruto of course, he had known why, as it was clear the Hayuga girl had a crush on him, and given her clan eyes she must have seen something she liked. If Naruto had her eyes, he'd do such things, and see what lay beyond that jacket of her that covered Hinata's upper body. Something Kayubi bet all nine of his tails held a well-developed rack, which the fox constantly told him he should try getting in on the ground floor of, and enjoy when possible. Speaking of development, it became clear to Kayubi that Naruto's physical height being the shortest of the class by a mere couple of inches was just not tolerable, and began to do some more tweaking to jumpstart Naruto's growth spurting. By the halfway point of his final year at the academy, Naruto was now barely shorter than Shino, 
who was currently the tallest kid in the class, an increase in height it only helped further in Blonde's training exercises. Not only that, but the fox had burned away the rest of his baby fat with the brief height increase to give Naruto a more mature look, which did make him more noticeable to the females around his age, and if it weren't for the fact their parents told them to stay away from him, there would be fangirls pursuing to molest his body too. Ironic that such negativity could have some form of usefulness. Man this crap is getting old. It's the same old story fox. Teacher talks. Teacher makes us bored. The Uchiha broods. The fangirls squeal and I die a little inside from being here to witness it, thought Naruto to the Kyubi, as the two were in the battle of chess, and like usual the fox was winning. Though after 50,000 games between them, the Kyubi wasn't dominating like before, and Naruto was getting pretty good despite losing. The fox actually praised him regardless of losing saying, you learn more from defeat than victory, and it only spurred Naruto on to finally beat the Kitsune at this game. Yeah I know, don't worry though Kit. We're halfway through the year. Besides, you know what awaits us back home, and that little thing you got Anko chan to wear, said Kyubi giggling perversely while Naruto did too within his own head while keeping it from being outside. Oh yes, Naruto did remember. Tonight, Anko was going to be the horny school girl, and Naruto was going to be the naughty teacher that got to molest her in exchange for giving better grades. That was another thing that changed with Naruto's relationship with Anko as he had her role-playing with him on a few occasions, and played several parts. The naughty maid caught stealing jewelry from her master, who has to be punished, and then had to make it up to him with the use of her body. Then there was the female thief caught by the police, was frisked, molested, and then thrown in a cell, alone with the officer before being punished for her crimes. Naruto's favorite was playing the role of Hokage, as he sat behind the secondary desk in the central tower and Anko played the ever-loyal Anbu assigned to watch him before she, relieved him, of all the stress of a hard day's work in doing paperwork. That made Naruto grin outwardly. What was another surprising thing, was he sensed Anko had become more comfortable with their UAL relationship, no doubt from him looking older, and more mature. Still, Anko had gotten into the routine of sorts regarding his UAL molestations, and groping of her body when he wanted it. Same with Ayame too. Those two got along quite well, as they were able to share him better thanks to the use of shadow clones, and even made a game about who could make their chosen girl faster. Of course the real Naruto won all the time, which was secretly due to the memories of the shadow clones he beat, and their memories allowed him to please either girl he chose faster. What made it even more interesting was neither girl knew just who was the real Naruto and who was the shadow clone until it was over. Naruto. Pay attention said Uruka throwing an eraser at Naruto, who easily got it, and threw it back. Then don't make your lectures so boring Uruka sensei Kami, you could turn your way of teaching into a jutsu, and take out enemy shinobi without even trying, said Naruto, as he got the class to laugh, and made Uruka's face turn red with steam coming out of his ears at the jab at the way he taught the class. Knock it off, teaching like this has been handed down from teacher to teacher. You will respect it, understand yelled Uruka using the evil big head jutsu on the class. Can you teach me that jutsu? I want to use it to scare the crap out of some people, said Naruto casually while making Uruka's face plant since no kid at the academy had ever asked to learn that jutsu. One more word Naruto and I'll send you to detention, thought Uruka before getting off the ground and began his lecture again while giving Naruto a warning look prior to his restarting of it. By the time the academy let out, Naruto was ready to go demon on the place if he didn't get out soon, and raise untold hell around him. Of course, it changed when Anko came to greet him, and he smiled at the special Junin knowing it was no longer needed to hide their official relationship in terms of teaching. The teachers had made inquires with the two councils, who then brought it to the Hokage at a meeting, who after much dodging the third had no choice, but to reveal that Anko had taken the boy on as a student, and give Naruto a chance to excel at the academy. Of course, the council's ed, moaned, and complained about such news reaching their ears. It was bad enough in their eyes the boy was getting training from a special junin, but it was even worse that Anko was the one teaching him, and they demanded such teaching stop. Fortunately, one of the laws the council set up, merely humored the Hokage in the belief the boy had a fighting chance, to keep Naruto from getting help had actually worked in his favor, 
As the law stated if a shinobi of Chunin or higher wanted to teach a student at the academy then they could on their time. The Sandame used that particular to allow the continued teaching relationship between Anko and Naruto while internally pleased with the boy's progress under Anko's guidance. Of course, the Sandame was also pleased Naruto's sanity was still intact, and that Anko's had toned itself down quite a bit. Granted, Anko was still crazy, a bit psychotic, and liked to blood off people's faces. But now Anko would smile more in a way that wasn't fake, sheepish, or psychotic when it wasn't warranted. Who would have thought, so Gaki, how did it go today? Kick any ass, said Anko smiling her crazy smile while Naruto just laughed. Literally, no, figuratively, hell yes, I've practically got the title of rookie in the year in the bag, said Naruto pumping fists with Anko and the two walked along Konoha to have one of their more open conversations. Great, because if you didn't, then I would have to kick your ass for wasting my time in training you said Anko laughing slightly though she seemed worried about something from what Naruto saw. Something wrong, said Naruto seeing Anko shrug. Not really, it's just my friend Yuhi Kurenai is being well. Why lately, said Anko, as she knew Kurenai had been chosen in advance to have a genin team from this year's own graduating batch, and the genjutsu mistress was being really, twitchy. I see, is she being visited by her, aunt, said Naruto knowing what it meant and Anko shook her head. No, nothing like that, it's just, Kurenai has been somewhat of a strong feminist woman for a while now, hating men for being perverts, and hating boys because they will one day become men that are perverts. She actually wanted an all-female team, but given most of them are fan girls, it was most likely Kurenai will prefer taking on the standard two boys, and one girl genin team from those graduating this year, said Anko seeing Naruto nod his head in understanding. Could be tricky for me to graduate officially if I have her as my sensei, said Naruto knowing such a woman as his sensei would try to make his life miserable all because she hated people with a. True, which is why I feel in the event that does happen you might have to convince her to see things in a different light, said Anko, as she didn't mind being Naruto's toy, but there was some hesitance in having her friend join the currently secret and exclusive club she was in with Ayame. I'll only do that unless it's absolutely necessary Anko-chan. I'm not heartless. I'm secretly a pervert learning from a perverted demonic fox, but most definitely not heartless, and I do show restraint when needed, said Naruto grinning at Anko, who was appreciative of this, and knew her secret master was indeed merciful. What about that Hyuga girl? She's spying on you again. It's clear she has a thing for you. I bet she uses her eyes in a very naughty manner, said Anko as she sensed the girl on a nearby rooftop watching them, and sensed jealousy for being so close towards the blonde. Naruto-kun looks so handsome. I just wish that Snake Bimbo would stay away from him. No doubt she's only talking to him in order to get into his for that wonderful thing that's there. Must. Resist. Abducting. Dotten. Raping. Naruto-kun. Thought Hinata, as she used her eyes to watch them, but focused mostly on Naruto and accidentally pushed her vision too far so she saw through his clothing. She went flying back via nosebleed projection and yet, no one knew. Strange. No doubt, she's not like the other girls in my class. Most are Uchiha fan girls, but not her, and I can sense she is strong for age. Just shy in bringing it out, said Naruto seeing Anko smirk knowing a perverted quip was on the way. That Hyuga girl has something she wants to bring out but something tells me she will only show you, and if any of the rumors about Hyuga women are indeed accurate, they are indeed something to behold, said Anko knowing there were rumors about how well developed Hyuga women were and highly guarded among the clan because of their stunning beauty. That and they develop nice busts into their teen years. And when she's ready I'll accept her. Gift, though I would have to explain certain things with us, said Naruto knowing that even if Hinata were to accept what he had done with Anko, it may require the help of his bloodline to make it happen, and he didn't even know if it would work on her. And Ayame-chan, said Anko not wanting him to forget about the ramen girl that could scream like no tomorrow under their skilled tongues. And Ayame-chan, said Naruto agreeing with Anko. Trust me Kit, your bloodline cannot be blocked by others like the Byakugan, or the Uchiha's Sharingan, said Kayubi simply. Really, awesome, what if I use it on a guy? said Naruto with the Kayubi being silent for a moment. Please tell me you're not considering the idea of playing for both sides, 
said Kayubi with Naruto physically stopping and scowling at hearing the fox's words. Number. I like girls. I like their asses and everything else that gives them their Y figure. Hell, I made the jutsu to give perverts nosebleeds and had hot lesbian with Anko using it. Remember, thought Naruto, as he had used the time with seeing Anko and Ayame to perfect the jutsu. If that wasn't perverse then Naruto didn't know what was. Oh, right, my bad, wait, why do you want to know if you can use it on guys? Said Kayubi though as long it wasn't for gay activity like Sasuke he was okay with it. Because I may have to should I get caught and need a means to divert guys away from my pervert activities. I am not going to share my girls with these guys, who clearly don't know how to please women due to them being so angry and unsatisfied by their lack of passion. Look at the Cyclops guy. Reads when he could probably get some easily with his shinobi status, thought Naruto seeing Kayubi think for a minute and then nod in agreement. Point taken. In the old days I could have screwed any lady I wanted simply by telling them I was a demon lord with my nine tails proving it. You know how many women have given themselves to me simply by knowing that title alone. A lot said kayubi knowing kakashi was indeed a famous junin from the last shinobi war and could have swarms of women wishing to at least share his bed for one night you didn't answer my question thought naruto seeing the fox look sheepish oh right well if you use on guys which better be for pranks or missions requiring information extraction then i would say it is possible for example if you wanted to manipulate guys to do something stupid they normally wouldn't do before then your eyes can make it happen and make it so they don't know you made them, said Kayubi seeing Naruto nod in thought. So if I wanted say, to use my eyes on Kiba and make him sleep in the Inazuka Neal while covered in peanut butter it would work. Thought Naruto seeing Kayubi think for a second. Provided his dog didn't stop you. Then yes, said Kayubi seeing Naruto smirking. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks Fox, thought Naruto before focusing on the outer world around him. You okay? You spaced out for a second, said Anko worriedly. Yeah, just having an internal discussion with someone about my eyes, said Naruto with his grin becoming almost evil looking. I take it from your grin it was a good discussion, said Anko almost feeling scared at the sight of the grin despite herself mirroring it. Let me put it to you this way Anko-chan, lots of people in Konoha are going to be very humiliated soon, said Naruto while rubbing his hands in an evil and conspiring manner. Many people soon had shivers run down their spines in fright. Sweet, said Anko, as she would have her camera ready to capture it all, and further make the idiots around them be placed under their thumb with blackmail. The days soon turned to weeks, which soon turned to months, until finally the day of the graduation exam at the academy was upon Naruto, and the boy was excited. During all the time he was at the academy, the young blonde had held on to the rookie of the year title with an iron grip despite the Uchiha and teachers trying to break his grip. They tried cheating, threats, and the most lamest excuses to deduct points off the kids' scores. Still, the scores had to go to the Hokage for review, which he overturned for the slightest, and possibility the most stupidest reasons for the teachers to deduct points. 5 points off for finishing tests too early, 10 for finishing late, if the Sandame wasn't risking a possible a severe stroke or heart attack from this then he would seriously do a lot of yelling. There were even some for sneezing, some for blinking, it was absurd and it was high time for the teachers at the academy to know it would not go unpunished. Stacy, cancel classes at the academy today for the oldest students at the academy this year and bring me their teachers. All of them, that includes the headmaster, said the third, as he had much to think about during Naruto's time being trained by Anko, and it had hit him with an epiphany of sorts. Naruto, According to Anko's reports had shown incredible potential that up until her own hands got a hold of, had been practically squandered, and wasted at the academy where the instructors tried to suppress it. She told the Sandame that if he really wanted to honor the Yandaimi's dying wish, as he himself had told others to, then the Hokage should get off his butt, and make everyone know why he was the Hokage of Konoha in the first place. So when the instructors came into the Hokage's office, not knowing what to expect in speaking the fire shadow, they were surprised when the doors shut, and were locked from inside the room by a button under the Hokage's desk. With an audible see that made them know they were trapped, the instructors looked from the locked doors to the Hokage looking at them with hands connected with each other while in front of his face, and he did not look pleased. 
It was time for the Sandame Hokage to drop the hammer on these fools. Academy Rooftop I can't believe we got out of classes today, said Choji sitting with Shikamaru on the roof watching clouds with Naruto. Troublesome. We both know they have nothing left to teach us Choji. What better way for them to get paid without doing anything, than to simply let us have a free day, and do nothing. It must be a union thing, said Shikamaru sighing while looking at the clouds. I don't know. Those teachers didn't look like they were supposed to let us go free today. Even if they didn't have anything to teach, don't they get paid more to have the class in session, and not out? Said Naruto seeing Shikamaru frown for a second before shrugging again. Who knows? I don't. It's too troublesome to think about anyway. Besides, why bother worrying over that when watching clouds is better, and less stressful? Said Shikamaru seeing Naruto snicker. You are such a sloth Shikamaru, said Naruto seeing the Nara mutter, troublesome, again before looking up at the clouds in the sky. There you bakas are, said Ino finding the trio on the roof with Shikamaru now groaning at being discovered by her while Choji continued eating chips. Hey Ino, what's up, said Naruto sitting up more to see her better. Nothing much for you to concern yourself with Baka. I was just searching for my future team is all. After some arm twisting mix with my female charms, my dad told me I'd most likely get teamed with these two, and form the new generation of Ino Shikacho, said Ino seeing Shikamaru let out another groan and called his dad an idiot for agreeing with his friends to get their wives pregnant around the same time for this to happen. S to be you Shikamaru. You too Choji, said Naruto seeing Ino's face turn red with steam coming out of it. What did you just say? said Ino glaring at Naruto with the male blonde shrugging. Nothing much, just that you are being bossy, these two don't like being bossed around, and it's going to hurt your team dynamics, said Naruto seeing the three of them looking at him like he had three tails of Kyuubi's chakra running out of his body. Did he? No, though it was a good thing to check since he was so used to being around it so much that he wouldn't know unless he saw it with his own eyes. Well so what if I'm bossy? I have to be to move these two lazy bums. One sits there just eating and the other sleeps with his eyes open. Literally, out of all three of us, one has to be awake, and keep them in line, said Ino not wanting to admit that maybe, just maybe Naruto had a small point, and that she needed to be nicer. If only slightly, I see. Hey guys, give us a minute, and leave us to talk. I think we fellow blondes need to talk in private so she can think clearly, said Naruto seeing Choji. Shikamaru, and Ino looking at him in surprise. You sure Naruto, said Shikamaru, as he had seen what Ino could do to boys when she got angry, and couldn't believe the wedgie she gave Kiba last month after the boy pulled a gross prank on her by letting Akamaru pee on her lap. I got it covered, don't worry, said Naruto calmly knowing how to remedy this. Okay, come on Choji, I'll buy you some new snacks since it's too troublesome to figure out what these two are going to talk about said Shikamaru leaving with a happy Choji following. So what do you have to say that will make me think clearly? And don't pull anything Naruto Baka. Kiba Baka is still walking awkward after what I did to him, said Ino with eyes watching Naruto cautiously knowing the blonde was a whole other ball game when it came to pranks than Kiba. People were still talking about the prank on Mizuki somehow getting his head shaved with the words, secretly in the closet tattooed on his forehead without anyone knowing how Naruto did it. I won't. I just have two simple words that will open your eyes and make you think like a proper shinobi should, said Naruto grinning slightly and Ino's eyes were now more alert than ever. Two words huh? What two words could possibly work on me? Said Ino while a part of her mind was telling her not to look at him, but she ignored it due to curiosity, and was shocked when Naruto's eyes changed purplish with that sparkled look to them. Submission I said Naruto seeing the glazed look in Ino's eyes and knew he had her. Moving ahead of schedule are we, said Kayubi knowing the girl was not ready to be, claimed, by Naruto. Just pushing her in the right direction to get stronger before we do anything Kayubi. She's not like Sakura, but if we don't do anything, Ino will be skinny, weak, and most likely be killed if not worse by enemy shinobi, thought Naruto seeing the fox nod in agreement. Point taken, do your thing. But hurry so no one knows what you're doing, and getting caught, said Kayubi knowing that doing this in public was indeed a big risk. Ino-chan, can you hear me? If you can, call me Naruto-kun, and nod your head, 
said Naruto not wanting her to unknowingly call him, Naruto Baka, during this hypnotic programming. Yes Naruto-kun, said Ino before nodding. Good, now Ino-chan, I want you to listen carefully because what I say is extremely important, and involves your life in being a shinobi, said Naruto seeing Ino nod again. Yes Naruto-kun, said Ino while looking like she would hear anything he told her. Excellent, now Ino-chan, being a shinobi takes a lot of hard work, and skill to become famous like your parents. What you also need is trust in your teammates, which is what made your parents work so well together, and so famous in their own right. For that to work with you, Shikamaru, and Choji then you need to be less bossy while being more encouraging of them. Push them, but in a nice way, and only be fierce when it's required. If you act bossy around them all the time, then they might resent you, and Kami forbid they perform some form of coup in the team dynamics. You don't want that, do you? said Naruto seeing Ino shake her head with a worried look on her face. No Naruto-kun, I want Shikamaru and Choji to be my friends, said Ino while Naruto put a gentle hand on her face. Good, next, we need to talk about your body, and how it's too skinny. I know you're just being concerned with your figure getting too face, but you can exercise to keep any fat from you eat off your body, and turn it into strong useful muscles to be put to use in the field. Trust me, I know, I can eat anything I want and all I have to do is train hard to keep myself from getting fat. Doesn't that sound fun, said Naruto seeing Ino nod and knew the programming would install a strong shinobi presence in her. Yes Naruto-kun, said Ino, as her programming made the girl realizing dieting was not helping in getting stronger, but in fact weaker, and didn't want to be a waste of space. Good, from now on. Eat whatever your heart desires, but balance it out with exercise and shinobi training. Possibly taijutsu. At the same time, bond with your future team so they trust you more, apologize for being bossy, but state you're only doing it out of fear of being in your father's shadow, and that you want your team to succeed, said Naruto seeing Ino nod in understanding. I will do that Naruto-kun. Thank you for your help, said Ino with a smile on her face with a hint of drool threatening to come out. You're most welcome Ino-chan. In exchange for this helpful information, there will one day come a time when I will collect from this favor, and you will do whatever it is I ask without question. Understand, anything I want, you will do for me, and without guilt of doing it because you are being honorable, said Naruto seeing Ino nod with glazed eyes showing signs of the hypnotic programming was still working. Clever, very clever kit said Kayubi knowing the girl would do whatever Naruto asked and then by that point would be ready to bring into his group. When I deactivate my bloodline, you will remember everything we spoke about, and yet won't tell anyone about my bloodline because it's a secret that needs to stay a secret for now, said Naruto seeing Ino nod dumbly and deactivated his bloodline to bring the girl out of his hypnotic gaze. Thanks for the help Naruto-kun. Even if you are a baka sometimes, you know what you're talking about when it counts, and give good advice, said Ino whole not realizing she had called him, Naruto-kun, and was actually not having the urge to hit him like Sakura did though she missed all the time these days. Anytime though remember what we talked about regarding your words when insulting people, as they could be your teammates one day, and they could hold a grudge, said Naruto giving her a pointed look and made her smile sheepishly. Right, sorry. I'm going to find my future teammates and get to know them better before I ask my dad for some additional training, said Ino, as she felt the sudden need to train more, and get stronger while the thoughts of eating food she would normally never eat to keep her weight down entered. That's the spirit Ino-chan, said Naruto before spinning her around and slapping her ass to the door making the girl yelp at such a perverse move. Yet for some reason Ino didn't yet know, she had actually enjoyed being slapped there and even more when the reality of the fact it was Naruto's hand hit her rear end. Watch it pervert, you're lucky I got good advice from you or I'd kick you right where it hurts most for boys, said Ino though it was clear she didn't mean all of the threat. I'll remember that, said Naruto watching Ino go and went in his own direction to see the Hokage to mooch some free ramen from him. Hokage tower outside the Hokage's office. Naruto walked casually up to the doors of the Hokage's office, as he heard what sounded like demonic screaming from behind the shut doors, and saw the secretary was cowering in fear. Smirking at the sight, Naruto wondered if this was the reason behind the teachers cancelling his age group's classes for the day, and judging from the squeaky voices now begging for mercy behind the doors, 
it was a possibility. This is your fault, said the secretary Stacy, as she looked out behind her desk, and glared at Naruto. Of course, everything is my fault, just by breathing the air around you, I bring about the end of the world one day closer to becoming a reality, and damn all the so-called innocent souls who coincidentally hate my guts. You don't like me, tough, you chose this job so it up and it right, otherwise, hand in your resignation, and get thee out of here. Said Naruto seeing Stacy become angry at his words and rose from her desk to smack him. Demon filth, said Stacy moving to strike him, but the hand she was using was caught by Naruto, and yanked her forward before grabbing the woman by the throat. Listen and listen well, if you ever try to lay a hand on me again, I'll cut those fake off, and staple them to your ass. You cross me and I'll make you bleed in ways and in holes you never thought possible. Got it said Naruto making his eyes turn crimson like Kyubi's by using the fox's chakra and scaring the woman almost out of her clothes. Almost, she wasn't that pretty and neither were her fake. Yes, yes, said Stacy, as she cowered in fear of him, and he threw her back against the desk before the doors opened with whimpering teachers leaving the Hokage's office. Good, excuse me, I'm going to talk to my surrogate grandfather now. Remember, cross me like you just did, and you'll regret it said Naruto before walking into the room where the Hokage was drinking sake, and smoking his pipe to further enjoy letting out the anger he unleashed upon those idiots. Konoha Academy Graduation Day, Naruto smiled at the two teachers in front of him, as he had known, and tormented them well during his time at the academy. Yumino Uruka was pranked nicely by Naruto while Mizuki was, well he was pranked to an untold level of humiliation for because of his dislike for the blonde. Pictures surfaced of the teacher doing certain things, which got him sent to the Hokage's office for an explanation, the loss of his girlfriend, and basically people questioning his ulity. Not to mention his preference in terms of being with things other than the human species, which basically killed the man's social life, night life, and any kind of life within the leaf. Okay Naruto, all you have to do left is perform the clone jutsu and make three clones, said Uruka seeing Naruto grin. No problem. Shadow clone jutsu, said Naruto, as he made three clones, and all three of them giving mock salutes. Shadow clones, Naruto, how did you learn that jutsu? said Uruka while missing Mizuki seething at Naruto becoming victorious in passing. Simple, I was having problems using the clone jutsu due to having so much chakra and so little control. I tried chakra control exercises, but I kept getting more chakra flooding me faster than I could gain control, and I couldn't make a proper clone. I told the Hokage that I needed some other variation that suited my massive reserves of chakra and he was able to teach me the shadow clone jutsu, said Naruto seeing Uruka was impressed, but Mizuki was livid, and wanted to make the boy suffer. Too bad, you made the wrong kind of clone. You fail boy, said Mizuki glaring at Naruto while the boy raised an eyebrow. Actually Mizuki, we do allow substitute clones since some have shown their elemental affinities early one, and make clones based on their connection to the elements. Like water clones, mud clones, and of course shadow clones for those with much higher reserves of chakra. Since the Hokage taught you how to use it Naruto, we can't exactly ban it, and so I'd say it qualifies in being a sub for what was asked. Congratulations Naruto, you pass in our new rookie of the year said Uruka handing Naruto his ninja headband. Wait, stop this nonsense, we both know that boy shouldn't have passed much less been rookie of the year. I will not acknowledge him passing the exam. Hand back your ninja headband right now, said Mizuki seeing Naruto give him the finger and the chunin leapt over the desk to take it from him. Mizuki would have too if not for Naruto stopping him by using the taijutsu skills he had learned from Anko and put the man's head though the very desk he leapt over. A broken arm, fractured leg, and Kanai up the ass later the secret spy of Orochimaru was carted away to be healed until Ibiki along with Anko could get a crack at him for information. Well, aside from that, you pass Naruto, and I welcome you into the shinobi lifestyle, said Uruka shaking the boy's hand and Naruto returned. And shocked Uruka's hand and body with an electrical buzzer. Got to be careful Uruka sensei. Never know when I'll strike in terms of a prank said Naruto before releasing Uruka and leapt out the window with burnt-looking Chunin to wonder what in Kami's name had he unleashed. Forest of Death Central Tower. Yeah, it's party time, said Anko, 
as she drank some sake, and was excited that her student had dominated everyone in his class. It was like giving the finger to every arrogant bastard in Konoha, who had ever tried to screw them over, and it got even better when she tore Mizuki a new asshole. Literally, she had him use the kunai Naruto put in his ass and actually dug a hole deep into it before making a sharp turn into the backstabber's colon. Now Mizuki could crap out of two holes, which was beneficial for the traitor since he no longer had control of his bowels, and was making quite a mess at random intervals. It's always party time with you Anko-chan, said Naruto seeing the woman sitting across from him eating and drinking happily in a bit of a, sloppy manner. Hey, that's not nice, and after all the training I put into making you number one too, said Anko in a mock pout while Naruto just laughed at her face since it was so cute on the usually crazy blood ing off the face of people's special junin. If I recall correctly Anko-chan, you only taught me how to be a shinobi. Not manners, if anything, you encourage my behavior, and went along with it, said Naruto seeing Anko looking sheepish before snapping her fingers and pouting again. Damn, I knew I forgot something. Oh well said Anko smiling again before eating and drinking food around her. Has anyone ever told you that your table manners while rude make you look incredibly why? Said Naruto, as he smirked while eating some food calmly, and saw Anko wink at him before flashing a little bit more of her s behind the trench coat despite the fish net covering the s. Barely covering the s, oh really? Well since you are a shinobi of the village now. It also means you're an adult in the eyes of the village, and can do just about every adult thing there is in the book. For instance you can drink sake, gamble at casinos, and dot you can also a certain special junin all night long until she's too sore to think straight, said Anko grinning at Naruto, as he grinned back, and glanced at the door leading to the bedroom. Are you sure, what will Kuranai-san think when she sees you tomorrow afternoon with a limp and suspects you were, violated, by a man? Said Naruto knowing Anko's friend would suspect something if he really let her have it and hunt down the guy, him, for the pleasurable act. I'll put her mind at ease. Tell her I made the guy squeal like a pig since she thinks I'm the dominate one in the sack. Well I was until you changed the landscape, said Anko though she didn't deny being submissive to Naruto during their time together wasn't all that bad, as she had been with a few guys who were okay by normal standards, and had even been with Kurnai once after they got drunk with herself being the one on top. With Naruto, she felt herself being driven instead of driving, and it was a nice pace to be in since it spiced things up in the bedroom. Not to mention Ayame with her visits was submissive to both her partners so it evened everything out for everyone without any kind of complications. Though Anko got the feeling Kuranai may be an in-the-closet lesbian if not secretly being Bayul and had wanted to take things with the special Junin to take what they have to the next level while waiting in an almost timid way for the crazy woman to make the first move. If that was the case, then Kuranai would never accept the idea of any guy, much less Naruto of all guys being the third party in such a relationship and when the need for the male gender was required to spice things up of all times. Are you complaining? said Naruto with a raised eyebrow while getting out of his chair and giving a semi-mocking glare at Anko. I don't see a reason, said Anko playfully before Naruto was beside her, pulled the woman out of the chair, and gave the special Junin a passionate right on the. Nor will you feel one, ever, said Naruto, as he went with Anko to their bedroom, shut the door, and then went back to ing the woman passionately before walking them both to their bed with him on top. Anko felt Naruto's hands expertly roam around her body beyond the trench coat, which was pulled back to further expose her s to him, and felt the other hand unzip her short skirt. She moaned at his touch, feeling the pleasure only he seemed to capable of delivering, touching her in just the right places, and making her wet. Anko would never admit this, but part of her had wished Naruto had gone all the way with her sooner than later, and yet gearing up for what was about to happen soon enough was well worth the wait in the special Junin's mind. She could feel the budge in Naruto's pressing against her now vulnerable and open spot while realizing that at some point the genin in front of her had gotten the fishnet shirt off her upper body. It's not fair, I'm in your knot, said Anko, as she felt his on her tit, and his tongue making it erect before she decided to flip him onto his back so she was now on top while grinding against his. Anxious, said Naruto before letting out a moan as Anko's hips pleasured him while the woman herself removed his upper clothing, and then went for his. Very much considering what you have down there big boy, said Anko, 
as she freed him of his, and boxers to see the prize standing tall before her. You have no idea how much restraint it took not to do this sooner, said Naruto feeling her hands massage his tool for a few seconds and then raised her hips up until she was aligned with him before their eyes met. Actually, I do. Now I'm going to make you a man just like you're going to make me feel like a woman who actually feels something, said Anko, as she had never been satisfied with the few male partners that she had, and while hot lesbian like was great, dot she wasn't fully converted to that way of pleasure. Naruto here was going to keep that conversion from happening bloodline or not. I'd be honored, said Naruto, as he grabbed Anko's hips, and slowly lowered her onto his waiting erection before filling the woman's entirely. Holy crap, said Anko, as she had never felt an erection Naruto's size inside of her, which had been one of the reasons she had been willing to partake in UAL relations with the same more than once, and it took her a moment to adjust to the incredible feeling of the bow no man she was sitting on. My thoughts exactly, damn your Anko-chan, are you sure you're not a virgin? You feel as is one, said Naruto, as he felt her squeeze him er, and had to fight the urge to release his seat into her passage. Trust me Naruto-kun, but thanks for being sweet about it. Now, let's stop talking, and get to some hours of roughing, said Anko, as she began to ride Naruto with her s bouncing for him to see in all of their glory, and the blonde couldn't help in just grabbing them to play with while she bounced. Have I ever told you how great you are? said Naruto, as he thrust up when Anko went down to further hit more within her, and twisted the s playfully knowing how to make the woman putty in his hands. I lost count after a hundred, said Anko, as she moaned from his twisting, upward thrusting, and was beginning to pant with a sheen of sweat forming on her body. Same here, said Naruto, as he felt the woman's clenching him even er, and knew she was going to soon. And he was right, the very fact they were already horny, combined with Naruto knowing what places on Anko's s to touch, grope, and pinch while thrusting into her made the woman reach her orgasm all the sooner. When she did, Naruto felt the special Junins practically squeeze the life out of his like a dam anaconda to milk his out of his, and within mere seconds of Anko Mingsa did the blonde. Both called out the other's name, as they both came hard, and Anko falling right on top of Naruto with her s now nearly suffocating him. Rolling them over so Naruto was on top, which prevented the actual suffocation, and then explanation to the Hokage on why the new genin had died such a death, the blonde male of the two lovers basked in the afterglow of their UAL encounter, and was breathing heavily along with Anko. That was pretty good for your first time all the way Naruto-kun. We'll make you a full-fledged love machine yet, said Anko, as she held on to Naruto, and felt his breath tickling her. Thanks, we're not done yet though, right? Said Naruto, as he saw Anko grin, and knew she knew his tool wasn't drained of life. Hell no. You have all that stamina when it comes to running around, training, pulling pranks, and all the other crazy stuff around the village. I want an all-night Athen from Yugaki and I intend to get it, said Anko hungrily with Naruto returning it. Good, because that's what you're going to get Anko-chan. Just don't complain when you can't walk properly tomorrow morning, said Naruto, as his eyes turned crimson, and saw the moment of fear in the woman's face. You know what to do with her kit. Tap this. S ass until she blacks out from the pleasure, said Kayubi giving his vessel the much needed energy to make Anko almost regret her words. Oh yes, Anko would be sore tomorrow morning. She would be sore if the sounds flesh smacking flesh and the screams of pleasure were any indication. Anko had to use all her shinobi training to hide the otherwise noticeable limp she was sporting from the intense ing Naruto put her through last night and later on while in the shower earlier this morning when he woke up. Fortunately, Kayubi had been kind enough to keep the sperm sterile until much later so the chance of pregnancy being zero, and no one would suspect the two of going at it like rabbits in heat. Not that Anko was regretting her action in getting screwed roughly by the genin, as she had desired it long before Naruto using his submission eye, for a UAL relationship with a man capable of doing such things to her, and filling, among other things, that void within her soul that always seemed empty until now. Granted, had Naruto's bloodline not put her in this position, Anko would have most likely missed it, and the now legally adult of a genin ranked shinobi would be suffering a great deal of pain at the moment long after she first encountered him roughly a year ago. With a smirk on her face, the special junin was thought back to that memory of how he was able to elude her for as long as he did, 
and her stupid overreaction to him spilling of all that lovely dango. It may not have been my proudest moment back then, but damn did the end results get me the best lay I've had by a man since, ever. Thought Anko, as she tried not to let the pain of her sore show when walking to the Hokage's office to report for duty, and getting the boy his old apartment back. Provided it was spruced up and cleaner than a newborn baby's butt. Along the way to the Hokage's office, Anko noticed Nara Yoshino walking out of her house looking more angrier than usual, and the special Junin couldn't help in wondering why that was the case. The source of the Chunin's anger was most likely her husband or son being their usual lazy Nara selves in being well, lazy. However, Anko realized that this anger was beyond the usual kind the woman experienced, and the special Junin decided to let her curiosity get the best of her. Hey Yoshino-chan, how are you today? said Anko in her usual cheery way. Oh hi Anko-chan, I'm doing okay, said Yoshino but Anko could hear the strain it took for the woman to sound even remotely happy, and it wasn't hard to see it involved one of the Nara men in her life. Problems again at home, said Anko knowing that saying the word troublesome or just trouble at all. I keep forgetting your shinobi skills exceed mine when it comes to reading people, said Yoshino, as she let out a sigh, and was clearly unhappy right now. I'll take that as a yes, said Anko seeing Yoshino nod. It's my no good lazy husband. I wanted to have some. Dot fun last night, but the lazy bum blew me off, saying, such an act is too troublesome right now, and even stated that they already had a kid so trying again was pointless. Can you believe that, I didn't want just to have another child. Kami, I just wanted to have, and would have used the anti-pregnancy jutsu before we went at it so he was covered. Why I married that bum I will never know. I can't believe I even liked him at such a young age before jumping into the idea of marriage to that lazy impotency defining man. Said Yoshino getting angrier and angrier with each passing second of her speaking ill about Shikaku. Damn, I didn't know it was that bad, thought Anko seeing the woman so tense right now from the lack of the good stuff. I was lucky to even be pregnant with Shikamaru. I don't even remember the time that occurred to even make me pregnant with him in the first place. For all I know, the man just inseminated me in my sleep, and cut out the whole intimacy thing altogether. What's worse is that he'd actually do that and I can actually believe that Baka would do just that, said Yoshino kicking a rock in front of her, which went sailing of a lamp post, a wall, and hit a bum in an alley in the temple. What are you going to do? I mean, a girl has needs, and if the man she's with can't give it then, said Anko seeing Yoshino getting angrier. I don't know. Part of me just wants have a temporary separation from him, but if I do that, then I could mess up my son's mind, and there is a matter of who lives in the Nara clan home. I know since I married into the clan, Shikaku Baka should live there, but it's because of me that our son even gets up in the morning, and possibly breathes at all. I feel conflicted, said Yoshino, as she had never felt this twisted, and tense inside. It wasn't healthy, your kid will understand, from what I understand, he graduated from the academy, and thus can make his own decisions in life that won't affect your life. If you ask me, the best thing to do not only for them, but more for yourself, is to get some of your own personal space, and then find a male stud that will actually want to you all night long. Said Anko, as she saw Yoshino blush at the idea, but even though she married, and had a kid young though of herself as a plain housewife. Sure she still had everything in place where it counted, making her a milf of sorts, but even then what man would want, used goods, and even want a relationship with her if she left Shikaku completely. At best, she'd be someone's lover for a few years, then some other young piece of ass would drag the man she was with away, and then Yoshino was going to be back to square one. As if any man would want me considering how I act, maybe it's my fault in some ironic way, you know how I am when it comes to men Anko. Men constantly fear me for what I might do whether or not they actually do something to warrant my anger on them in the first place. Said Yoshino, as she was considered scary by her own son, and knew any guy bossed around by her would just cut their losses first chance they got. Yeah, though that was more of a habit you picked up after being around Shikaku since his lazy ass could barely move unless you used a cattle prod on him. You are your own woman Yoshino and my friend. One of the few I have in this village separate from him for now, then wait a little while to sort things out, and have a little fun for once. All you do is cook, 
clean, and run that house like it was yours to begin with when we both know the clan head is supposed to do all of that. The only reason Soom does it with her clan, is because she is an Inazuka by blood, and her husband wasn't when they got together. Said Anko seeing Yoshino frown in thought knowing her point was valid on all fronts. I suppose you're right, chances are, the best thing to do for the family is to have some kind of separation from them, and just, live a little away from the suffocating style of working my fingers to the bone all day while yelling at Shikaku to life a whole finger in one of his hands, said Yoshino, as she looked more focused on the idea than ever before, and Anko was glad her advice helped. That's my girl, besides, if you need a place to stay, head to the apartment complex where Uzumaki Naruto lives, and live there for a while, said Anko, as she already had a plan in motion, and get her young stud something good. Uzumaki Naruto, you mean? Dot its jailer, said Yoshino, as she had no problem with the boy, even gave Shikaku grief on not adopting Kashina's son, but the spineless man would just endure her anger until it was spent like he was weathering a storm and just say the whole thing was too troublesome to get involved. Yeah, I trained the kid for the last year in being a shinobi after the Hokage found out about the sabotaging of his education the instructors at the academy were doing and now he's graduated rookie of the year. No one lives in that apartment complex because of him, but because no one does, the rates are extremely low, and I'm sure the Hokage can make things easier if it means giving the Gaki extra company said Anko no already about how Yoshino favored the boy more than other parents did. It's something to consider in terms of a temporary home. How do I know the kid won't try anything perverted? I don't want some panty raider living across or a few levels above me, said Yoshino looking at Anko with a glare. Naruto, a pervert, please. I had to give him, the talk, and the poor Gaki was so afraid I'd hurt him for posing so he could see what a real woman's body actually looked like, said Anko which was a lie in term of giving Naruto the talk, but true for the posing, and showing him a woman's body. You, you actually did that, couldn't you get in trouble? Said Yoshino keeping her voice down now unless someone overheard this part. I told the Hokage it was the only way the Gaki could understand things about. It's not like a slept with him Yoshino. I just explained things through visual aid. Books just show the internal stuff, but never the external and if they did it's mostly filled with some sick pervert's handwriting. If you must know, Naruto-kun was a complete gentleman, and had asked for permission to look before actually looking, said Anko while inside her head, the memory of Naruto, learning, made the fire in her loins stir again, and tried to keep it under wraps while telling herself she needed time recovering from earlier. If you'll vouch for him, then I'll live in the same building as him but if I so much as see a blonde hair smelling of ramen in my home uninvited nearby unmentionables, I'm going to remove his balls, and then I'm coming after you, said Yoshino, as she knew how to hurt a woman like she did men, and the best way to do it was hitting the privates no matter their location. Trust me, if anything Naruto-kun should be worried about you coming to see him, and get some of his little man that I know for a fact is not little, said Anko whispering this news to Yoshino while grinning wickedly. You saw his thing. Anko you could get in trouble for this, said Yoshino looking ready to bolt, contact the Hokage, and get Anko arrested for molestation charges. Whoa, whoa, calm down, it wasn't like that, I told you he had to go through it in my own way, which involved trust between teacher, and the student with me explaining the body parts of a man just like I did with my own when talking about women. I got the consent from the Hokage on this too with Naruto talking to him soon after about what went on. We both know I'm not like that, said Anko knowing she had somewhat of a reputation, but nothing along the lines of kids, and violating them in such a way. She wasn't Orochimaru, I suppose I'll have to trust you. Even I know you wouldn't dare touch a child in such a way, said Yoshino, but the fact this kid would one day make some woman a very happy woman when intimate kept running around her head, and it was difficult to keep such thoughts from the forefront of her mind. Damn right, now. Let's go to the Hokage's office together, take care of our own personal matters with him, and then we can have some fun before moving what you need out of the Nara clan, said Anko, as she wrapped her arm around Yoshino's shoulder, and they walked to the large tower in front of them. With Naruto several days later, Naruto was glad he had a whole week off before the naming of Genin teams were made official, as it gave him time to get back to living in his apartment again which the third Hokage had so generously upgraded, and used the funds from the civilian treasury to do it. 
Of course the civilian council protested, but the Hokage told them that the building's maintenance and upkeep was their responsibility that should not have been ignoring on account of the building only having one person living there. As such, the Sandame had made the building an apartment complex meant only for shinobi, which put it under his control, and thus penalized the civilian council with heavy fines that went towards the apartment's remodeling. In short, the civilian council had basically paid against their will in fixing up Naruto's home, and they were steaming mad. The Sandame also had special security seals added to the building to prevent any kind of vandalism, which might occur from drunkards, idiots, or the angry mobs that wanted to kill Naruto because of Kayubi. The seals would prevent any damage from being done while secretly alerting Anbu of such attempts at destroying and were ordered to take such people to Ibiki or Anko for re-education on respecting other people's place of living that shouldn't be disrespected in the first place. Damn, talk about one hell of an upgrade, said Naruto walking into his home, which at one point had some rickety floorboards, pieces of wallpaper peeling down, and some kind of mutant fungus in one of the closets he had barricaded to keep it contained. Now the apartment had new floorboards, freshly placed wallpaper, and the mutant fungus apparently having been removed with a, thank you card from Konoha R&D for giving them a unique specimen to study. Even more wonderful was the single bed he had slept in for nearly a decade was a queen-size piece of beauty, which gave him more space to enjoy, and no doubt make his fun with all the girls more enjoyable too. Knock, 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 speaking of which, hello Naruto-kun, may I come in, said Ayame when Naruto opened the door to see the ramen girl smiling at him with a hint of in her eyes. Of course. How is your father doing? Without you helping him run the stand will do doubt drain him, said Naruto hearing Ayame giggle at the idea knowing it wasn't true. Daddy will manage without me. I already told him I was going to see you today and he completely understands. I still can't believe he agreed to me dating you, said Ayame, as she had no idea that Naruto had used his submission eye on her father, and basically got him to give his blessing to date much less sleep with his daughter. Naruto had basically programmed into the man's head that his daughter was old enough to start dating, as well as smart enough to choose the right man to make her happy, and that if it was Naruto. Well then all the more happiness to his angel. Of course, it was to be kept a secret from everyone that wasn't supposed to know, and Tyuki was going to keep his shut to ensure their happiness. I have my moments. Now, would you like a tour of my home, and what's changed? Said Naruto taking her hand and could see the inner growing. Yes, I would like that very much. Why not start off with the kitchen and then you can show me. Dot the bedroom. Said Ayame seeing Naruto smirking and then wrapped his hand around her waist with the hand groping her butt while walking through the apartment. As you can see Ayame-chan, the kitchen is now brand spanking new, a new stainless steel fridge, complete with an oven, and stove that just won't quit, said Naruto feeling the heat from Ayame growing and the redness in her cheeks spread from his touch. T that's great nn Naruto kun. What a about the uh? Dot the bedroom. Said Ayame, as she jumped a bit when Naruto lifted her skirt from behind, and touched her special place that was no longer being protected by barrier of fabric known as panties. Simply because she wasn't wearing panties anymore when seeing Naruto. This way, Anko chan is still sore from what we did a few days ago so this bed hasn't really been broken in, and I would love it if you would be that girl I do that with said Naruto while having one of his fingers in her going deeper and felt the woman whimper with need for his touch. Even more so when she nearly came after Naruto channeled chakra into his finger near her clit. I want you Naruto-kun. I want you so badly, said Ayame her body burning with need thanks to his touch and couldn't wait any longer. I know you do Ayame-chan, but you know my will easily split you in half if I were to simply enter and take your virginity. So you need to lube me up with that why of yours. All right, said Naruto, as he began to disrobe while Ayame just nodded, and looked hungrily at his waist knowing the prize that awaited her. When Naruto dropped the last bit of clothing holding back his erect tool, he sat on his bed before Ayame almost dived to the ground between his legs, and engulfing the large tool into her. She was ing, ing, and stroking him lovingly like she had dozens of times before since Naruto had used his submission eye. Her loins felt like they were on fire, as Naruto had oh so carefully denied her the last push over the edge of the orgasm his fingers had stirred, and wanted him to put out that fire with his in that special place. However, to earn that right, 
Ayame needed him to be ready, and it would be wrong in her program to be submissive mind to not prepare his for such a special undertaking. I need to thank Anko Chan later for all the great tips for giving Naruto kun blowjobs when she helped me visit him in the forest of death, thought Ayame, as she felt his hands on her head, and the moaning of pleasure that was music to the woman's ears knowing she was causing such sounds. Oh yeah Ayame Chan. That's it my ramen girl of A. The right out like only you can, said Naruto, as he too would have to thank Anko for her teaching Ayame, and let out a roar of pleasure before dumping his load into the girl's wanting. Swallowing the Ayame quickly cleaned his further before stripping her clothes she had on, and straddled his waist while lining his wet tool against her wet slit. The head of his erection pressing against her opening, Naruto waited until the girl was ready since giving something like to him was special, perverted nature aside, and could wait until Ayame entered him willingly. I'm ready Naruto-kun, said Ayame huskily into his ear while her s were right in front of his face. Then do it Ayame-chan. Give yourself to me said Naruto before she did just that and let out a silent a silent scream when the pain of losing her virginity while holding on to him lee until the pain left. Let's keep going Naruto-kun, said Ayame into his ear before feeling him lift her up and then thrust back into her slowly at first while picking up the pace with time. Ayame gasped in pleasure from the feeling of him entering her, which as wet as it was from before was now coating his with L, and attempting to milk it for what its contents held. Naruto himself was in heaven at feeling such ness being wrapped around his, as he ed on each of the woman's s at different, and random intervals that made Ayame cry out in pleasure. The woman held onto him while he continued to thrust upward, hitting all the right spots with his well-endowed erection, and the way he grabbed her ass in a strong groping grip was also a surprising turn-on for the ramen-making girl. I want to into you Ayame-chan. I want to unload my spunk into your, said Naruto picking up the pace and could feel she was getting close too. Do it. In my Naruto kun. Make our first moment all the more complete. Fill me up with your sperm, said Ayame, feeling him thrust harder, faster, and gripping her rear with more strength. Unable to hold back any more, Naruto came hard into Ayame, feeling her orgasm along with him, and her squeezing him for the he had been holding back. It was a moment of incredible pleasure for the two, as they collapsed on the other with Naruto rolling Ayame onto her back so he wasn't killed in the pleasant, blissful manner of her s suffocating him. How does it feel to be a woman Ayame-chan? Said Naruto, as he felt the woman's hot and heavy breath hitting his spiky hair. Wonderful. Can you keep going? Said Ayame loving how he was inside of her and the feel of his muscles rippling when touching them with her fingers. Do you and your dad make the best ramen ever in all of the elemental countries? Said Naruto while groping her s and loving how a little touch of chakra in his fingertips could make the woman take such an intake of air at the sudden jolt of pleasure. Oh Kami, said Ayame, as she felt the incredible feeling running through her already sensitive s, and the shifting Naruto did with his hips. The name Naruto will do, said Naruto looking her right in the eyes flashing crimson for a second before changing to blue with an intense look of in them. It was a good thing the room was heavily soundproofed. Konoha Shinobi Academy several days later, Naruto was humming happily, as he waited patiently for his Junin sensei to arrive while some of the others, and wondered who his sensei was going to be until it was time to be promoted to Chunin. Asuma had come to take Team 10 away, which consisted of Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji. Next had been Yuhi Kuranai, who looked indeed like a feminist, as she glared at every guy in the room before asking for Team 8 consisting of Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino, and Haruno Sakura. That's right. Haruno Sakura was denied her chance to be with Sasuke. Man she had been so pissed off at Aruka for denying her that particular right. Oh well, not his problem, and the only thing going for Naruto was the fact Hanada was on his team. Hell, the moment she heard that, the blonde saw her blush before collapsing on the ground letting out all kinds of cute girly like sounds. And yet no one seemed to notice. How very odd. The only two problems Naruto had however, was Sasuke being broody, and their sensei Hitaki Kakashi being late. Of course, Naruto was told by Anko in advance that Kakashi was always late, and not to expect him for a few hours. The blonde was actually tempted to sneak out, find one of his girls, and just screw either of them silly. Unfortunately, such an idea was scrapped when Naruto realized Anko was working today, and Ayame was no doubt in the middle of her shift at the ramen stand. While Naruto could be at two places at once, neither Anko or Ayame could with any such attempt raising a red flag that the blonde didn't need being raised must get stronger. 
Must kill Itachi. Must get stronger. Must kill Itachi, thought Sasuke while he waited and brooded. Must not abduct Naruto kun. Must not rape him. Dot yet must not abduct Naruto kun. Must not rape him. Dot yet, thought Hinata staring at Naruto while turning her eyes on and off every few seconds while staring at him with a blushing face. While this was going on, Yuhi Kuranai was busy with evaluating her team, and instantly disliked for the dominating male testosterone it possessed. Even she questioned if Sakura was a girl or just a gender-confused boy trying to be what he or possibly she could not. It was only through Sakura's howler monkey of a female voice that Kuranai was satisfied with defining the Haruno as a female of the human race. Inazuka Kiba was definitely a pervert from the way he looked at her the second she asked for Team 8 and further proved that men were indeed dogs ironically enough when it came to viewing women. As for the Aburame, Kuranai couldn't get a read off of him, but suspected the boy was eyeing her with behind those glasses, and had to fight back the urge to punch the boy in the face just to break them. Okay. Let's get this over with. My name is Yuhi Kuranai, I'm your Junin sensei from now on unless you fail your true test, and if you do fail then you will get sent back to the academy. You with the dog. Speak. Tell us about yourself, said Kuranai seeing Kiba focus on telling about himself now rather than the fact he was looking at her. Kiba talked about himself, inflating his ego in the process saying he was the strongest of his class despite not being rookie of the year, and would mop the floor with Naruto. Kuranai didn't care about the boy's dreams, likes hinting at perverted actions, and the dislikes being another guy that smelled of foxes with a hint of ramen and snakes. While normally the latter of such things would disturb Kuranai, the Genjutsu mistress was well aware of Anko training the blonde, and had expressed dislike in the idea of the special Junin training any male since they will only focus on the woman's lack of clothing the whole time. I wish I was with Sasuke kun. He'd say something awesome. Like about family, love, and the desire to meet that special girl with pink hair that will one day fill out in the area. Not like Eno Pig or that Hyuga girl. Thought Sakura with inner Sakura deciding to speak up. We both know what she hides behind that jacket. Bet she's waiting to corner Sasuke kun and then flash him like a pervert. Just like Eno Pig too. Said inner Sakura getting angrier by the second. Your turn now Aburame said Kuranai seeing the boy adjust his glasses for a second and staring down at the ground before speaking with the Junin suspecting the boy had some kind of secret foot fetish. Kuranai made a note to get some bug repellent for her feet. Maybe her legs too. Ew. I hate bugs. I hate dogs. And I hate the people who use them, thought Sakura while inching away from the Aburame having explained briefly what he liked. Well at least he's keeping his pervert-like ways to himself thought Kuranai knowing the boy would at least be more tolerable than the Inazuka and motioned for Sakura to speak. Finally. I'm Haruno Sakura. I like Sasuke-kun. Sasuke-kun's hairstyle. Then there are his eyes and his greatness from being an Uchiha. I dislike Naruto Baka, Ino Pig, the Tai Hyuga girl hiding that rack behind her coat waiting to flash Sasuke-kun, and every other girl trying to get into my Sasuke-kun's. My dream is to one day marry Sasuke kun and rub it in every girl's face, said Sakura while crossing her arms while looking like a pouting child. Well, at least she hates one boy, but likes another, and from one of those snooty clans that think they can do anything. No doubt she thinks the boy is wonderful like every other guy in Konoha claims to be, but in secret they are perverts, and they only want one thing that every girl has. Well, when I'm done with this girl, she's going to hate men, love women and kick every man in Konoha that so much as sneezes in a perverted manner right in the balls," thought Kuranai while internally laughing at her ingenious plan to convert this girl into a man-hating feminist. Pardon me Kuranai-sensei, but you mentioned a real test, and yet we have graduated from the academy. Could you please explain? said Shino driving the woman's thoughts from her head. Oh yes. Well, the test they gave you at the academy is not the official test in having a genin team. And you need to pass my test to see if you're worthy, said Kuranai while slightly pleased and yet angry one of the boys on the team answered such an intelligent question instead of the girl. Damn it. I don't want another test. I just want to be a shinobi already, said Kiba while whining like a little kid not getting his favorite toy. Males. They want something and whine when they don't. How pathetic, thought Kuranai while once again thinking about the negativity of the male gender. What will the test be on? said Sakura curiously. Meet me at training ground number 6 for your test tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock sharp. Don't be late, said Kuranai, 
but she glared at Kiba and Shino while looking at Sakura with nicer eyes before leaving them to their own devices. Like she expected the boys to be late than the girl on the team. Well that Ed. Want to do something? Said Kiba looking at Sakura, then at Shino, and missed the girl's offensive look at being asked out on what she perceived to be a date with the Inazuka. Baka. I will only accept dates from Sasuke-kun. Said Sakura before she punched Kiba right in the face and sent him flying far into the village. Tomorrow will be most. Interesting. Said Shino before leaving the girl. With Team 7, Kakashi finally showed up after several hours of waiting, which proved to be a mistake for the Junin, as Naruto hated tardy people, and made Hitaki pay for it by hitting him with multiple balloons covered in paint. While the Junin didn't like being hit by so much paint, it wasn't like he could complain, as he saw Naruto laughing at his expense while Hinata was stuck between laughing and horror at her crush being punished for it. Fortunately, Naruto wasn't punished sans the insult about the prank being made by a weak child and Kakashi was surprised by Hanada sending a spike of killer intent at him for the insult while the blonde just ignored it. Sasuke didn't care either way, as he was not impressed, too absorbed into himself, and secretly thinking of Neji in an inappropriate manner. When the trio met Kakashi on the roof, he was still covered in paint, but seemed to be taking it rather well with the exception of the rainbow colors that covered his silver hair, and the damage to his perverted book. The Junin could have failed them outright for this stain on his honor, not to mention the honor of Icha Icha Paradise in general, but there was the Sandame to consider, then the Hyuga clan, and the councils for failing the Uchiha all because of his book getting paint on it. Yeah. Like either of the three sides much less all three would even tolerate such a notion. Even Icha Icha was no match for them. Okay you three. I want to know your likes, dislikes, and dreams for the future. You can go first I Mr. Hate Tardy People, said Kakashi pointing at Naruto. Don't be late and I won't recolor you to look like a man, who marches in the gay pride parades, and we'll get along just fine. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, I like ramen, women, shinobi training, and everything good that comes from them. I dislike assholes, most of the village for being filled with them, and trying to be controlled by outside forces. My dreams? My dream is to one day be Hokage, then use that power to make the leaf strong, and punish those that wronged me in humiliating ways said Naruto grinning evilly and then letting out an evil laugh made Kakashi along with Sasuke nervous. Hinata was close to having an orgasm from hearing that his likes were women, but had to fight it off knowing she was in public, and in front of her crush, fantasy lover. Okay. You now, the one with the bow to me I am Kami look on his face, said Kakashi pointing to Sasuke. I am Uchiha Sasuke. I have no likes. I have plenty of dislikes. My dream? None. Just want to get revenge, said Sasuke simply. He's gay, thought Naruto. You don't need Gaydar to see that, said Kayubi grinning at the joke about almost all Uchiha's being gay, but only have wives to keep people from knowing, and have to use the Sharingan to put them in a genjutsu to fool the unsatisfied women. Plain, yet direct. Now you miss his blushes a lot, said Kakashi pointing to Hanada. M my name is H Hyuga Hanada. IIL like cinnamon R rolls, training T to get stronger, and a certain. A certain someone that I, I hope will recognize me. I dislike mean people. My dream is to. Is to. I can't say, said Hanada bowing her head at the end while blushing even more and trying to hold back the nosebleed. Well that was interesting, but the real test will begin tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, and see if your team can become the new team 7. Oh and don't eat anything or else you will throw up said Kakashi seeing Hanada look a bit frightened, Naruto was curious about the test, and Sasuke was intrigued. Yet Kakashi felt a shiver run up his spine at the Uchiha's look. I'm out of here. I have to. Train, said Sasuke before heading off leaving Naruto and Hanada alone. Anti-sociable jerk, said Naruto while looking at the direction Sasuke went. W we could get to know each other, said Hanada inching closer to Naruto while the blonde looked at her and smirk. How very true. But let's not do this here Hanada chan There are far too many ears and eyes. Let's go somewhere much more. Private, said Naruto seeing the Hyuga girl's face light up and nod quickly. The boy moves quickly, thought Kayubi grinning at the boy's move knowing using the submission eye would just be overkill, but overkill was Naruto's style, and anything less wouldn't make the blonde the shinobi he was now. Follow me, said Naruto, as he took her hand, and they vanished from sight. Inazuka clan home. Mom. I'm home. 
said Kiba, as he sat down at the table, and sighed at such a worthless day involving his Junin sensei. Mom's not here runt. She's out on business. So how was the meeting with your team and Junin sensei? Did you tell them all about your likes, dislikes, and your dream not to wet the bed three times a week, said Hannah, as she knew her baby brother had a bit of a bed wetting problem growing up, and being the big sister she was had never let him live it down. In the privacy of their own home of course. Shut up. If you must know, the meeting was just all right, and our Junin sensei was about average, said Kiba while seeing Hannah raise an eyebrow at him. Average? That's all. Your Junin sensei is Yuhi Kuranai. From what I've heard, she's quite skilled in genjutsu, and can help you in that aspect, said Hannah while seeing Kiba make a face. Are you kidding? I've got the worst teacher. She has this look in her eyes that screams out, man hater, and wants to kick any guy within arm's length in the balls, said Kiba seeing Hannah raise her eyebrow again in the smirk she had growing. Well I don't see the problem since your balls haven't descended yet, said Hannah leaving the room while laughing at Kiba's face now turned red with anger and embarrassment. Kami must hate me. Why else would I have a teasing older sister for a thought Kiba while wondering what the deal was with his Junin sensei? What's this I hear about your balls still not descending? At least not fully, said Sume coming into the house and saw her son bash his head against the table. Mom. Please. Not so loud. What if Naruto Baka overhears? He'll never let me live it down and no one else from my class, said Kiba seeing Sume raise an eyebrow at him. What is it with you always trying to compete with the Uzumaki Gaki? said Sume, as she heard some interesting things about the kid from Anko on account of her training him due to the Baka Academy teachers messing it from the start. Well he got rookie of the year and I'm somewhere in the middle. How the hell can I keep up with him? said Kiba, as he smacked his head against the table repeatedly, and missed his mother's sweat drop rolling down the back of her head. Well aside from killing what little you have of a brain, I could talk to him, and find out how he was able to get so good," said Sume seeing Kiba look at her with the ever clear wide-eyed horror face a son shows their mother to make them know it is a bad idea. No. If you do that, then Naruto will tease me to no end, and say I need my mother for everything," said Kiba fearfully while Sume just smirked. Oh, so you're a big boy now. Just because your genin doesn't mean anything, as you still have to pass your one final test by your Junin sensei in order to stay a genin said Sume seeing Kiba grumbling a bit. Yeah. Well until then, I'm still legally adult, I remember that much from Aruka's boring classes, and I deserve to be treated like one, said Kiba seeing Sume narrow her eyes at her son's words. If that's how you feel, then you can wash your own bedsheets when you've drenched them in your piss, and hang them out to dry for all to see the yellow stains, said Sume seeing Kiba blushing red from embarrassment knowing his mother had taken great pains to conceal such a humiliating thing. Come on mom. You know what I mean. How can I one day take over the clan, if you still see me like a kid, or a runt of the family? Said Naruto seeing Sume smirk at him. Who said you were going to run the family? Hana is older and far wiser than you, said Sume seeing Kiba look at her in horror. If Hana took over the clan, Kiba would have no protection for his sister's evil ways of humiliating him, and he'd be under her thumb until his death. B but Hana is cruel to me all the time. Can't you have her married off to some jerk from another clan or noble in another country? said Kiba seeing his mother glaring at him for such a stupid remark. Watch your brat. Your sister will take control of the clan if and when I say so. She still has plenty of time to decide or find herself a man without the desire to run our family. As for your problem with the Uzumaki Gaki, I think I'll talk to him, and see what Anko san saw in him to train in the first place, said Sume heading out and Kiba looking ready to faint. Please Kami, I don't ask you for much, but please don't let my mom embarrass me, and make me a laughing stock of my clan," said Kiba before he let out a shriek of pain on account of Hannah appearing behind him and giving him a mean wedgie. She won't runt. That's my job after all, said Hannah gleefully, as she pulled the underwear up more, and more until achieving the goal of in giving Kiba an atomic wedgie. Damn you Hannah, said Kiba in a squeaky voice while trying to see properly. Naruto's apartment. Hanada had a hard time trying not to pass out in Naruto's apartment simply by being in the apartment while the boy of her dreams both clean and naughty sitting right next to her. There were so many things Hanada wanted to ask him, as to how he got so strong, why he wanted her here, alone, and in his apartment of all places to talk. Part of her perverted mind was saying he took her here to have his way with her, 
as it was always meant to be, and another more rational side was saying Naruto wanted to be teammates for now while being the Hyuga girl's lover later. So Hinata-chan, what's it like being in a large and powerful clan? Said Naruto starting off formal, polite, and courteous to the girl. I it's okay. T there is a lot o of ss stiffness within T the clan. What I mean to s say is we d don't r really be bond that well, said Hanada blushing a bit more for the perverted thoughts in her head growing more and more out of control. Really? Shame. I wish I had such a large family growing up. Most people hate me for something that's not my fault. You don't hate me, do you Hanada chan said Naruto in an innocent voice filled with hope for a positive reaction. Never. I could never hate you, said Hanada moving unknowingly moving closer to him. That's good to hear. I'm glad we are teammates Hanada-chan. Can you imagine Sakura being on our team, Arkiba? said Naruto shivering at the thought and Hanada doing the same. W we could be be more than teammates Naruto-kun, said Hanada in a suggesting tone. You mean true friends? said Naruto wishing to play the dense person a little bit longer just to see how far Hanada would take this. I I was thinking more than friends too, said Hanada pushing her fingertips together. Really? You mean like us being a couple? I don't think your clan would approve, said Naruto seeing Hanada fighting back her shyness to talk to him in a now or never like state. We can see each other in secret. My father doesn't pay much attention to me. In fact, the Hyuga elders have been having the female members of the clan teach me certain things about being a member of our clan, and that of a woman, said Hanada feeling herself turn red again. What do you mean? said Naruto with actual curiosity. The Hyuga elders want to move me into the branch family, where they want to have me married off to another stronger male of the clan, and produce children with him. To bring about that maximum potential of that happening, the Hyuga elders have several females skilled in intimacy, and pleasing of the male body using ours. If I were to fail in being a genin or even make it to becoming chunin in a few years, I will be put into the branch family with the cage bird seal my cousin wears on his forehead to ensure my place among the ranks of the clan, said Hanada seeing Naruto frown at that. Oh hell no, not this girl, she's mine, thought Naruto with Kayubi agreeing. Me thinks you should speak to Hiyashi about arranging something for her while using your eyes to further, insist. On such a move, said Kayubi knowing this girl was going to be a bombshell of a knockout when she got older and the fox would be pissed off to no end if Hanada went to some unappreciative baka. Don't worry Hanada-chan. I can help you get stronger and I know a special junin with the skills needed to help teach you after we're done with our team training, said Naruto seeing Hanada's eyes widen in surprise. You mean. Dot you mean she would help me? said Hanada seeing Naruto smile. Of course. I'm her star pupil. Granted I'm her only one, but Anko-chan is actually kind of nice when you get to know her, and past all the crazy. I love to blood when I cut people's faces habit she has, said Naruto hearing Hanada giggle and saw her blushing more no doubt at the idea of ing his face. When can I meet her? said Hanada knowing enough about the woman that she didn't live locally in terms of housing within the leaf. After our test tomorrow. She like you I know it said Naruto pulling her closer to him and saw the girl was lit up like a Christmas tree. It's now or never, him, his cheek, his, hell go south of the border if you need to stake your claim. Just get him, said inner perverted Hanada having decided to let herself be known. And with those words in mind, Hanada snapped in terms of self-restraint, as she leapt onto the waist of the blonde boy of her dreams, and ed him passionately. Surprised a bit by her sudden boldness, Naruto allowed Hanada to continue ing him, and put his hands on her hips. While the two engaged in tonsil hockey, Naruto felt the girl's hips gyrate against him, and the blonde realized how suppressed the girl was in terms of her feelings for him. One of his hands went up the back of her jacket, through her shirt, and felt the designs of a seal there that made the Hyuga girl stiffen before stopping their heated making out. Hanada-chan. What's this? It feels like some kind of seal said Naruto seeing Hanada look at him sadly before getting off of him. The Hyuga elders had the women in my clan, who were training me in the UAL arts to enhance my body using ancient Hyuga techniques, and those passed down from woman to girl. My mother was also enhanced since she was a girl before marrying my father, but I inherited it from her before the enhancements began, hence why I look so developed now, and to further ensure my father doesn't know about the elders' plan they they have a seal on my body that keeps my true physical body from being seen, 
said Hanada before turning around and raising the back of her shirt for him to see the seal there. And if you tell your father, said Naruto running his hand gently over seal and her skin. They'll still do what they plan to do anyway since my sister Hanabi has a chance to be the clan head when she's older. Recently father has had me spar with her and I've had to hold back knowing that if I don't then my secret could be revealed. It could destroy the clan from within and I'm scared, said Hanada her mood to be with Naruto practically shot to hell, but a spark of it recovered when his hands wrapped around her waist, and pulled the girl close. Don't worry Hanada-chan. You seem to be forgetting just who you're talking to here, and what I'm known in being. I'm Uzumaki Naruto. The most unpredictable guy in all of the leaf. I'll help you think of something, said Naruto into her ear and felt the Hyuga girl shiver. I knew I could count on you Naruto-kun, said Hanada, as she blushed at feeling a certain thing from Naruto shifting a bit around her rear, and once more felt heat swell within. Of course you can, but I would like to see your true form, and in return I'll share a secret with you that only no one aside from myself in our generation knows about said Naruto moving seeing the girl nod and then moved away from him before putting a hand on the seal at her back. Physical manipulation. Release. Said Hanada while going through a few hand signs before her body began to waver, shifting like it was moving through dimensions, or a genjutsu. When it ended, Naruto's jaw dropped from its hinges, and couldn't believe his eyes with Kayubi doing the same. To be blunt, Hayuga Hanada now looked like she would in a few years, as she was taller, long hair, firm ass, and a bust that could give Anko a run for her money. Kit, you know how proud I am of you, right? said Kayubi seeing Naruto mentally nod. Holy crap! Hanada chan you look! Dot you look! Incredible! said Naruto seeing the girl blushing at his praise. Thank you Naruto-kun, said Hanada, as even her voice sounded why to Naruto's ears, and it made him even more excited. But alas he needed to tell her about Kayubi and it made Naruto nervous. Relax Kit. If the Hyuga somehow rejects you, then the submission eye can change her mind, and then some good old fashioned makeup will follow to make things all the better, said Kayubi knowing that this girl was not going to get away from his vessel at all come hell or high water. Okay Hanada-chan. You've shared your secret. Now I need to share mine. What do you know about Kayubi? Said Naruto seeing Hanada look at him questioningly. He was killed by the Yandaimi over twelve years ago. Why? said Hanada seeing Naruto take off his shirt and blushed at the sight of his muscles only to see him mold chakra to show her the seal on his. I wish. The fox live Hanada-chan. The Yandaimi sealed up the fox inside me and the villagers have hated me ever since, said Naruto seeing Hanada look at him, then the seal, and then back at him in shock. Does the fox influence you? said Hanada seeing Naruto shake his head no. Nope. What you see is all Uzumaki Naruto. Just think of me as a living prison, warden, guard, and jail cell all wrapped in one, said Naruto seeing Hanada nodding her head, but was also curious about the seal, and stepped closer to him. See can I touch it? The seal I mean? said Hanada trying to stop the perverse side of her from coming out. Sure. The fox can't do anything, said Naruto while hearing the fox scoff at his words, which both knew weren't entirely accurate, but for the sake of the girl in front of the boy, the Kayubi was willing to be silent, and let its vessel get some. Reaching out, Hanada touched the seal on Naruto's stomach, pressing her fingers against his hard muscled body, and blushed in the simple fact that she was touching him in the first place. Her inner perverted self was telling her to move a little lower to his and pull them down to free what she desired to see. What the Hyuga had only seen through the Byakugan during her glances, stalking, and naughty dreams that made her want him more. The seal is so complex and yet, Beautiful in its own way, said Hanada, as she ran her hands through it, and then stood straight again with her eyes on Naruto. There is one more thing you need to know Hanada-chan. One last secret I feel I can trust you with, said Naruto seeing Hanada focus entirely on him. What? What secret could you have other than Kayubi? Said Hanada wondering what else could impress her in regards to the blonde. Just that I have a bloodline limit. It's called, Submission Eye said Naruto activating his eye power and Hayuga Hanada was completely at his mercy having been too shocked to counter it. What's happening? thought Hanada while her mind tried to fight off this power, but could not, and yet a part of her just said, go with it, since Naruto was the one doing this. Hayuga Hanada, you are within my power. As such, anything I say goes when we are together in the privacy of my home alone, or when your secret harem sisters are with us for perverted reasons. 
I'm not going to alter much about you Hanada-chan, except that in order to prevent yourself from being sent to the branch family of your clan, you need to stop holding back, and show your strength. I will talk to your father and, convince, him of arranging for you to marry into my clan that no one except a few know about and keep you safe. Do you understand? said Naruto seeing Hanada nod in understanding. Yes Naruto-kun, said Hanada simply. Good. Another thing is, I need you to stop stuttering and being shy when around me. I think it's cute, but I also like how you have a passionate side underneath it, and it really makes me love you all the more. Understand? said Naruto seeing even in her hypnotic state, Hanada still blushed at his praise, and he would have laughed if not for the fact her programming was important to finish. Kit. I sense someone coming. Better hurry up, said Kayubi while cursing the person responsible for this intrusion. Now Hanada-chan, I'm going to turn my bloodline off, and when I do you will remember everything I just told you. However, you cannot tell anyone, who doesn't know about this, and keep it a well-guarded secret for now, said Naruto before ending his bloodline's hold over her and not a moment sooner due to a knock at the door. Making a shushing sound, Naruto motioned for Hanada to put her disguise on, and her jacket though it was clear the Hyuga girl didn't want to. Still, it was for appearances in front of anyone and the person at the door could be someone Naruto didn't trust. When the blonde opened the door he was surprised to see Inazuka Sume standing there with a grin on her face, and whistled at the sight of his apartment. Damn Gaki. I knew the Sandame splurged on your apartment complex after getting control of it, but this looks pretty nice, and makes me want to leave my clan home to live in a place like this, said Sume slightly surprised to see Hinata standing there, but didn't see anything bad from what she could tell, and saw Naruto raising an eyebrow at her. You're Kiba's mom if I'm not mistake, right? Said Naruto seeing Sume was actually impressed he knew her. So my son talks about me a lot, huh? Said Sume glad she was being talked about by her son. Yeah, but I don't know if you want to hear what he said, and make you angry, said Naruto seeing Sume scowl at the idea of her son talking bad about her. My son may be an idiot at times, but I don't think even he would be stupid enough to speak badly about his mother considering all the dirt I have on him, and his childhood said Sume growling almost dangerously at Naruto. Oh, Kiba's that much of an idiot from what I've seen, but I'm being rude, and talking about your son out here where people can hear us. Come inside, said Naruto letting the woman into his apartment while secretly eyeing Hanada that she had to leave and that they would do things later. Excuse me Sume-sama. I have to go home before my father sends out branch family members of the clan to hunt me down said Hanada bowing respectfully to the woman and then leaving after giving Naruto a quick on the cheek before running off. Smooth Gaki. You got a Hyuga girl after you. Better keep it from Hiyashi though or else he'll use that gentle fist on something you don't want struck, said Sume while she felt a strong amount of pheromones had been released recently in a flux of sorts and knew it came from those two. Kit. She's going to suspect something sooner, or later due to her Inazuka senses. You have to turn her now said Kayubi knowing once Sume put things together, it would spell disaster, and needed the woman under the boy's thumb. I can handle Hiyashi. I have a move no Hayuga or even Inazuka for that matter can resist when it comes to me, said Naruto seeing Sume raise an eyebrow at his boasting and was now seeking to challenge him on it. Really? And what move is that? said Sume leaning down to face Naruto, who just smirked a devious smirk, and made the Inazuka feel like a dog caught in a trap set by a mischievous fox. This. Submission I. Said Naruto putting Sume under his control and the woman felt herself surrendering to the power of the dojutsu. Seeing Sume was now his, Naruto began to issue his hypnotic suggestion to the woman, and decided to enjoy the rest of the day with her after learning she wasn't needed much in the village today. With Anko hours later, Anko skipped merrily to Naruto's apartment knowing Yoshino was still hashing things out with Shikaku about the trial separation and staying someplace where she could be her own woman. The special Junin knew it would be a feuding bloodbath of the figurative sort and while Anko thought it would be nice to see it firsthand, there was a far greater desire running through her body. More specifically her loins. Walking up to her lover, master's room, Anko used the key she had for the room Naruto had given her and Ayame a copy of to get in with the cover when asking the Hokage for them being they were people he could trust. Quickly shutting the door, the special Junin heard the sound of Naruto getting his freak on his the bedroom, which made Anko all the more excited in seeing a show, and being a part of one later. To her surprise, it wasn't Ayame that Naruto was ing from behind like a in heat, 
but Inazuka Sume wearing a collar on her neck with a chain in Naruto's hand while he kept thrusting into the woman's. Sume had a ball gag in her, hands bound behind her back, and was drooling through the ball gag at being into submission by the blonde stud. Well I see you got yourself quite milf there stud, said Anko seeing Sume was too lost in pleasure to even notice her at the moment. Oh you know me Anko-chan. I wouldn't be me if I didn't bag myself at least one milf for my harem. Besides, we both know you've wanted to have at least one romp with this, and see what Sume-chan is like in bed, said Naruto speeding up his thrust and let out a roar before Ming into her while the Inazuka matriarch cried out from the ball gag with a muffled howl of pleasure from her own orgasm. Are you going to go after her daughter too? She's a few years older than you, but still has a nice pair like her mother, and an ass I know you'd love to, said Anko while disrobing and then walking towards Naruto pulling out of Sume. If she's anything like her mother, then Hana-chan will fall in line, and join my growing family, and give Kiba Baka control of the Inazuka clan. Sume-chan was most talkative about Kiba's problems regarding his bed problems, and his sister's constant attacks on his male lifestyle said Naruto while seeing Anko grinning knowing he would use such dirt on Kiba and keep the dog boy in line. Hence the ball gag, said Anko getting on her knees and began to on Naruto's while loving the taste of the combined s that coated it and covered it with her. That and the woman knows how to howl when she s. Honestly, I don't know when was the last time she got ed, but it's clear such an event hasn't been done in a long time, and I've been the only man inside her since after Kiba Baka was born said Naruto before groaning at Anko's expert blowjob while running his hands through her hair while the special Junin used those great jugs of hers. Well you do have that effect on women whether they've gotten any in a while or not Naruto-kun, said Anko ing the head several times and then ing on it while her tongue moved its way down the shaft. Oh shit. I love it when you do that Anko-chan and yeah I think I do. Now prepare for my because I'm going to release right into your my snake said Naruto while he bobbed her head up and down a few more times before letting free his for the special Junin to swallow. Think you can me now like you did her, said Anko knowing the boy had stamina, but she didn't know how long he'd been screwing Sume, and the special Junin didn't want her lover to try performing at a level he was unable to after working over one of his other girls. Oh Anko-chan. How you wound me. Have you forgotten just who I am? said Naruto his eyes flashing crimson and grinned a devilish grin. Oh yeah. My mistake, said Anko with a cheesy grin. Damn right it is and you are going to pay for it, said Naruto his grin becoming more evil with Anko becoming slightly fearful. Mercy, said Anko letting out a squeak when he picked her up and threw the woman onto the bed next to a still out of it in Azuka Sume. Not a chance. Don't worry Anko-chan. You'll be in good company when this is over and can have a chance to have some fun time with Sume-chan later said Naruto smacking Anko's ass and making the woman yelp in surprise before she whimpered under his now gentle massage of the cheek he struck. Now comes the pleasure and the sore as a result of it, thought Anko before letting out a cry of pleasure from Naruto thrusting into her hole repeatedly and roughly knowing it was just the way she liked it with him. Oh yes. Anko would be sore tomorrow. If one were to somehow peek into Naruto's bedroom in his apartment, one would think he was the craziest, and yet luckiest sob on the whole goddamn planet. Why? Simply because he had not one, but two hot women in his bed on the left, and right of him while snuggling up against his body. Lucky bastard. Damn. I haven't felt satisfied like that since. Well ever. Masturbation and vibrators got nothing on this gaki, said Sume wide awake, feeling sore, and yet feeling good all at the same time with Anko in the same boat. Oh yeah. He's practically spoiled and broken us with that tool of his down there said Anko ing Naruto's shoulder and ing it sensually. Speaking of which, it seems a certain someone's tool is now up, and wants to be used by us again, said Sume seeing Naruto's erection springing up under the sheets. Poor Naruto-kun. After satisfying the two of us like he did, it's only fair we reward him for his efforts, and show him our appreciation, said Anko smiling at Sume, who smiled back, and the two descended down to Naruto's waist. Oh Kami. That feels so good, said Naruto, as he felt the combined sensation of the two women assaulting his with their tongues, s, and hands. The combined assault from them overwhelmed him and he came all over the two women currently under the sheets. Think of it as a thanks you for cleaning out my gutters Naruto-kun, said Sume with a smile on her face when she reappeared again from out of the sheets with Anko doing the same. That's one hell of a thank you. Join me in the shower you two and I will give my, you're welcome, in return 
said Naruto with a perverted grin and in a flash the three were soon in the shower with the blonde make good on his word in giving the two women a, you're welcome, knowing he had plenty of time to screw them before going to the team meeting for their official test by Kakashi since Anko had told him the man was always late. With team seven hours later, when Naruto arrived, he saw Hinata was in her disguised state, but less shy, and standing straighter than what she normally did in public. Sasuke being the broody just like always had his ass sitting under a tree just, you guessed it, brooding, and thinking of ways to kill Itachi. And possibly considering the raping of Hayuga Neji if the boy didn't reply to his secret admirer letters soon. Hi everybody, said Naruto seeing his two teammates look at him and only one continue eye contact with a smile on her face. No not Sasuke, the other one, the actual girl of the team. Good morning Naruto-kun, said Hanada as she saw him smile happily at her, and of course the girl knew why Naruto was so happy this particular morning. She didn't need to use her eyes to know he got laid. Somehow, the girls Naruto had used his eyes on had formed a special link with each other, knowing who was among the girls within the village were a part of Naruto's secret harem sisterhood, and who among them had gotten laid by the blonde. Even though Hinata had been recently turned, her affection for Naruto gave the girl a strong connection to the sisterhood, and even more so when the seal hiding her true form came off. Good morning Hanada-chan. Sleep well? Get enough to eat this morning, said Naruto, as he had a shadow clone visit Hanada in the morning, sneaking into her room, nearly getting some in the process, which was stopped by Neji by making his presence known, and after the blonde hid under the bed was able to inform the girl about Kakashi's way of doing things with the genin teams he selected. Yes. I am well rested and ready to pass our test, said Hanada while wishing she could have eaten Naruto's shadow clone that morning, but her cousin had ruined everything to make that possible, and made a mental note to somehow humiliate her cousin for it. Maybe she could put a bucket of water in his room and make him wet the bed. Excellent. How about you Sasuke? Ready to seize the day? said Naruto seeing the Uchiha shrug and brood again. None of your business loser, said Sasuke wishing their sensei would show up while ignoring the anger in Hanada's eyes. Don't mind him Hanada-chan. We have more than enough skill to pick up the slack should the Teme not be able to handle himself, said Naruto in a whispery voice, which made the Hyuga girl giggle, and saw the glare the Uchiha was sending since it was clear he heard the blonde. And what will happen after we pass? said Hanada in a whispered voice near Naruto's ear while keeping it out of range of the Uchiha. I'll think of something, said Naruto grinning slightly while Hanada had to fight back the nosebleed she wanted to let out. Good thing too because Kakashi had finally arrived and was ready to start the test. Poor Kakashi. If only the Junin realized just how bad a situation he was truly in right now. Of course, the man had given the trio a rundown of bells, fighting him with the intent to kill, and all that stuff he told the other genin teams sent his way. When Kakashi told them the test started, Naruto along with Hinata hid together while Sasuke hid in his own dark corner of a tree and began planning his moves while his teammates did a joint plan of their own. Kakashi just stood there waiting for them to move and noticed a tumbleweed roll by. A tumbleweed? Here? Okay, who has been practicing environment altering jutsus again? I know for a fact the Sandame banned such things after an Akamichi turned one of the training grounds into an all-you-can-eat sherbet ice cream land. So many children became diabetic that day. Not to mention the loss of teeth in the cavities, thought Kakashi as he made a mental note to check on that, and what else was going on around him. Ready Hanada-chan, said Naruto whispered to Hyuga girl while he looked from his spot in the trees at Kakashi while Hanada used her Byakugan to again look through his. Oh yes. I am very ready, said Hanada now drooling hungrily at the sight the dojutsu bloodline had granted before the sane part of her mind knocked out the perverted side of the girl and took control for the moment while telling its other half to wait until later when there were no witnesses before the girl moved quietly into position. Here goes nothing. Icha Icha Paradise S, said Naruto leaping down from his spot in the trees and saw Kakashi snap his neck towards him with a narrow eye. What did you just say? said Kakashi hoping his ears deceived him. Anko-san told me how you just love Icha Icha Paradise and how you would defend its so-called, greatness, to the death. Well I say Icha Icha Paradise s. Dot ass, said Naruto with a grin that made Kakashi get angry that some gaki had the nerve to even say such. Such horrible blasphemy. How dare you. This book is pure literature gold. 
forged from the fires of epic perverse pleasure no man would dare trade for anything, said Kakashi bringing out his book and cradling it like the book was a newborn child. So if a hot woman wanted to your brains out, you'd shoot her down, and read what the woman wanted to do to you. Are you secretly gay? said Naruto seeing Kakashi get even angrier. I am not gay, said Kakashi giving the boy an evil glare. Well you just said you'd turn down anything and my example fit the description. Either you're an idiot, or you're secretly in the closet gay. Not that there is anything wrong with that, but to lie to people, and hide it using such smut is just. Wrong, said Naruto since he learned from Anko that making someone angry can make them sloppy and making them act sloppy was the best way to take someone down. I'm not gay, yelled Kakashi, who was looking to have an all-out seizure, or heart attack. Then you're an idiot. Now Hinata-chan, said Naruto knowing the plan had worked. What? said Kakashi sensing someone behind him and turned slightly to see Hinata come out from the ground before hit the Junin with an uppercut. To his balls. I'd say I'm sorry, but. I just don't like your kind, said Hinata sweetly before taking the two bells and then skipped over to Naruto before giving them to him with on his cheek soon following. I think we passed. What say you Kakashi? said Naruto seeing Kakashi look up at them in pain and nod his head while whimpering. Yes. You passed. Congratulations. Aid Kakashi in a high squeaky voice. That's it. I didn't get to do anything, it's not fair, thought Sasuke, as he wanted to do something to show the greatness of his near extinct clan, and now unable to do so now with his teammates claiming victory. Great news. Now we celebrate, said Naruto with a fist shooting into the air. I know how I want to celebrate, thought Hinata with perverted things running through her mind involving herself and Naruto. Sadly, her family's all-seeing eyes would notice if she was no longer a virgin on account of the females of the clan doing such thorough checks, and Hinata knew each woman that did such scans were loyal to the elders. Up for some ramen Hinata-chan. My treat and I'll throw in some cinnamon rolls, said Naruto seeing Hinata look happy at the news since she loved cinnamon rolls like Naruto loved ramen. That and it was, in some strange and unusual way, an aphrodisiac to her. I'd love to, said Hinata, as the two left leaving a still whimpering in pain Kakashi, and a mind frozen Sasuke wondering what he could do now. In Azuka clan home sometime later, Mom. Where were you? said Kiba having passed his sensei's strange teamwork based test while using Genjutsu on the three of them individually to find out if they would help the other. Only Shino had caught on and strangely enough. Only Shino helped his teammates. Their sensei had wanted to fail them but Sakura had shown such promise in hating all men around her with the exception of the Uchiha, the female Junin knew it was imperative that the team pass, and secretly teach the Haruno girl the power of feminism. None of your business runt. I run this home and if I want to leave for any number of hours then I damn well do just that, said Sume having taken a long hard shower long after her time with Naruto that morning was over to remove the genin's scent from her body should any among the clan smell that young shinobi's scent. I know. But Hannah is being a to me while you were gone, and ah, said Kiba before getting a kick in the ass that sent him into a wall. I'm being a to you am I? Maybe I should strip you and hang you in front of the female hot springs for the girls there to laugh at your situation in being a runt in more than one way, said Hannah cracking her knuckles and smiling wolfishly at male in Azuka. Enough. Both of you. I come home after some much needed relaxing personal business and here you two are fighting like two dogs over a bone. You two may be adults, but that doesn't mean I'm not too old to bend the two of you over, and spanking your asses like children, said Sume seeing the two gulp and nod their heads in understanding. Sorry mom, said both Hannah and Kiba at the same time. That's better. Now from my understanding, you Kiba just passed your team's test with Yuhi Kurenai, and are now a part of team 8, said Sume seeing Kiba puff out his like he had made such an even happen all by himself. Sure did. I can't wait to rub it into Naruto Baka's face and use it to swoon Hanada Cha'a, said Kiba when he was kicked in the face this time by Sume. Don't insult Naruto again or I'll strip you in front of the female section of the hot springs and shove something unpleasant up your ass, said Sume growling at her son while Hana just watched stunned at what just happened. Mom. Why are you standing up for the Uzumaki kid? said Hana finally while seeing the look her mother now shot back before relooking at Kiba. Because the kid's got too much shit done to him in his life and I will not have my own son do anything mean to him so long as I'm clan head. Also, 
Don't let your genin status get to your lower head Kiba because I have it on good authority that Naruto's sensei has never passed a team until today, and has once again set a first in the village, said Sume, as she saw her son whine at the unfairness of it all, and put her foot down on Kiba's to make him shut up. There is something going on here. Mom wouldn't just defend the Uzumaki brat with such vehemence out of the honor and pride of the Inazuka clan. There is something more to it than that. I'll have to keep an eye on her later, thought Hannah while outwardly smirking at her brother's act of submissive behavior in front of their mother. With Naruto and Hanada. At the moment, Hanada in her body's unsealed state was doing something she had wanted to do with Naruto in a long time, and that was playing tonsil hockey with the blonde. The two had eaten their meal, talked to Ayame, who revealed herself to Hanada as one of the secret harem sister, and were currently in a private spot in the forest of one of the training grounds. They were far away from prying eyes, ears, and any other organs a body may have to spy on them while they ed the other with a passion. Their hands weren't idle either, as Naruto had unzipped Hanada's coat, and had one of his hands up her thin shirt to grope the impressive bust the Hyuga girl had acquired early on through the physical therapy. The Hyuga elders ordered her to undergo for their own plans. As for Hanada, she was loving the pleasure Naruto was giving her, but just as he had his hands groping her body, she was doing the same to him with her own hands, and loving the feel of his hard muscles from countless hours of training. She gasped when one of his hands went into her, gently touching the fabric that was her panties, and indirectly the most sacred of treasures her body possessed. No doubt Naruto knew how wet she was getting from his hand groping her and now even more with his other hand making the Hyuga moan of pleasure spike in volume. Deciding to return the favor, Hinata let one of her hands travel to his, undoing the zipper, and reaching for the prize that awaited her. She felt him tense at her touch at first before moaning at the stroking the Hyuga girl's skilled hands were doing to his rising and felt his fingers touching her through the panties part the fabric to touch Hanada more directly. I want you so damn bad Naruto-kun. I want you inside of me. I wish you could take this thing in me silly, said Hanada into his ear while Naruto moved to her neck and giving the girl hickey that would be hidden easily under the heavy coat. Don't worry. I'll talk to Hiyashi soon. Until then, just do what you're doing, and I'll do what I'm doing. Speaking of which, said Naruto touching her clit and channeled a bit of chakra into his finger in a swirling motion with the end result causing Hanada to shake almost violently into an orgasm. Oh Kami, said Hanada, as she found herself holding him while feeling his hand keep most her s contained, and watched Naruto take that hand out before ing the off each section of it. Yummy. Just like I knew you would be, said Naruto simply. No fair. I want to taste you. I will taste you, said Hanada with determination before she fell to her knees and took his into her to show Naruto the skills she had been taught to please a man that would one day be her husband. Though she was sure the husband himself would not be one of her choosing, but Hanada was positive that such an event of her doing this to anyone except Naruto was non existent now, and that he would use his power to change such a life. Hanada wanted Naruto to be the only man she ever did this kind of thing to and with his submission eye there was a distinct possibility that this would be a repeat thing. Damn Hanada chan you're doing an incredible job, said Naruto, as he felt his eyes roll in the back of his head, and put his hand on the back of her head while enjoying the sounds of her working his. When my female teachers instructed me, they said I should picture my future husband when I did this during this in practice, and I would always pictured you. I will only do this with you Naruto-kun said Hanada stroking him lovingly when she spoke and then back to bobbing her head with his in her once more. Damn straight she will. I am so speaking to her father after this, thought Naruto before he let out a small cry of pleasure and came into the girls with Hanada using her eyes the whole time so she wasn't surprised. After swallowing his load, Hanada made sure his was cleaned up before putting it safely away, and gently zipping up his while Naruto himself handed back the heavy coat after she reactivated the seal checking the other for any signs of their fun, which they did not have any for anyone to see, the two merely reintegrated themselves back into the village, and act like nothing had happened. Hyuga clan compound later that day. Naruto smiled inwardly, as he was requested into Hanada clan home, and knew that vixen of Hyuga girl had told Hiyashi about him being her teammate to get this audience. From what Hanada had told Naruto of her father in general, Hiyashi was a man, who wished to evaluate anything that could be a pro, Arkan when it came to the Hyuga clan regardless of that something was being either possibility on purpose or by accident. Naturally, given Naruto's status in being a demon vessel, he was pretty sure the man saw the blonde more of a con, than a pro to his daughter, and wished to see if that belief was indeed correct. 
Hiyashi already knew Sasuke was on their team, but Naruto knew that the Hyuga clan head cared little for the brooding bastard, and would only deal with the last Uchiha, accordingly should the need arise. Thank you for coming at my request Naruto-san, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto was not dressed in such peasant-like clothing, but something respectful, and maybe even worthy of wearing in his clan home. Of course Hiyashi-sama. One does not turn away a request from such a powerful clan like yours unless they have a death sentence on their heads, said Naruto being respectful to the man while inwardly waiting for the right time to strike since Hiyashi was clearly on guard for any kind of act against his person. Indeed. Such wise words for one so young. Your time with that. Strange woman has not made you crude like her, but that's not why I requested you here, and I am not about to insult you for your choice in secret teachers during your time at the academy. I ask you to come here because of Hanada, as it has come to my attention that my eldest of my two children has been placed on Genin Team 7 with you, and some of the elders have expressed to me concerns about this given your status here in Konoha, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto nod since the Sandame had made it clear in the last meeting with the clan heads that the blonde knew of his status thanks to Mizuki. Or at least they thought was because of Mizuki. They think I'll turn on Hanada chan and do horrible things to her person before I destroy what's left said Naruto simply seeing Hiyashi nod while watching the boy with carefully calculating eyes. Correct, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto scoff at the notion. With all due respect Hiyashi-sama, but those elders are idiots, and pardon me for saying this but. Dot you will become one to if you believe that garbage, said Naruto seeing Hiyashi's eyes narrow slightly. You have chosen your words well boy. One might think you just insulted me, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto narrow his eyes back. Do you believe the elders and their words? Because only if you do then will I have been insulting, said Naruto seeing Hiyashi's eyes lessen in terms of narrowing. No I don't. However, a father must always keep a watchful eye on things when it comes to one's daughter, and even more when she's from a high-ranking clan such as ours, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto nod in understanding. I understand. You just want to make sure Hinata-chan doesn't get backstabbed or put in harm's way by those around her. I can promise you right now that such a thing will never happen with me and if you'll excuse the blunt rudeness of my words Hiyashi-sama I'd sooner cut off my nuts than let anyone hurt Hanada if it could be avoided, said Naruto since the Hyuga girl meant a lot to him regardless of the submission I being used to bring her into the fold. You speak your words with a great deal of conviction. A lot like someone I used to know back when I was still a genin. Still, it takes more than that to calm the worries of a man like myself and that of the elders wishing for an excuse to have me speak to the Hokage about changing the teams, said Hiyashi seeing Naruto smirk. I'm sure they do. Still, given what I am, wouldn't it be better if Hanada is on my team, as my friend, and not the other way around? Who better to protect her from harm than the vessel of the Kayubi? Said Naruto seeing Hiyashi nod at what he was saying. Agreed. I am entrusting you to protect my eldest daughter from any harm should such an event ever arise and there will be consequences should you fail, said Hiyashi narrowing his eyes at a still calm Naruto. Then I have nothing to worry about, right Hiyashi-sama? Still, there is one more thing you should know about, and it concerns Hinata-chan, said Naruto seeing Hiyashi's own curiosity get the better of him and leaned closer to the blonde. Know what? said Hiyashi before he saw Naruto's eyes change before his own. This. Submission I, said Naruto using his power to overcome the usually immune from outside influence dojutsu bloodline the Hyuga clan possessed. Naruto now had Hiyashi under his power and the blonde was going to use this moment to the best of his ability. Hokage Tower two weeks later, Naruto was so glad he was getting laid or getting oral by the different girls in his life because without them right now he'd go crazy with all the so-called missions Team 7 had been doing. Picking up at weeds, mending fences, painting fences, helping the Nara clan with some escaped deer, and see how Shikamaru's father was looking like an even lazier man than usual with Shikamaru not falling so far thanks to Ino that joint mission with Team 10. Walking dogs, which didn't like Naruto for obvious reasons, and then there was the fact some of the civilians that hired them tried to be fisted around the blonde since they didn't want to pay him for his hard work on account that they hated the boy. Sasuke was always confused by this, but Hinata wasn't going to tolerate it, and she had basically told those idiots to knock it off unless they wanted the Hyuga clan to stomp their ass. Not her words, but Naruto basically pictured it in his head what she meant by bringing the clan down on the heads of the civilians, and smiled knowing his girl had a fire inside that was coming out the more time she spent with him. 
After Naruto used his eyes on her father, Hanada was later requested to meet the clan head, and her sire had given his blessing to the idea of his daughter dating Naruto. Of course, Hiyashi had told Hanada to be discreet since the Hyuga elders were no doubt going to use such a thing to further stress that she be placed in the branch family, and marry her off to one of her Hyuga relatives with the least amount of blood relations in them. Hanada understood of course, but at the same time wished it wasn't so, and was shocked to learn that her father had secretly arranged for the two genin to be married when older just in case. However, for such a plan to work, one if not both of them had to advance to the rank of Chunin, and within the next few years. Hanada had no problem with that since Naruto had already explained that Anko could help with additional training in terms of flexibility to further blend with her own variation of the gentle fist. Can't you give us harder missions old man? I mean, we've met all the requirements for AC rank so give us one, and soon before we go crazy," said Naruto seeing the Hokage sigh at his words and was hesitant to do so even if the statement was true. I suppose you could have the one available to us. It's a simple escort mission to wave country. You leave tomorrow morning with the client so be ready and get your shinobi gear ready," said the sandame seeing Naruto grin, as Hanada smiled, and Sasuke smirked at the thought of getting stronger while outside of the village. Akatsuki HQ. I love pickles. I love pickles. I love pickles. Pickles are great. Pickles are great," said Kisame eating some pickles while singing his tune about them. Kisame stop singing or I will hurt you said Itachi hating the song the shark man was singing. Pickle hater, said Kisame while some of the pieces in his fell out and hit Itachi in the face. Kisame, said Itachi with a icy voice that made Kisame pause in his eating. Yeah, said Kisame worriedly. You have five seconds to run before I use my sharingan to make you vomit at the very smell of pickles, said Itachi seeing Kisame go pale and run away from the Uchiha. Too bad for Kisame that whole speech nearly took all of the five seconds Itachi had given him and the shark man's screams could be heard throughout the Akatsuki base. What did Kisame do now? said Conan hearing the screams. What he always does when around people. He annoys them until they get violent, said Payne while hearing Kisame cry out that he was sorry and to not use pickles like that on him. Whatever they were being used for anyway no one wanted to know. Is that why you put him with Itachi? because of the Uchiha's pacifism-like beliefs?" said Conan seeing Pain raise an eyebrow. Hardly. I put those two together so Itachi would do exactly this. I simply hate the pickle song," said Pain seeing Conan sweat drop at his words at his choice of doing things. Why not simply castrate the man? Back in Konoha. Naruto was heading towards the one shop he knew would not try to screw him over in terms of getting the supplies a shinobi needs in terms of weapon, armor weights, and storage scrolls. It was the weapons store belonging the Isis family, which were a simple store, but due to their rich shinobi heritage in being a shinobi family was able to sell almost every single item imaginable to the right people at a descent price, and not like those civilian piss ants that tried to sell just about anything they could while exaggerating about it to their customers. Hey Fox, wasn't there a girl by the name of Isis Tenton a few years ahead of me when I was at the academy? and the only one to take shinobi training seriously among the girls in her class," thought Naruto while thinking about the shop for a second and the last name that went with it. Oh yeah. And Isis Tenton if I recall correctly from your memories. When was the last time you saw her? When she graduated right? Not a bad body that one. From what I have come to imagine, she has a nice ass that with a little bit of wiggling could make eyes wander, and head snap at the neck, said Kayubi grinning perversely while let out the giggle of a pervert. Well then, I shouldn't keep Tenten, or that lovely rear end she has waiting now should I? Thought Naruto with a grin now showing on his face. Walking into the weapons store, Naruto was greeted to the sight of every single piece of shinobi equipment to be sold here in this building, and noticed there was no one around to greet him. The man, who was Tenten's father ran the shop, and was a retired shinobi from years ago with his wife sadly passing away during childbirth due to complications in bringing their girl into the world. Since then, the man had tried to keep his baby girl from being harmed, but sadly enough for him, Tenten had embraced the shinobi lifestyle, and preferred weapons to dolls when growing up. She was one of the boys, when growing up and could hit pretty hard in a fight when some older kids made fun of her for not being more girly, suffice to say, the boys that picked on her were soon on the ground, holding what was left of their family jewels in their hands, and then they were quickly lifted off the ground by the rim of their under from the vicious wedgie Tenton gave them before they were all hanging onto different tree branches. 
Ignoring the girl's past actions upon the idiots of the male body, Naruto walked around the store hoping to find Tenten, or even her father for that matter since the man could be hit by his dojutsu in order to get to his daughter. Sadly, neither was around, but that did not stop him from looking, and stopped for a second when he heard what sounded like a moan of sorts coming from the back. The door behind the register leading into the back was slightly open with a light on in the back though it was clear the light was in the far back area of the store. Sneaking into the back, Naruto wondered what the source of the moaning was, which from his own experience sounded a lot like a female doing something naughty, and would otherwise be considered perverted should it be seen by anyone. Making his way deep into the back with the moans getting louder, Naruto saw a sight that made his hard, and slowly grin at what he was witnessing. What he saw was Isis Tenten, leaning against a large box, shirt unbuttoned, her down right to her ankles, panties parted to the side, and was currently masturbating while groping one of her s. At the moment, Tenten had no idea she was being watched, and continued her need to remove the tension in her body. She had put up with all of Guy and Lee's antics this morning during training while Neji being the up jerk he was had just done his usual scowling Hyuga thing. To think she once had a crush on the guy, what was she thinking? I see London. I see France. I see Isis Tenten's under and the wet treasure that lays beyond them, said Kayubi grinning and giggling in Naruto's head. Should I interrupt? Given her current state of dress or lack thereof I think Tenten could be taken down, thought Naruto while the girl continued to get herself off before him. No let her finish. She'll be so overwhelmed by pleasure, you can sneak up behind her, and then use your eyes to make the girl do whatever you ask, said Kayubi seeing his vessel nod. So in other words. Dot sit back and secretly enjoy the show, thought Naruto with a grin while watching the once bun-haired girl getting closer to climax the blonde had to admit it was taxing on his self-control to just watch. Oh shit. I'm, I'm Ming, said Tenten to herself while going faster with her fingers in each hand on their targeted spots molesting her body. Sure enough, Tenten had reached her climax, crying out in pleasure, feeling the S explode from her, and collapsed onto the box she had been leaning on for support before falling completely to her knees. The girl was gasping, panting, and sweating from her endeavor to pleasure the flesh that was her body that she had been doing this early last year. She had adult-like dream, which involved her doing things with phantom males in her dream that Tenten was too embarrassed to even speak about to anyone much less her own father, and while she had already been given, the talk, with the help of a few female shinobi that came into the store, it was still embarrassing. The only thing Tenten didn't have to worry about in regards to her first was the secret fact she had lost her hymen during a training exercise that had been painful, but was told the pain from that was a one-time thing, and there was nothing to be ashamed of. That was quite the lovely show you gave Ten Chan, said Naruto now directly behind the girl, which made her jump, and turn to see him with horror in those lovely eyes at being caught quite literally with her down. H how did you get in here? How much did you see? said Tenten knowing that if this guy were to somehow blab what he had seen here today, it would not only humiliate her, but her father, and destroy business for the store too. Next time you want to get off while working here, you should really make sure the door is shut all the way, and find something to gag the sound of your moans too, said Naruto seeing the fear in the girl's eyes knowing that all he had to do was leave and tell what he saw to someone to destroy her life. P please don't tell anyone what you saw. I'll do anything you want here in the store for free. I'll give you any weapon here free of charge, said Tenten seeing Naruto raise an eyebrow at her. Anything I want? said Naruto like he was making sure he heard correctly. Why yes, said Tenten though she was suddenly nervous for some reason. What if I want you? said Naruto seeing her eyes widen. M me. As in you want to? said Tenten not knowing how to react to that, but before she could even consider fighting him, or even negotiating some way to keep what little of her dignity intact. Dot his eyes change. Submission I, said Naruto making Tenten's eyes go glazed and he smiled at seeing her now falling under his control. And another one is claimed. That's my vessel, said Kayubi with a grin on his face. Ten Chan, can you hear me? said Naruto seeing Tenten nod slightly. Yes Naruto-kun, said Tenten dumbly. Good. Ten Chan, I'm going to tell you some things, and you will accept them no matter what I say. Understand? said Naruto seeing the girl again nod slightly. Yes. I understand Naruto-kun, said Tenten while the power of his dojutsu did its thing on her mind. I knew you would. Now Ten-chan this is the scenario, I walked into your store to buy some weapons for my mission tomorrow, 
but didn't find anyone manning the register, and heard moaning back here. When I came back here to investigate, you were doing naughty perverted things to yourself, which I saw you do, and enjoy watching you do them too. I made myself known after you had your orgasm, but instead of being angry with me, you are still excited, and horny after what you just experienced. When I turn off my eyes, you will feel that same feeling as if it never left, and wish to further explore the idea of with me in exchange for my silence at seeing your naughty act. After our time here, you will want to do this again at a much more suitable location, and with your other secret harem sisters. The fact you are now bile with them doesn't bother you, but rather makes you feel even better, and wish to speak to them later about all of this. Do you understand Ten Chan? said Naruto, as he saw Ten Ten's body already showing a physical reaction to his commands in being excited and horny again. Yes Naruto kun, said Tenten before Naruto deactivated his bloodline and brought the girl out of her hypnotic trance so the reprogramming could take effect. Hey Ten Chan. You feeling alright? said Naruto while she remembered everything his dojutsu power had downloaded into her head and saw her looking from him to his crotch with a hungry look in her eyes. Very much so Naruto kun. Still, I would like to ask you keep what you saw to yourself, and to accept my incentive to keep this between us, said Tenten with a seductive smile as she reached for the zipper of his, pulled it down with the unbuttoning his soon following, and she got them along with his boxers down to his ankles to reveal the blondes already hard that had been aching to feel release since Naruto had first seen the girl masturbate. Show me how good your skills are and I'll consider what I saw to be a figment of my perverted imagination, said Naruto smiling, as the girl nodded, and began to give his a lengthy tongue bath before ing on the head of his erection with one of her hands massaging his balls. Tenten has also once secretly read her father's Icha Icha Paradise book. I love it when a perverted plan comes together, said Kayubi giggling with perverted glee at his vessel getting so many hot s in this secret harem. Damn Ten Chan. You're doing pretty well for your first time doing this, said Naruto feeling her working his over and he was getting close to Ming. Thanks Naruto-kun. I'd love to continue practicing on you at a later time, said Tenten as she felt the hypnotic programming from Naruto's submission eye making her feel this way, and couldn't hear the rational side of her mind crying out to rip his balls off. I'm going to swallow it all and you got yourself a practice dummy, said Naruto, as he grabbed the back of her head, and moved the girl to continue her oral ministrations to make him release. With his release of soon following, Naruto could hear Tenten gulping down his seed, and it was music to his ears before the sound of her detaching from his with an audible pop noise being made in the process. The girl ed her seductively, got off the ground, bent over the box she had leaned on while masturbating earlier, and gave her ass a wiggle. Come on Naruto-kun. Teach me how to be your right here and now. If you do, I'll give you a special discount on whatever you need, and more in the future, said Tenten, as her horniness from what she did earlier, combined with just giving Naruto a blowjob had made her desire to have another orgasm at his hands was too much, and needed the release badly. Naruto would have to be crazy to refuse. Gladly Ten Chan, said Naruto, as he was feeling the urge too from the sight before him, and quickly positioned his to thrust into her. Don't worry about my Hyman Naruto sensei. Lost it in a training accident. Don't hold back in my training, said Tenten having sensed his reluctance in not wanting to simply dive in. Good to know, said Naruto grinning fully now and thrust into Tenten all the way and felt the girl's end around his almost instantly while the girl herself cried out in pleasure. It was most fortunate Naruto had made a shadow clone before approaching Tenten to make sure the door to the back stayed shut. His is filling me up. How can anyone have something like this filling me up inside? Thought Tenten, as she felt his manly tool inside her, and was instinctively moving back against him to give the man the signal to keep going. Which he did. Naruto pulled back, albeit with some difficulty, and then thrust back into Tenten's hot love hole with the girl crying out at the sudden jolt of pleasure from the thrust. Reaching his hand around, Naruto parted the rest of Tenten's shirt, pulled down her bra, and then began groping the now of the girl he was on top of while thrusting with quick yet strong pushes forward. How do you like my hands on approach to teaching you about being ed like a Ten Chan? said Naruto giving an extra hard thrust to the girl making Tenten grip the boxer. So good Naruto sensei. Keep going Naruto sensei. Teach me, teach me, said Tenten, as she felt her body being overloaded by the pleasure of his, and the hand on her. I will Ten Chan. Because this is your first day, I won't overload you with too much work, and after I inside your tie will we call it a day, said Naruto, 
as he sped up his thrust and pinched Tenten's s harder. Oh shit! I'm Ming Naruto Sensei. I'm Ming, said Tenten as she gripped the boxer and let out a scream of pleasure when the orgasm hit with more pleasure behind it than she ever had when fingering herself. Me too, Ten Chan. Me. Dot two, said Naruto as he released his into her and loved how great it felt. So how did I do for my first time, Naruto Kun? Said Tenten as the two soon got cleaned up from their action and walked out to the front of the store. Not bad. You still need practice, and I suggest a tutor while I'm on my C rank mission tomorrow. Fortunately, I know the perfect sensei for you, and I'll let her know about your desire to learn," said Naruto seeing Tenten's eyes glaze for a second and knew the power of the submission eye was working its power on our mind. I would really like that Naruto-kun. Though we'll have to talk to my dad about letting me date you in secret and the using of that. Dojutsu, said Tenten, as she felt a small conflict in her about being tamed by a guy with a powerful dojutsu, but at the same time she was enjoying herself thanks to the dojutsu's powers, and forced any nagging-based thoughts out of her head. I'll talk to your old man after I get back from my mission to wave country and we'll continue your lessons back at my place, said Naruto with a look of perverseness in his eyes that made Tenten blush. I'm looking forward to it. Now, I believe you are in need of some weapons, and supplies for tomorrow. Shall we say? 0.50% off, said Tenten before she let out an eep, at feeling Naruto's hand groping her ass. 75% off and I you're in our next session when I get back," said Naruto while tracing a finger to that spot being protected at the moment by those dam of hers that clung to the girl's ass. Deal," said Tenten knowing they could make up for it later with Naruto bringing more business her way by recommending the store to the other girls and maybe a few other shinobi in passing. That's my girl," said Naruto giving her rear a smack before he got the supplies needed for the mission. The next day, okay team, ready to head out said Kakashi, who was surprisingly right on time, and with the surprisingly sober client beside him. Who would no doubt get wasted before they were fifty feet away from Konoha if the bottle in his hands was any indication. Are you secretly gay? said Naruto, which made Hanada giggle, Sasuke raise an eyebrow to show some interest, and client named Tazuna moving discreetly away from the Junin. I am not gay, yelled Kakashi before he put a hand over his mask despite all of Konoha hearing him. Whatever. Come on old man. Guide us to wave country, said Naruto with Kakashi grumbling about brats, who speak their minds when they shouldn't, and the rest of the team formed a protective formation around Tizuna while heading off to wave country. After several hours of walking, Naruto found the trip to wave to be exceedingly boring, and wished they could just have Tizuna take a piggyback ride on Kakashi's back so they could get there sooner. Then again, with Kakashi's UAL preference put into question, Naruto doubted Tazuna would like the feel of the Junin's hands on his old ass, and may cause them to go back with the client filing a UAL harassment suit against Konoha. Perhaps walking was better. After passing a puddle, Naruto looked at Hanada, who nodded in thinking what he was thinking, and silently prepared for what had to be done. When the puddle revealed itself to be two missing nins once shinobi from Mist, they instantly went after Kakashi before the leapt at their target and were instantly foiled by two genin while Sasuke was too frightened to move. After revealing himself not dead, Kakashi soon got information from Tazuna on why he was being targeted by two missing nin formerly of Mist, and not the expected bandits that was made the mission C ranked in the first place. Wave was suffering, a businessman named Gato was the source of it all, blah blah blah. Something about a bridge, and the hope of future resting on its completion. So after taking a vote from his genin, who all wanted to continue, Kakashi agreed they would proceed with the mission, as he felt it would give his team a chance to excel, and stick it to Guy in having such a strong team. Okay, maybe the last part was a bit selfish from a certain point of view, but damn it the Junin felt he was long overdue, and it was high time Kakashi got his boons. After reaching a large area of water, the group took a lengthy boat ride across, and made their way to the land of waves thanks to the fog that gave their tiny ass boat cover. As they made their way through the forest, movement in the bush was heard, and Naruto had sensed something was there that shouldn't be before throwing a kanai there. After parting the bush, a frightened snow white bunny, which had nearly lost its life at the hands of the kanai less than an inch above its head, and wondering how it got here. Feeling a bit jumpy today, are we loser? said Sasuke seeing Naruto reveal the bunny now currently being smothered with love by Hanada. Look at the fur it's sporting Teme. It's white. 
White fur is for winter meaning this bunny is an indoor kind of animal. Someone was here and used the bunny to swap places, said Naruto seeing the Uchiha scowl at him knowing he was right. Not that far away, that was close. If I had not moved, they would have caught me, but now they have my precious Fluffy, and I could not live with myself if Fluffy got hurt, thought the masked figure seeing the bunny now in the hands of the enemy. Back with Team 7 and Tazuna. If that's the case, then. Duck said Kakashi before they hit the ground and missed being cut in half by the large Zanbatu-style sword thrown at them now stuck in a tree. Not bad kid. Most people would have ignored the bunny's fur color, but you have a sharp eye, and pay attention to detail, said the figure on the sword. Momochi Zabuza, said Kakashi seeing the man smile behind the bandages through the crinkling they made when he did. Hitaki Kakashi. Interesting that I should find you guarding the old man and with a genin team no less said Zabuza seeing Kakashi tense up knowing this was going to be one of hell of a fight. Of it's not like we had a choice. He kind of promised us candy, a puppy, and said to let the old man watch us while we did things from the book he reads, said Naruto making Kakashi faceplant with Zabuza and Tazuna sweat drop. I did not. Yelled Kakashi turning and glaring at Naruto whistling nonchalantly. Enough. I'm here for the old man. Give him to me and I'll let you live said Zabuza getting on the ground now with his sword in hand. Or you could let us go and pretend you never encountered us, said Naruto being a wise ass and pissing the man off. You got balls kid, said Zabuza narrowing his eyes at him. Normally, I wouldn't mind being told that, but from a guy with no eyebrows, and not wearing a shirt. I feel a little violated, said Naruto seeing Zabuza looking enraged by his words and rushed towards him with sword aimed at slicing the blonde in two. Damn it loser. Stop trying to piss off the enemy, said Sasuke moving the client out of the way and Hanada dodging the blade just like Naruto. But it's so fun, said Naruto in a whining voice before dodging another. Then stand still and let him kill you, said Sasuke countered. I could say the same for you with your fangirls back home, said Naruto throwing some kanai at Zabuza to make the man dodge them and throw off his attempts to cut the blonde in two. Shut up. Who wants all those girls chasing you? grabbing to tear off your clothes, and then try to have their way with you using UAL intercourse. Who I ask you? Who? Said Sasuke seeing everyone stop and look at him like he was crazy. Yes. Even Zabuza. Seriously? You want me to answer that? Because if I do, you're not going to like what I say, said Naruto before hitting Zabuza with a spin kick that sent the man into a tree and Kakashi was now poised to strike the missing nin down. Time to die Zabuza said Kakashi before Senban needles hit Zabuza in the neck and the man fell over in a slump. Thank you for defeating Zabuza for me. I'll dispose of his body now, said the masked hunter Nin appearing before the group. Kit. I smell that bunny's scent on her, said Kayubi seeing Naruto's eyes widen. Really? And you're sure that is she right? Thought Naruto before looking at the figure in picking Zabuza up along with the sword. Trust me Kit. She may try to hide it with those slightly baggy clothes, but it's doing very little to cover that sweet ass, and I can tell she's got a nice rack. Not as nice as Anko's, but it will be soon enough, and we both know how much you love big s to sleep on, said Kayubi grinning at Naruto. Hey. There is nothing wrong with such luscious melons being used as a pillow for my head when I sleep, thought Naruto glaring at the Kayubi. Point taken. Now get the old man to his home. Chances are this won't be the last you see of them said Kayubi seeing Naruto nod knowing that would most likely be the case if Gato was the one responsible for hiring Zabuza. Come on old man. Lead us to your home, said Naruto knowing the sooner they got there the better. When the group did get to Tazuna's home, Team 7 was greeted to the sight of the man's daughter Tsunami making dinner, and she was currently making dinner in the kitchen. Naruto smiled at the sight of it, as this was the making of a family and judging from the pictures the blonde could see hanging on the wall it was a complete set with a kid too. Father? Oh thank Kami, I was so worried about you, and the long trip back home, said Tsunami hugging her father before snatching the liquor bottle from his hands with the usual nagging pointing finger aimed at his old body for drinking. Yeah, well it's because of this group of leaf shinobi I hired here that I'm in one piece, and not in pieces after all those other shinobi tried to do me in. Everyone, this is my daughter Tsunami and she basically runs the house around here, said Tazuna seeing his daughter blush in embarrassment. To the right of them, on the steps leading to the second floor of the house was a scowling boy, who looked like Kami had just taken a dump in his food, 
and hated the deity for it. It was clearly Tsunami's son and Tazuna's grandson the old man mentioned on the boat ride to further guilt trip the team into completing the mission. What crawled up his ass and died? said Naruto to himself, but made sure the woman didn't hear, and the same for the old man. He was a guest in their house after all. I know what I'd like to do to that woman's ass, said Kayubi seeing it was just ripe for the taking. Later. When the mission is over and we can find a way to bring Tsunami with us without the excess baggage that is her emo acting kid, thought Naruto knowing that the boy was no doubt going to be a hassle and would have to be removed via his eyes. Not to mention the old man when this was over. With introductions being over soon after their arrival, which meant knowing the name of the emo boy now known as Inari, Team 7 got what rooms were available to sleep in, and the guys had to share while Hinata got her own room. However, Naruto didn't want to be in a room with either guy on the team, and chose the couch while stating he would be the first line of defense on the first floor of the house should there be an attack. You sure you want to be down here kid? said Tazuna with a raised eyebrow. Would you want to share a room with those two? One who would rather read smut, then actually get laid by an actual woman, and broody boy who'd rather run from girls wanting to throw themselves at him? said Naruto seeing the old man choke on his drink. Point taken said Tazuna before finishing his booze and heading for bed. Sleep well old man. Until this bridge of yours is done, it will probably be the very last one, said Naruto to himself before falling asleep on the couch after making a couple of shadow clones to watch over the house. Naruto sighed, as he watched the bride builder Tazuna motivate his workers working to complete the structure, and free themselves from Gato's hold. Of course some of them were getting cold feet out of fear for their lives and quit about halfway through the day so that slowed things down considerably. Remind me why I'm doing this again Kayubi. Thought Naruto while watching Tazuna manage the remaining workforce he had left. We both know why Kit, said Kayubi before showing him images of Tsunami and then Hanada doing UAL things to him. Ah. Yes. Now I remember, thought Naruto remembering how he had turned Tsunami with his submission eye that very morning. Tsunami came down early to make breakfast for everyone, as she normally did for her family, and heard Naruto groan almost like he was in pain. Curious, the woman walked over to him put a hand on his head before Naruto opened his eyes, having been awake for shortly before Tsunami came down, and baited her in order to nab the client's daughter with his submission eye. That had been the easy part, but the hard part was getting his alone time with Tsunami later due to her damn emo for a brat hanging around the house sulking, and being a real, well emo. It was pissing Naruto off. The only one suffering more than Naruto right now was Sasuke, as he was trying to run up trees for chakra control, and was suffering horribly for his attempts. Kakashi had gone with Hanada to scout around town for potential goons loyal to Gato and see just how bad things really were for them. Don't worry. Tomorrow's shift change involves Kakashi watching the old man, you doing some, training, of your own with the Hyuga girl, and the Uchiha. Well we all know the Uchiha will keep trying to get his chakra control down while failing to do it miserably, said Kayubi seeing the boy nod while thinking of Hanada and naughty things he wanted to do to the Hyuga girl. Whoever said patience was a virtue clearly never got laid. It would be hours before Tazuna called it quits for the day, as the two made it back to the house, and saw the others waiting for them. Kakashi looked bored, reading his book while Hanada was bordering on being worried, you ally frustrated but hid such things well like always, and Sasuke looked tired from his training. Wonder how Sasuke would take it knowing that while everyone was sleeping last night, I had shadow clones do training, and did nearly a month's work of training in few hours, thought Naruto knowing what it would do. Kami willing? Make his head explode, said Kayubi hoping it would. Yeah, but that would ruin the fun, thought Naruto with Kayubi laughing. Must. Dot not. Rape. Naruto-kun, thought Hanada, as she was feeling the UAL itch, and knew from using her by a Kugan before Naruto entered the door that the blonde boy was in need of some relief too. I love. Is good. Is great, thought Kakashi while reading his book while Tsunami made food. Must. Kill. Itachi. Squirrel. Must. Kill. Itachi. Squirrel. Thought Sasuke in his usual brooding way inside his head. The meal had been a somewhat peaceful affair, as Tazuna stated the bridge would most likely be completed by the end of two weeks, and Kakashi had finally decided to be the bringer of bad news by stating Zabuza was indeed alive to everyone on account of the Hunter Nin, didn't dispose of the man's body on the spot. To make matters worse, 
Imari decided to, and complained that they were all going to die at Gado's hands because the businessman was apparently so strong. Ha! Huh. Naruto had gotten sent a shadow clone into town and had someone describe the man to him so he could judge for himself. A short aging man with a cane was hardly considered strong. Konohamaru could beat the shit out of Gato without even trying. Deciding to get away from the brat before knocking him into next week, Naruto got up, and left while calling Inari a whiny that needed a good wake-up call. Hanada quickly ran after him, knowing the boy would need comfort from her since Kakashi was doing crowd control, and Sasuke didn't give a shit about the blonde. Making his way to the forest area, Naruto felt a pair of limbs wrap around him, and the angry boy calmed down at feeling Hanada's presence. Am I really that pathetic? Getting angry at the words of some emo punk kid a few years younger than me, said Naruto before seeing Hanada walking around to face him and land on his. No, you had every right to be angry. That boy thinks he's had it hard, but we both know you'd trade your abuse for his in a heartbeat, and turn things around rather than moping about it. Besides, seeing you angry, and full of passion is kind of a turn on, said Hanada, as she whispered this part into his ear, and ed his neckline. Naughty girl. Several days without me must have been a torture for you, said Naruto, as he unzipped her coat, and let it fall to the floor. You're being tortured too. Being away from Anko, Sume, Ayame, Tenten, and unable to be with me until now due to the others possibly finding out has made you ache for relief. Let me give it to you now, said Hanada, as she unsealed her true form, and stripped out of her clothing while Naruto did the same. We can't go all the way Hanada-chan. Though I am so tempted, said Naruto as he felt the Hyuga girl grind against him, and knew she wanted it too. Then take it. With my father under your spell, we could do it, and make up any excuse we want. My father will support it and no one will be the wiser. I want you. And you want me. We both need this, said Hanada, as she wanted Naruto, and knew with the boy's power could deflect the issue of her first time being with him. Is that your heart's desire? said Naruto, as he cupped her rear and could sense the girl practically wanted to jump on his tool. Yes. I'll say our mission became dangerous and I removed my hymen myself. My father will believe me and no one in the clan will dispute it. Take me you hot stud, said Hanada nipping at his neck in a sensual and enticing way that she knew would make him go wild with desire. And was he filled with desire? Naruto had Hanada pinned to the tree, his hand on her ass, and yet he gently guided his erection to the girl's sacred place. Once his thing went into her, there was no turning back, and they would soon go at it like rabbits. With a nod of approval from the Hyuga girl, Naruto thrust into Hanada, and ed her on the to make sure the scream of pain that would prevent anyone from hearing it. They stayed like that for a while, as Hanada's womanhood clamped onto his erection lee upon his intrusion, and it was difficult to not lose it right there. Still, Naruto's experience with women had paid off, as he waited until Hanada was ready, and when they broke their apart from the others she nodded her head for him to continue. And continue he did. The thrusts were slow at first, but they sped up when Hanada gripped his shoulders, and wrapped her legs around his waist before whispering him to keep going. As they did, the two moaned, groaned, and cried out in ecstasy with each thrust Naruto made into Hanada's. Hanada herself was looking up into the night sky, tears of joy filling them, as she had accomplished her dream in being one of Naruto's girls. Granted, she was now one girl among many, but it didn't matter to Hanada so long as she was one of the girls in his harem, and made him happy in any way he saw fit when it came to her body. I'm going to Hanada-chan, said Naruto, as he felt the girl and her hold on his waist, and saw she was close to the edge too. In me Naruto-kun. I want to feel you're in me. In me now Naruto-kun, said Hanada, as she made her walls massage his further, and heard him groan out before releasing his seed into the girl. They held each other for what felt like forever, as they panted, felt sweat cover their bodies, and soon Hanada wanted to go again after Ing Naruto's whisker marks that had long since signified he was a Jinchuriki. Naruto of course was more than ready to go, as he managed to sit down with his back resting against a tree while she was still connected, and Hanada was now in the driver's seat. The Hyuga heiress was riding her lover for all he was worth while the boy played with the Hanada's sizable s. Ing, groping, and pinching them with Hanada loving every second of his hands attacking them. It wasn't long before the girl came again and Naruto joined her in orgasmic bliss before the two fell asleep while not caring who found them later. The next morning, Haku walked through the forest area, basket in hand, wearing a civilian dress that hid, yet showed her female form in all the right places, 
and was heading to the place where herbs required to heal Zabuza were located. When she reached this place, Haku gasped before dropping the basket in her hands, and saw something that made her entire face turn red with embarrassment. She saw Naruto and Hanada both with the Hyuga girl's ass facing her while lying on the blonde's muscle. Each clearly looking content from their UAL activities they had done last night and had no clue what was going on in the world around them. Haku knew they were a threat to Zabuza, as she had seen them fight her master a short time ago, and knew they had to be removed. It wouldn't be difficult. She could kill the boy, make it look like his lover was the killer, and the Hyuga would hopefully destroy herself out of grief if not the village they served doing it for her. Simple yet complex. Walking up to the two Yu ally active, yet still asleep Jenin, Haku reached out for the blonde's throat, intent on crushing the boy's windpipe, and saving Zabuza further troubles with their current assignment. Her attempt was ended however, surprisingly by Hanada, who grabbed Haku by the wrist, and showed she was in fact awake. Naruto opened his eyes next, which were now a different shade of color than the usual blue, and the shocked girl could sense that he was about to use a dojutsu on her. Close your eyes and I will make you open them, said Hanada knowing right away, who this girl was since her chakra signature was beyond a civilian's, and the fact she was just caught reaching for Naruto's neck was evidence too. Submission I. My name is Naruto. Can you hear me? said Naruto while keeping his line of sight entirely on Haku with the girl's own now glazed over. Yes Naruto-sama, said Haku, as she felt Hanada let go her arm, and it went limp. Good. What is your name? said Naruto while Hanada slowly got off of him. My name is Haku, said Haku seeing Naruto raise an eyebrow. Just Haku? No last name? said Naruto seeing the girl nod. I do not know the last name of my parents, said Haku, as she saw Naruto frown in thought, and seemed to be trying to figure out how to fix this. From now on your last name is Uzumaki. Like mine. You are now one of my girls of my secret harem chosen among many to please me. You will come back with me to Konoha and be one of my very special ladies. Do you understand? said Naruto seeing Haku nod her head. Yes Naruto-sama, said Haku simply. Good. However, Zabuza cannot know of this meeting, and neither can the rest of my team Haku-chan. You will continue to serve Zabuza like normal until the time is right to switch sides. Understand? said Naruto seeing Haku nod again in embracing the hypnotic program. I understand Naruto-sama, said Haku while Naruto stroked her cheek affectionately. You're a smart girl Haku-chan. Unfortunately, you tried to hurt your new master upon arriving here, and as you can see I'm having one of those, morning wood, moments, said Naruto since he was hard again from Hanada's morning ministrations with her just before Haku arrived. I'm sorry Naruto-sama, said Haku in a submissive tone despite it being hypnotically made. I know you are Haku-chan, but words mean only so much when actions are much better, which is why when you return to your normal self, I want you to strip, and give me a nice sloppy blowjob while Hanada-chan spanks you. After that, you will tell me about Zabuza, and his condition so my team can prepare for his return. Understand? said Naruto seeing Haku nod in understanding once more. Yes Naruto-sama, said Haku and then with the dojutsu ended was returned to normal with the exception of the hypnotic programming Naruto put in her. Good. Now stripping me off, said Naruto in a commanding tone while standing up and saw Hanada smirking at Haku while in her. Yes Naruto-sama, said Haku as she stood up, and made her dress fall to the ground to reveal her female form to them before removing her black bra. Nice. Now let's see that ass, thought Hanada, as she saw Haku remove her panties, and then get on her knees in front of Naruto's erection before taking it into her. Ooh. You're not bad for a first-timer Haku-chan. Now for the next part. Hanada, if you would do the honors, and spank my newest girl said Naruto seeing Hanada nod and then get behind Haku before slapping the girl right on her right ass cheek. Before Hanada did it again. And again. And again. Haku let out brief screams of pain with each smack to her rear end while ing Naruto off, as the blonde held her head while thrusting into the girls, and the sound of Hanada's hand hitting flesh echoing throughout the forest area. Naruto was grinning as was Hanada right back at him while she smacked Haku's rear before switching to the other cheek so the girl wouldn't get used to the pain, and the numbness that would follow after enough hits. How is she Naruto-kun? said Hanada, as she continued smacking Haku, and love how the girl seemed so submissive to their lover. Good. She'll make a fine addition to my family. Here I Haku-chan. 
Drink it all, said Naruto before releasing his load down Hakus and loved the sound of the girl swallowing it to the best of her ability. Enjoy your treat Haku-chan, said Hanada, as she saw Haku pull away from Naruto's after she finished drinking Naruto's. Yes. Naruto-sama's was most enjoyable, said Haku while letting out a gasp when Hanada began playing with her s. That's good to hear Haku-chan. Now it's Hanada-chan's turn in feeling some pleasure. Please her with your before going about your duties. Hanada, after Haku finishes with pleasing you, help her find the herbs she needs, and then head back to the house, said Naruto before he went to his clothing and put them on. Yes Naruto-kun. Ooh. Yes that's the spot. Use your tongue right there said Hanada, as she forced Hakus deeper into her womanhood, and feeling the oral pleasure that came from the girl's tongue. Have fun, said Naruto called out to them and left the two girls to their own devices while having a smile on his face. Now all he needed to do was deal with Inari, back at the house sometime later. Naruto stayed home watching the brat while Hanada watched over Tazuna and Kakashi focused on training Sasuke in getting his chakra control down. Something the Uchiha was ing at due to his emo like ways and arrogant stupidity that made the blonde want to kick his teammate in the nuts. Regardless of how hard it would be to hit them, considering they were so damn small to hit in the first place, from what Hanada told him. Damn brat. I'm so tempted to use my submission eye on him right now and have that little emo in training drown himself in the lake outside the house. Damn my heart of gold and drive wanting some hot wave country milf. Thought Naruto as he saw the boy glaring at him from the other side of the couch, and it was clear Kakashi had neglected to do any kind of heart-to-heart -heart talk with the brat. Naruto made a mental note the size of the Hokage monument in his head to burn all of Kakashi's in front of him, and then every copy the man had until there was no more of them for the Junin to read. You won't win, said Inari at last while Naruto decided to glare back. Is that what you think? What about your grandfather? He's trying to save your whiny ass your mother's, and the assess of wave country by building this bridge. I bet you won't tell him that this is a lost cause, said Naruto seeing Inari glare harder. Shut up. You don't know anything. Of what it means to suffer, said Inari, which made Naruto lose it right then, and there before lifting the emo boy right off his seat. Suffer? You want to compare your suffering to mine? Boy, I have experienced far more suffering in two years of my life, than you do in all the time you've been alive and been protected by your family. At least you have a family baka. I had no one. Absolutely no one for roughly a decade of my life since day one of my birth. My family was dead, I was alone, the village I was being raised in hated my guts, and made my life miserable with every chance they had. Things only changed when one person took interest in me and trained me to get stronger so I wouldn't be so damn weak that people could walk all over me like they were allowed to. That's your problem right there. You're weak. Pathetic. All you do is whine, complain, and around the house about suffering that's minor on the scale of 1 to 10 would be a 2 maybe 3 tops. You don't know the meaning of the word suffer kid. At least you have family, who love, and cherish you with every fiber of their being so I don't want to hear another word out of your emo. Got it. Said Naruto while glaring at the smaller boy. I understand, said Inari with Naruto smirking at him and then the blonde's eyes changed color. Good. And just so we're clear on a few more things. Submission I, said Naruto with Inari's world now about to change with the blonde reprogramming boy's way of thinking and knocking him out afterwards. Is everything okay in here? said Tsunami walking into the room and seeing Naruto put her son on the couch with a blanket over him while Inari ate his thumb. A little bit of a prank on Naruto's part for having to put up with Inari and his emo like attitude. Just perfect Tsunami chan. In fact, Inari is just resting right now, and will be out for a few hours, said Naruto with a smile on his face. Ah. He looks so adorable, said Tsunami walking over to her sleeping son and ed him on the forehead. You know Tsunami-chan, I've been doing a lot of thinking, and it seems to me that your family owes quite a sum in hiring us to protect your grandfather, said Naruto while his hand s up to her rear and gave it a loving squeeze. I know Naruto-kun and I am sorry my father lied, but he had no choice said Tsunami while blushing at his perverse affection and strangely loving it all the same. I understand that Tsunami-chan, but given the circumstances, I think another form of payment until the money comes in should be made to me on behalf of my team, and I think we both know what that form of payment should be, said Naruto giving her ass another squeeze that made the woman go, eep, and blush harder. I don't know Naruto-kun. 
I mean. Dot it seems a bit. Extreme. Said Tsunami, as she felt his hand assault her rear before going under her skirt, and felt his fingers enter there through her panties. I don't want to ask for money your father doesn't have to pay as Tsunami-chan. You wouldn't want me to do that, would you? Said Naruto while feeling the woman's getting wet, and she was becoming putty in his hands. And no. Follow me, said Tsunami, as she still couldn't believe she was about to do this, even after they made their way to her bedroom, where she stripped of all her clothes, and in front of a boy several years older than Inari. And yet, in a way, this very boy was everything she wanted in a man after Kaiza died at the cruel hands of Gato's thugs, and thanks to Naruto a long since dormant itch had arisen within her body. What Tsunami didn't know was her eventual giving in was part of the hypnotic command left behind by Naruto when he used the submission eye on her and that after he had her silly was to decide on coming back with them to Konoha. To be free of her the harsh lifestyle in wave country brought and have a chance to breathe easy for a while with a new sense of purpose. With Naruto. This lady is going to be like the Inazuka woman. She hasn't gotten laid in a long time. Brace yourself said Kayubi with Naruto nodding and the blonde smacking the woman's ass before commanding her to get on the bed. Time to sample, said Naruto before grabbing Tsunami's ass cheeks and moved his face towards her before giving it a few test s that made the woman gasp at the touch of his tongue entering slightly. Oh. Wait Naruto-kun that spot is ah. Oh. Wait. Ah. That's the spot. Keeping going, said Tsunami, as she felt Naruto's tongue invade her and somewhat attempted to resist him in the sense this was morally wrong. And failed miserably. You taste pretty good Tsunami-chan. Give me more, said Naruto, as he assaulted her with his, and loved the sound of her cries of pleasure. Oh Kami. I'm going to. I'm almost there. Please make me, said Tsunami, as she felt Naruto pause for a brief second, and then felt his attack to her clit before attacking it unmercifully resulting in an intense orgasm that Tsunami hadn't had in years if ever. I'll give you a moment to catch your breath Tsunami-chan, said Naruto before stripping out of his clothes while the woman did just that and heard her gasp when his was at her entrance. It's not even in me and already I can tell he's big for his age. How is that even possible? Thought Tsunami, as she soon felt him enter, and the woman felt her eyes roll back at the pleasure of being filled up by him. Damn your. Reminds me of Inazuka Sume back home in Konoha. Another hot milf just like you, who's been depraved because of her children, and needed a good ing to loosen up. You'll meet her soon enough when we get back to Konoha, said Naruto before he moved his hip back and then thrust hard into Tsunami with the woman letting out a loud cry of pleasure. I'll have to talk to her about how she can endure this without passing out right away. Thought Tsunami, as she felt Naruto grab her, groping them, and pinching them while he thrust into her at a dominating pace. And she's not the only one Tsunami-chan. You'll meet Anko-chan, Ten-chan, and the other girls of my secret harem. They'll show you a great time in the village and in the bedroom when I'm unavailable to help get your hot milf ass off, said Naruto, as he increased the pace that made the woman moan out louder than before. It sounds wonderful Naruto-kun. I can't wait to meet them, said Tsunami, as she felt him abuse her ass with his hands, and yet the woman didn't care since it was driving her wild with pleasure. Me too. Now, hard and accept your new life in being one of my girls, said Naruto, as he thrust harder, and feels Tsunami's walls and around his before he hears the pleasure-filled scream signifying the woman's orgasm had been reached with his own following seconds later. That was incredible Naruto-kun, said Tsunami, as she hadn't felt this much pleasure in a long time, and it felt really good. We're not done yet Tsunami-chan. Not by a long shot said Naruto into her ear before flipping the woman onto her back and was soon thrusting into the woman once more. It's a good thing there are a couple dozen shadow clones watching over the house to prevent Kakashi, the Uchiha, or Tazuna from seeing this, said Kayubi while watching his vessel give it to Tsunami with the woman calling out Naruto's name while he plowed into her herd and fast. Could life get any more sweeter? With Uchiha Madara? Give it to me straight doctor. How bad is it? said Madara using his eyes on the good doc so the man would give it straight to him and not sugarcoat him. Well, we've run tests, and found that aside from the cancer in your rectum there were sides of it being damaged over a long period of time. Was there ever a time in your youth where you were abused as a child? said the doctor. Me? No no I owe Kami. Uncle Bob how could you? said Madara, as moments from his childhood suddenly flooded back and was on the ground in fetal position in his thumb. That explains some things. 
Though I also have to tell you some even worse news than that, said the doctor seeing Madara look up at him from the ground before getting off the ground. What could be worse than that? said Madara worriedly. We found you have another form of cancer in another part of your body, said the doctor while clearly being hesitant to tell the man, but the power behind Madara's Sharingan was very compelling, and would have to tell the Uchiha where it was. Spit it out already. Where is the cancer? said Madara now angrier than ever. It's in your testicles. You have cancer in your testicles. You can either let it live in there and crush your family jewels slowly with each passing day left alone, or we can operate on you down there and basically remove your testicles in order to relieve the pressure that will eventually build up down there before causing them to explode with a feeling of unimaginable pain the likes no one has ever felt in their life, said the doctor while Madara looked ready to just go crazy then and there. He was going nuts and would one day lose his nuts. How messed up is that? Well at least it can't any worse, thought Madara before the doctor handed him a slip of paper. Here's my bill, said the doctor before leaving with Madara looking at it with a bug-eyed expression. What? 10,000, 000, 000, Rio, yelled Madara looking at the bill in his hands. Back in wave country, it's finally that time, said Naruto seeing Hanada nod since it was the end of the week and Zabuza was now back in fighting form. Yes. It is, said Hanada while heading out the door with him while the other two on the team were waiting for them. Haku won't go easy on us when we fight her Hanada chan, said Naruto in a whispered voice before covering the outside of the house with shadow clones and they hanged into different lawn objects to keep under the radar of potential threats. I know. I may have earned Haku chan's wrath after you left us to each other in the forest after you used your eyes to take her, said Hanada giggling a bit knowing she had been a bit rough on the girl. Well I can't say you don't deserve it if that's the case, said Naruto humorously and saw the girl blush a bit in embarrassment. Naruto-kun, said Hanada seeing Naruto smirking at her. What? It's not my fault you're a horny vixen, said Naruto seeing the girl blush further. If you keep this up they'll suspect something, said Hanada seeing the others ahead of them. Not a chance. You always blush around me and it's a very nice turn on, said Naruto seeing Hanada's face go even redder. Don't say that. You're getting me hot and bothered, said Hanada seeing Naruto grin mischievously at her. Consider this your punishment on my end in being so rough with Haku, said Naruto seeing the girl scowl playfully at him. Sadist, said Hanada whispered to him knowing once her UAL beast awoke when it came to Naruto, it didn't stop running until he used his skills to calm it and keep her desires in check. Thank you. Now let's hurry and catch up said Naruto patting Hanada's rear before he ran to catch up to the others. Incomplete bridge sometime later. Here we are again Kakashi. Ready for round two? said Zabuza with his sword ready and Kakashi's sharing an eye out. More than ready, said Kakashi with the two clashing against the other with the life of Tazuna hanging in the balance. While Sasuke and Hanada fought Haku with Naruto guarding the old man. Though it was just what Naruto wanted since the mist Zabuza created while Thick had little influence on his submission eye when being so close to Tazuna. So you understand Tazuna? Tsunami is coming home with me. To live a happy life in Konoha while you raise Inari to be the strong man you know he's capable of being just like Kaizo was, said Naruto having used his eyes on the old man. Yes Naruto. Tsunami is going to live in Konoha with you and I raise Inari to be a strong man, said Tazuna with a glazed look in his eyes. Also, to extend your life expectancy, you are going to quit being a heavy drinker, and take better care of your body to ensure it lasts long enough to see Inari grow up to become a strong man, said Naruto seeing Tazuna nod in understanding. Quit drinking. Extend life expectancy for Inari, said Tazuna dumbly before he returned to the realm of conscious thought after Naruto cancelled his bloodline on him. Glad we understand each other. Now hide behind a crate of boxes while I'll deal with some things said Naruto before making a couple dozen shadow clones and made sure they watched over Tazuna just in case while the blonde himself went to interfere in the fight his team was having with Haku. With Haku. The female ice user was using her most jutsu at the moment, as that was the plan to keep these two at bay while Zabuza fought Kakashi, and Naruto guarded Tazuna. During the fight, Haku had targeted the Uchiha most of the time while hitting Hanada here, and there with Senban needles made of ice. Of course Hanada was hurt in the areas Haku threw her projectile weapons the Hyuga girl and part of Haku relished it in the form of paying her back from before in the forest. Sasuke looked like a ing porcupine with messed up duck ass hair. 
If this wasn't such an important moment for Haku, she would be laughing and making fun of the Uchiha. Maybe later when this was over. You think this will stop me? It won't. I'm an Uchiha, an elite. I'm better than this filthy Hyuga and that blonde loser ever could be in life, said Sasuke trying to stand up at the moment. On second thought, thought Haku, as she left the mirror her body was in, landed right in front of the surprised Sasuke, and kicked him hard, right between the legs. Not so elite now, are you Uchiha Teme, said Haku before letting out a giggle and then socking the boy in the face with enough force to knock him unconscious. He'll be pissing blood for a while. A girl after my own heart, said Naruto now appearing behind Haku and groping her ass while she squirmed a bit under his touch with the other hand attack on of her ass. Naruto kun. Oh Kami, said Haku, as she felt him molesting her body, and sparking the warmth that only he could put out. Soon. Very soon, said Naruto before pulling his hands away and heard the girl whimper at wanting more. No. I need it. I need you in your touch so bad, said Haku whined and knew this was Naruto's way of torturing her. Patience Haku chan. Patience, said Naruto with a smirk knowing the girl was at his mercy at wanting his touch and him denying it. The fight with Zabuza soon ended, as Kakashi gave the former Miss Nin a shinobi death in dying in battle, which was all well and good. However, Gato made his appearance with his army of thugs, and went on a whole evil tyrant speech about Wave Country was now his along with the girls on the bridge being toys. Blah, blah, blah. So with that being said, Naruto decided to intervene at this point and called upon a bit of Kayubi's power before rushing into the mob of thugs with Zabuza's sword in hand. Some slicing here, there, and just about every thug that wasn't cut to pieces had jumped off the bridge while practically peeping in there. In the end, Gato was the last guy remaining, on his knees, begging, pissing, and shitting in his while rambling about joking around with them. That it all of this was just a simple misunderstanding taken out of context and that there was no need for pointless violence. Yeah right. One quick slice with the massive sword in hand and Naruto had Gato's head in his hands before kicking the main body into the water below. Granted, the sanitation of the water was now in jeopardy, but Naruto was sure Mother Nature could take one more piece of crap for the team, and let the flesh-eating creatures of the deep handle it. You okay Naruto? That was your first kill after all, said Kakashi seeing Naruto nod, but a smirk on his face, and it reminded the Junin of Anko. No sweat Kakashi-sensei. If it was Zabuza or Haku then I'd feel bad. But someone like Gato. The bastard's not even worth mentioning, said Naruto, as he hefted the sword on his shoulder for better adjustment, and walked over to a now submissive Haku with the Hyuga heiress behind her. Just as planned. Zabuza is gone and now you are my master. I'm yours to command Naruto-sama, said Haku, as she played her role in being the submissive servant to the blonde, and awaited for him to pick her up off the ground. Stand up Haku-chan. I don't want a servant. I want a friend. Will you be my friend? said Naruto picking her up and saw Haku smile knowing she was already more than that to him. Still, appearances had to be maintained for now, and ensure Haku stayed Naruto's after wave country. I will, said Haku before turning around to see the army of citizens making up wave country ready to fight. Are we late? said Inari seeing Naruto smirk at him. Sadly you are. However, you came to fight and that's what matters, said Naruto having gained the memories of Gato's thugs attacking the house and the blonde's shadow clones removing them from the equation. Naruto-sama, can we prepare a proper burial for Zabuza-sama? I know he was an enemy combatant, but, said Haku, as she felt the last sense of loyalty to the man kick in, and wanted to do at least one final thing for him before leaving Zabuza behind in her life. Of course. I know just the spot said Naruto before putting the sword away in a scroll and helped pick the dead man up with Haku's help. Do you think she can trusted not to kill me? said Tazuna a little skeptical of the ice user's loyalty. Haku fought only for Zabuza and the contract he had with Gato to kill you is void since the businessman is dead. There is no desire in her to lash out at you, said Kakashi, as he saw the old man nod, and knew the girl could have done the exact opposite of how she was doing now. That's good. Now I can finally finish building this damn bridge without having to look over my shoulder for the thugs or shinobi hired by Gato to kill me, said Tazuna with the people of Wave cheering in agreement. They were finally free. One week later. Do you have to leave Wave so soon? You're starting to become like family to me, said Tazuna seeing the group consisting of Genin Team 7, their Junin Sensei, Tsunami, 
and Haku wearing civilian clothing about to depart from Wave Country. Have to get back and file a report with the Hokage on the mission, said Naruto seeing the old man nod his head while Inari ran up to the blonde and hugging him. You'll visit, right? said Inari seeing Naruto smile. Of course. And you can visit Konoha too if you want. It may be a shinobi village, but you're more than welcome to visit me, and your mom when there, said Naruto with the boy hugging him now smiling at the idea. I will. And I'll make my mom and you proud, said Inari, who for some reason felt like he was talking to the father he always wanted, and didn't realize it was in part due to the submission eyes hypnotic programming. I know you will, said Naruto before the boy stepped back and the group now began their departure from Wave Country to Konoha. So what is Konoha like? said Haku speaking for Tsunami since she was curious about the village too. Friendly. For the most part anyway. Since you possess the bloodline limit to manipulate water into ice, the councils will try to pressure the Hokage into being part of a breeding program, but I won't let them, and neither will Hanada-chan, said Naruto seeing Haku look a bit worried while Tsunami didn't like that idea either. I don't want to be used like that, said Haku with Naruto agreeing. You won't. I promise, said Naruto while Kakashi looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Don't make promises you can't keep Naruto, said Kakashi warningly. But I can keep this one Kakashi-sensei. If the councils try anything with Haku-chan, I kill them all. Consequences be damn, said Naruto in a deadly voice and glared at the Junin with crimson red eyes. He's dead serious. Should I report this to the Hokage? Better not. The old man knows every female shinobi will be behind Naruto in his threat. Not to mention the male clan heads will support him on account of their own wives kicking their ass should they go against the blonde, thought Kakashi while knowing only Shikaku could go either way not only on account of his laziness, but due to his wife's separation from him, and the way things were going right now. Still, Kakashi wouldn't bet against Naruto since the blonde boy made the possible happen from the seemingly impossible and right now this was something that the Junin felt was impossible in accomplishing. It was a twisted sense of logic, but it was how the world rotated in Kakashi's head, and he was going to run with it, pure and simple. Now let's head home. I want to feast on ramen until I explode, said Naruto with his fist in the air making Haku, Hanada, and Tsunami laugh. With the way you eat ramen Naruto, I'm surprised you haven't already, and showered the leaf with your remains, thought Kakashi as he had seen Naruto eat bowel after bowel of ramen, and didn't explode like he thought the boy would. Where did he put it all? Where indeed? Yuhi Kuranai wasn't a happy woman. Granted, most of the time she was never really happy on account of the many different things this village, and the world itself had to offer a woman of her strong caliber. For the most part, she had a genin team that by all means had been the worst team to pass the academic standard set, and wanted to complain to the Hokage about fixing the problem. Of course, given the Hokage was a man, he would just nod his head, smoke his damn pipe, and then send her away while pretending to take care of it. Now if a woman were to become Hokage, she would get things done, and keep the filthy perverted men of this village in line without any problems, thought Kurenai, as she was walking with her genin team to see the Hokage about a mission, and wondered why Kami in her infinite feminist wisdom had given the female Junin such a pathetic male-dominated team? The only good male between the two was Shino, but even then, Kurenai didn't trust the boy to keep his eyes off of her from behind those glasses, and Kiba wasn't any better with his clearly perverted nature. Sakura was another problem for the female Junin, as she had to deal with the girl's constant fangirl-like ways of loving the Uchiha, and how they were destined to be together over Yamanaka Ino. It made Kurenai want to vomit. Are we going to get better missions sensei? I'm tired of constantly chasing that damn cat or doing other people's chores said Kiba in a whiny voice before Sakura slugged him. Shut up Baka. We need to do these missions so we can advance like Sasuke-kun's team did, said Sakura while shaking her fist at him. At least she's keeping Kiba in line. There is at least some hope for her, thought Kurenai, as she encouraged Sakura to stand up against boys, and men in general despite using the Uchiha for that foundation. Still, Kurenai was confident she could replace it when the time came, and show Sakura that men were unreliable unless it was give them a child. Then Kurenai would teach the girl how to keep the male she married on a leash and his peck in a bear trap vice that only got some unless she wanted some. We have completed quite a few D rank missions while working together, Kiba. Logic states we will get a higher rank mission soon, said Shino, as he had been the real workhorse of the group in making sure the missions were done, 
and keep his teammates didn't kill each other. At least one of them isn't thinking with his other head at the moment, thought Kuranai, as she they entered the Hokage Tower, which she also hated because to her it looked like the form of male genitalia, and further proved in her mind that men had been suppressing women further in terms of building structure. When they entered the Hokage's office, Kuranai's eyes widened at seeing Kakashi's team in the room along with two women standing beside Uzumaki Naruto, and both of them looking like they enjoyed his company. It made the feminist woman's blood boil in fury at seeing two beautiful women of different ages around the young Uzumaki brat, as it did when Anko told her taking the boy on in a semi-apprenticeship, and helping the Kayubi Jinchuriki get through the Shinobi Academy. Her own pervert detector inside the Junin's head were currently going off, telling Kuranai the blonde was a pervert, was going to prey on these girls, and it took every ounce of restraint to snatch the boy away to do a bit of interrogation on him. In due time. That will be all. Naruto, you will show these two women to your apartment complex so they can get settled, said the Sandame seeing Naruto nod before leaving with Tsunami and Haku while Hinata mentally vowed to catch up to her lover soon. Hokage-sama, who were those women with Naruto? said Kuranai seeing the Hokage turn his attention to her. Yeah. That younger girl looked hot, said Kiba before being punched in the face by Sakura. Pervert, said Sakura while shaking her fist at him. Says the girl. Who would sneak into the Uchiha's home just to rape him, thought Hinata while waiting for the official dismissal so she could report to her home to give a report to her father. That was Uzumaki Haku and the tsunami from Wave Country. Haku adopted Naruto's last name and wishes to become a shinobi of the leaf. Tsunami wished to live here in the Konoha and Naruto even suggests she be employed as the current landlord of the shinobi apartment complex, said the Sandame while Kuranai narrowed her eyes and while the feminist in her basically screamed out find them. I see. I'll have to go visit them sometime. After all, the more friends they have the better, and make them feel welcome in the leaf, said Kuranai while vowing to make sure the two women were protected from Naruto since he was currently the only male in that building. How that was even possible, she didn't know. That's good to hear. Kakashi, your team is now dismissed. I want a written report on my desk within an hour, and not in three. Kuranai, I have another D-ranked mission for yours own and it involved cleaning out the bathroom at the Shinobi Academy, said the third Hokage with Kuranai's team whining at having to do such a humiliating job. Yes. Even Shino. Shinobi apartment complex sometime later. Harder. Harder. Please Naruto-sama. Me harder, said Haku, as she was smiling with drool running down the side of her while Naruto pounded into her from behind, and one of his hands grabbing onto her. As you wish Haku-chan, said Naruto, as he did just that and loved how the female ice users felt wrapped around his. In the same room, which was his bedroom in the apartment complex, Tenton was hanging from the ceiling by her wrists, legs spread wide, a vibrator in both holes, with each object vibrating at their maximum level, and Anko currently spanking the weapon girl's ass with a disciplinary action-based paddle used in the old days by teachers on unruly students in classrooms. Tenton herself cried out behind the ball gag with each swat to her ass, as she was being punished since yesterday after entering Naruto's apartment in the belief he had returned so she could collect on her UAL payment the young Uzumaki owed her for the discount of weapons, but since the boy was there, it was considered trespassing, and it didn't help Anko was in the area. The special Junin knew the girl was a secret harem sister, but Anko also knew that Tenten shouldn't be in Naruto's apartment without his expressed permission, and the fact she didn't know the Uzumaki stud was not around to deliver in terms of UAL bliss was irrelevant. In Anko's mind, the girl needed to be disciplined, and in the only way she knew Naruto would approve of it was in the form of bondage. It was how Naruto found them when he came into his home. Of course Tsunami had passed out with a nosebleed, but Haku was completely transfixed on the sight before her while seeing Tenten being disciplined by Anko, and one thing led to another with Naruto soon plowing into her on the bed. I'm going to Naruto-sama. I'm Ming, said Haku, as she felt him hammer even faster and knew his time was arriving soon too. Me too Haku-chan. Take it all as my way of welcoming you to Konoha," said Naruto before he released his seed right when Haku came and felt her milking him for his essence down to the last drop. When the two collapsed on the bed, Naruto rolled to the side with Haku following him so she was on hers, and both panting heavily from their orgasms. In the afterglow of it all, Naruto ed Haku's shoulder knowing the woman's body would receive an increased jolt of pleasure and she moaned from his continued touch. That was one hell of a welcome Naruto-sama, said Haku at last. 
Yeah. Shame Tsunami is still out of it from seeing Anko Chan punishing Ten Chan. I'd give her my own welcoming. Oh well. More time to spend with you, Anko Chan, and Ten Chan today, said Naruto with a feral grin while Anko looked like her birthday had just come early while Tenten was excited too. And would have expressed it had it not been for the ball gag in her. With Kuranai and Sakura later that afternoon, Sensei, I don't understand why you kept me around after dismissing the team. I need to find Sasuke kun before Ino Pig does. Any moment now, she could convince Sasuke kun to go on a date with her, and then get married before she has his kids, said Sakura while getting into full blow genin mode right now had Kuranai not put up a commanding hand. Enough. Sakura I kept you here to clear some things with you about boys and men in general. First off, you need to get out of this silly fangirl phase of yours, and realize that Sasuke much less any guy is not worth your time chasing after. As a strong woman, I've prided myself in being untouchable by the hands of men, and their perverted advances on me. Only a weak woman goes after a man, as she has so self-respect for herself, or that of her gender. I will not have a weak woman in my genin team Haruno Sakura, which is why I tolerate you beating up Kiba for all his remarks, and even then I feel compelled to do something about your fangirl-like ways regarding the Uchiha, said Kuranai while Sakura frowned slightly. But Sasuke-kun is the last Uchiha of Konoha. He needs to repopulate his clan, said Sakura while Kuranai scowled and scoffed in disgust. The CRA is just a way for a man to be at his most perverted level in a legitimate way Sakura. All men care about is getting into a woman's and the CRA allows a man to do that with more than one woman while using his clan status to do it. When a woman has a man, she controls his life until the day he dies, and rules the household with an iron fist. When a woman doesn't get what she wants from him, the man is punished by making him sleep on the couch, kick him out of the house, and occasionally beating him up for good measure, said Kuranai while Sakura seemed unsure. But, isn't that last part abusive? said Sakura while Kuranai scoffed again. Listen Sakura. Men need to know that women are the true rulers of the house, and the only way to do that is to hurt them. Have them do what you want and remove anything of theirs that they like in order to assert your dominance in the relationship, said Kuranai with Sakura still being unsure. But Sasuke-kun is the rightful ruler of his clan. I couldn't usurp him, said Sakura while Kuranai groaned. Fine. Exclude Sasuke from the equation. Men in general. Say for one moment, Sasuke doesn't want you, and you have to be with someone else say. A man of Junin status from a normal family. After you get married, you take over the house, your word is law, and the law states he obeys you like a loyal puppy. When you want him back at the house at a certain time, he has to come when called, when you want to go to a restaurant of your choice, he takes you there, and he pays for everything while you order the food you want him to have, said Kuranai while Sakura didn't like her talking about taking Sasuke out of her future. But. What if I have children and they are males? said Sakura while Kuranai smirked. Then you can easily train any male children early on to not only respect women, but to teach them to always submit to the female gender, and bring about a stronger resistance to the perversion of male rule, said Kuranai while Sakura frowned more. I still don't understand Kuranai sensei, said Sakura while Kuranai just smirked. Give it time, Sakura. Give it time said Kuranai knowing she needed to plan something soon to prove that Uchiha Sasuke wasn't worth Sakura's time and bring the pink-haired girl closer to the side of righteous feminism. But first. Dot she needed to speak to those two new women in Konoha. With Naruto the next day. What do you want Uchiha? Said Naruto, as he was just walking through Konoha, just minding his own business, and trying to ignore Sasuke stalking him for answers. How did you get so strong loser? The power you have shouldn't be in your hands, said Sasuke while Naruto just looked back at him. And who should have it? You, please. As if you know how to control such power, said Naruto while Sasuke seethed. I don't care about controlling power. I just want the power, said Sasuke angrily while Naruto just rolled his eyes. Power without control is not power. Itachi knew this quite well, said Naruto while Sasuke just looked angrier at him. And how would you know what Itachi knew? said Sasuke while Naruto produced a book in his hands. Because Itachi literally wrote the book on the subject you moron, said Naruto holding a copy of How to Control the Power Inside of You by Uchiha Itachi in his hand. What? How did you get that? said Sasuke while seeing the book become pocketed away. 
They give them out to the students in the academy's advanced classes. You threw yours away remember? I believe you said, I will do the opposite of Itachi like my father said and get stronger for it. And all that crap, said Naruto with Sasuke seething at his words. Give it to me, said Sasuke with Naruto scoffing and walking away. Get your own. Buy your own at the nearest shinobi store. I mean, they practically give you everything for free right now, said Naruto with Sasuke once more becoming angry at him. I don't want a copy from them. I want yours, said Sasuke with Naruto looking back with a scowl on his face. And you're not getting it Uchiha. Try and I'll break you, said Naruto with Sasuke now charging him. Give it to me loser, said Sasuke while Naruto dodged the punches and kicks thrown at him. Well, he did say give it to him, thought Naruto before he unleashed a barrage of attacks on the Uchiha and sent the boy through the fence before being knocked out after hitting a tree. What do you want to do with him? said Kayubi with Naruto getting an evil grin on his face. Oh, I have a brilliant idea, thought Naruto before letting out an evil laugh in his head. Yikes, said Kayubi to himself knowing it would be best to keep his vessel happy in order to keep the blonde from turning his sadistic side on the demon. Uchiha Sasuke awoke sometime later, only to find himself tied up, hanging from a tree, gagged and a big ass sign over his head he could just barely read. When he had out slowly in his mind, Sasuke's face went pale, and he struggled more when rumbling of feet was heard that brought fear to his heart not since felt before the Uchiha massacre. Rabid fangirls coming to ravage him. Need to escape. Need to escape, thought Sasuke while the army of fangirls got closer. For those of you wondering, the sign above Sasuke said all horny fangirls converge here to rape Uchiha Sasuke, with an big fat arrow pointing to his location. When the girls were seeable, Sasuke closed his eyes, and waited for the inevitable ravaging of his body while cursing his blonde teammate for doing this to him. Out of all the people Sasuke thought would be his first time, the Uchiha honestly thought Hyuga Neji would be the one, and not some flock of rabid horny fangirls. However, a strange thing happened when the rumbling stopped, and Sasuke found himself not being violated. Opening his eyes, the Uchiha saw a look of disappointment in their eyes while some of them were snickering at him, and others whispered while moving two of their fingers slightly apart while pointing at him with a frown. He's so, so small, said one fangirl Sasuke somewhat recognized from the academy. But, I thought all of the men from clans were well endowed? Wasn't it rumored Uchiha Itachi was big? Said another fangirl while Sasuke became angry at the fact they were not only talking about Itachi, but considered his manhood to be puny, and not worth their time even if he wouldn't give them any of it. There have been cases where there is always a runt or two in the clans. Unfortunately, Uchiha Sasuke is one of them. The only one without such a weakness was the Namikaze clan the Yandaimi Hokage was part of, said another girl, who was slightly older than the girls Sasuke knew, and the Uchiha knew she'd spread all around town the apparent lack of manliness between his legs. So, what do we do now? said another now former fangirl of Uchiha Sasuke. We find someone else, said a girl, who was clearly a cousin of Eno's, and the other girls nodded in agreement. Damn s. When I get down from here, they will pay, and so will Naruto for this, thought Sasuke while not seeing the figure hidden in the trees taking pictures of his predicament in the snickering that would come. You scare me sometimes, Kit, said Kayubi, knowing what Naruto was going to do with these pictures. Like you're one to talk. You told me your violent fantasy dream you wanted to carry out against Uchiha Madara. How is vengeance on Sasuke any different? thought Naruto with Kayubi thinking for a second. Touche. Still, is it wise to give these anonymously to Yuhi Kurenai fully knowing just what she'll do with these, and what a shitstorm it will cause in Konoha? said Kayubi with Naruto smirking. Considering how she tried to turn Tsunami Chan and Haku Chan into feminist man hating lesbians yesterday. Absolutely. thought Naruto knowing his plan would work. With Yuhi Kurenai, Kurenai looked at the photos in front of her, after they were left on her doorstep, and saw a chance to really turn Sakura away from Sasuke. Hunting down her female student, the Junin saw Sakura trying, and failing to pound a more physically fit Yamanaka Ino into the ground with little success in hurting the platinum blonde. You take that back. Sasuke-kun does not have a small, said Sakura while Ino dodged another attack and kicked the pink-haired girl away. My cousin saw it forehead. She showed me the images from her mind, 
said Ino, as she was glad to drop her pursuit of Sasuke after the academy, and once more kicked herself for pursuing him. Had she known what was down there had been so small, Ino would have gone right after someone else, and someone else would have been. Naruto. Granted, Ino knew that the Uzumaki wasn't from any recognized clan, but the blonde was strong, and if what her lessons with Chakra were indeed correct, very well endowed. Liar, said Sakura before seeing Kuranai walking towards her with a frown. Sakura, I'm afraid Ino is telling the truth, and there are pictures to prove it, said Kuranai seeing Sakura looking on in horror at seeing what had not only befallen her Sasuke-kun, but the fact Ino was telling the truth, and Sasuke was in fact the runt of the clan. How did you get those pictures? Did you take them? said Ino looking at Kuranai with accusing eyes. What? Don't be ridiculous, said Kuranai practically sputtered at Ino. Then how do you have them when no one else does? said Sakura seeing Kuranai being put on the spot now. Someone dropped them off at my door today, said Kuranai seeing neither girl buying it. But you kept trying to steer me away from Sasuke-kun earlier and now you have these pictures. You are a dirty woman, said Sakura pointing an accusing finger at Kuranai which didn't really help the Junin since they were in a public place, and people were now staring at them. I am not, said Kuranai defended while glaring at Sakura. Yuhi Kuranai is a dirty woman and takes pictures of young tied up boys, said Ino loud enough for more people to hear and Kuranai groaned. Great. Now I have to explain myself to the Hokage, thought Kuranai before Anbu came and took her along with Sakura away to explain this to the Hokage. With Naruto. I'm so bored thought Naruto, as he had already trained for the day, but sadly his lovely ladies were also busy too, and couldn't get his freak on with them. Ah, help, molester, molester, said Serutobi Konohamaru in a nearby alley. Hey, I'm no molester kid, you ran into me, said another voice belonged to someone in what looked like a catsuit and wearing a girl's makeup. Says the gender-confused guy wearing girl's makeup on his face, said Naruto at the catsuit wearing bow gur whatever he was and saw the smoking hot pigtailed blonde haired girl behind him smirking. It's war paint, yelled the catsuit wearer. Is it? said Naruto looking at the fan using girl behind him. No, said the girl with a smile while the catsuit man looking back at him. Tamari, said the catsuit wearing shinobi. Oh shut up Konkuro. We both know you are wearing makeup. I know because you got it from my room said Tamari giving Konkuro a glare. Well. Dot now that little bit of TMI is out for everyone to know, who are you, and why do you have the Sandame Hokage's grandson in your hands? said Naruto seeing Konkuro drop the kid like he was infected by a disease. The name's Sabaku no Tamari from Suna. The gender-confused boy next to me is my younger brother Sabaku no Konkuro, said Tamari while Konkuro growled at his sister. And the red-headed kid leaking killer intent in that tree behind me," said Naruto looking back and seeing the red-haired boy disappear before reappearing between them. Konkuro, you are a disgrace to Suna," said the redhead. But Garai," said Konkuro, only to be silenced by killer intent from the boy, and then saw Gara redirect his eyes at Naruto. Shut up, or I'll kill you, my apologize for my brother's stupidity. He's not very bright. If it wasn't for the fact he is required to live for the upcoming Chunin exams, I would kill him, and feed his blood to my mother, said Gara seeing Konohamaru shivering behind Naruto. Apology accepted. Though keep him on a ur leash. Last thing we want is for a war between our villages over a small scuffle involving the Sandame Hokage's grandson, said Naruto seeing Gara nod. I wish to know your name, said Gara changing the subject. Uzumaki Naruto. Holder of the Nine. You said Naruto seeing Gara's eyes widen slightly. Sabaku no Gara, Holder of the One. We are the Keizkage's children, said Gara with Naruto smirking at him. I see. Well, chances are we'll meet each other in the Chunin exams then, and look for you on the battlefield, said Naruto giving the kid a mock salute and motion for the third's grandchild to follow him. Be careful of that one. Mother says to be. Cautious said Gara before the trio walked away while his siblings were looking at him in surprise. Really? Well that certainly is interesting. And he was kind of cute, thought Tamari with a small blush on her face. With Sakura. I can't believe Kuranai would take pictures of my Sasuke-kun like that. I don't care if she denies it or is my sensei. She'll pay. Said Sakura in an angry while stomping away from the Hokage tower. 
Sakura had to listen to Kurenai's explanation of how she came into possession of the photos and teaching the pink-haired girl about boys. Of course the female Junin had clearly spinning the conversation she had with a twist to keep herself out of trouble and about her feminist ideals. After being dismissed by the Hokage, the pink-haired Jenin found herself near the village's post office, and surprisingly found herself seeing Sasuke heading there discreetly with a letter in hand. Following him to his destination, Sakura saw him drop the letter off, and quickly leave while keeping his identity hidden by hanging into some normal civilian before entering the building. After he left, Sakura went in, and was able to acquire the letter that Sasuke wanted to send out. To my secret love, oh Kami, Sasuke-kun has a secret love, it must be me, thought Sakura, who had at the time looking at the envelope had completed ignored the address on it specifying it was to be delivered to Hyuga compound. Dear my secret love, I wish you would respond to this letter for I wish to discuss our future. We need to talk about our heart's desires and how you can't deny what I've been writing to you these past few weeks. He's talking about me. I just know it. How come none of his letters have reached me until now? They must have gotten misplaced, thought Sakura, as she continued reading, and wished to ask Sasuke about the lost love letters that missed reaching her. Please see me when you can at my home. I am aching to be in your arms just as I know you ache to be in mine. It doesn't matter we are from two different worlds and lifestyles. Together we will know love and passion that others would scorn us for having with each other. Sincerely, Uchiha Sasuke P.S. I look forward to seeing you tonight at my home. Haruno Sakura, said Sakura before looked at the name. Hayuga Neji. What the? Yelled Sakura, as she came to the earth shattering, and horrifying truth of it all. Uchiha Sasuke. Dot was gay. Uchiha Sasuke was gay and in love with. Hayuga Neji. This was a nightmare. A sick, twisted nightmare which was denying Sakura the reality she had grown up embracing with all her heart, and soul with this letter destroying it within a span of a few seconds. And it was in that moment the old Haruno Sakura died. In her place. Dot was lesbian feminist Haruno Sakura was born. Bring on the hot women. Cha! said inner Sakura with short hair and dressed like a stereotypical TV cable guy. With Naruto. What the hell was that noise? said Naruto before he groaned out in pleasure and then looked down to see one Hayuga Hanada ing him off while having his wedged between her. Don't know. Don't care, said Hanada before going back to getting her lover off while she redoubled the efforts to get his out. Oh damn. You horny. You better hurry Hanada-chan. We have to meet our sensei soon. From what Anko-chan told me after I ed her along with Tsunami Ra in our threesome this morning, it could be about the Chunin exams, and a signing up for it, so be a good and make me, said Naruto in a command voice, as he began to take control of Hanada's pace, and work her faster until he finally released in the girls. Tasty as always Naruto-kun, said Hanada while Naruto pulled up his while he patted her head. Glad I could please you Hanada-chan. Now get dressed before your hot body makes me make us late and we have to explain ourselves when they find me in your hot ass, said Naruto seeing Hanada pout slightly. Okay. But only because I don't want any male perverts seeing me, said Hanada in a semi collected voice befitting her snooty clan. No, just your fellow harem sisters and myself, said Naruto while Hanada got dressed. True, said Hanada before she and him headed off to meet their sensei for the Chunin exams. You do know with these Chunin exams, there is a chance there will be a bunch of hot vixens entering, and could be. Turn to Konoha's side, said Kayubi with a smile on his face. Yep. If all goes well, I'll get up the Suna woman's skirt, and into her panties along with several others I see, thought Naruto at the idea at using his eyes on Tamari and try to boost the positive relationship Leaf had with Suna. Among other things. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.